All right, so let's see. First of all, tonight we got Jerry Sobel up. So Jerry got some new hardware. So it's and he got not so not just any hardware, some really nice hardware. So he says, "Hey Ron, I got the Sterling 51. Uh, nice system. I vertical cut in two directions and scarified, and then did a cut at one inch. Filled up two large Rubbermaid Roughneck trash bins. Okay, so." It sounds like, uh, one, congrats on that. We gotta get this out of the way. Let's do that first of all. Congrats on the new mower. <laughs> gotta do that. Congrats on the new hardware, uh, Jerry. And then, so you verticutting, and then um, and then only two, two Rubbermaid um, trash bins is not bad. Given the size of your lawn, that sounds about right. And, and what you're gonna find is as you continue to use the mower, you turf rake, you do everything else with it, you're gonna find that more and more debris will come out. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Congrats on the mower. It's a really run nice system. Now you didn't say, what did you get with it? Did you just get the verticutter and the cutting cartridge? Or did you also get like the turf rake and some other uh, attachments as well? Definitely let me know down in the comments uh, what you got. Cause I know it's, it's a sweet, sweet mower, sweet piece of equipment. I'm sure you're going to really, really enjoy it. The more you use it, the better it's going to get. All right. She says so much work, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Finally got decent stripes. Nice to not smell like exhaust fumes. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You don't really notice it until it's not there anymore. So, you know, I, for years, I mowed with my True Cut, I mowed with the Greensmaster, and like gas, the smell of gas never really bothered me. But then when you go away from it and you're mowing with a, a mower that doesn't produce all, all those, um, all the pollution and doesn't, doesn't, you know, make you smell like you just licked a gas can, uh, then it's it's hard to go back. I notice it every time when I fire up the True Cut and when I fire up the Greens Master. So I totally get what you're saying. And the thing is with the stripes, the thing you're gonna realize is the fact that you are thinning out the lawn, you're getting, you're also gonna be getting a lot of, rid of a lot of debris. So a lot of the, the stuff that just dies in the lawn and, and takes away from some of the color. And you've got that heavy rear drum as the propulsion system, you're gonna get really good stripes. The stripes you're gonna get from that mower are gonna be unlike anything you've ever gotten before. Once And as you use it more, it's gonna get better. So again, congrats on it. Excellent, excellent, excellent choice. It's a great piece of equipment. I love mine, and I'm sure you're only going to get better as you um, as you continue using it. Here's one more follow-up. He says, have you had less weed since you got your outlet? Yeah, so the thing with, yeah, it, th I have. And the thing that you'll find is when you, um, when you turf rake, any weeds that are starting to just lightly take root, the turf rake will kind of, will kind of pull them out. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're not sitting around enough, long enough to really get root in the, in the lawn. That coupled with the fact that you're out there mowing fairly regularly, it's just your, the, the, the issues you, you normally have with a lot of weeds are just gonna be, a, are going to be less. Now, I will tell you that since I top dressed, I've had some crabgrass pop in here and there, but a lot of that is just having bare soil that's that's been exposed for weeks on end. And that's just gonna happen um, whenever whenever you, that's the scenario you've got, you, you have going on in your lawn. But um, prior to top dressing, my lawn was completely weed free. I mean, there's no, no issues at all. And again, that's gonna get better and that is going to get better as time more time passes and the lawn recovers. Actually, if you guys want to see what it looks like today, I mowed it this afternoon. I probably need to put a sharpen on the reel, but this is what it looks like uh, today. So you can see the structure starting to come back. You can still see sand poking through here and there, but it's definitely, definitely recovering. So definitely looking better. And uh, I'm liking it, man. I'm liking it. It's definitely it's moving in the right direction, right? So I'm I'm think I'm on track by the end of this month for the lawn to be pretty much back to where the way it was prior to top dressing or leveling, save that it's a lot smoother now, right? So that's always good stuff. Again, congrats on the mower, Jerry. It's an awesome bit of kit. Um, use it and mow in good health. Next up, we got Robert Mahora saying, evening to you, Ron. What's going on, Robert? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. I appreciate you as always. And then next up is Jackie Bear. Jackie Bear was actually the first person to, to say hi in the live stream, but he came in so early that his comment didn't show up. He says, brother on, let's roll, I'm ready. Have a great stream, sir. Yeah, so the thing is, guys, I was planning I was planning on doing the stream um, outside, which is why my microphone was on the other mic that I use when I'm outdoors. I, I forgot to switch it back. Um, but it literally started raining, literally started drizzling outside. So I, I, you know, about an hour before I was looking at the forecast and I said, you know what, if I, if I chance this, it's going to rain. And sure enough, literally I was looking at the, the patio and rain was coming down. So yep, maybe next time, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow we'll get out there and we'll do something fun in the lawn, either tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, I've got something in, in that I want to do as a follow-up to the video I did last weekend on how to select the right pre-emergent and um, you know different mixtures you can use depending on whether you have cool season or warm season grass. 
So I, I thought about the idea of actually showing you guys doing it. So we'll, we'll see. I've got to um, get some stuff set up to be able to make that happen. But that's the plan for this weekend if all works out. Now, guys, we've got 80 of us in the live stream so far. And I know it's just early. We're only, you know, six, seven minutes into it. But if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button for me, I really, really would appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's a great way to support the show. All right, so we have our first question uh, related to weeds and maintaining your lawn nice this fall from Papa Moslow. He says, if I use prodiamine in the spring, should I change the dithiopyr in the fall? I'm a fan of doing that. I'm a fan of switching it up. So if I use, uh, you know, prodiamine in the spring, I'll use dithiopyr in the fall or use this, this fall, I'm gonna be using Spectacle Flow. But I am a fan of bouncing back and forth between pre-emergence between the spring and fall. Largely because there's really not a whole lot of, um, of downside of doing it. You know, take for example, say you're doing a granular, right? So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if we go to Golf Course Lawn Store and we look at the weed killer section, and then we look at the granular um, herbicide, so like for your, for your pre-emergence. So the, the price difference between uh, dithiapyr and prodiamine is literally like $5, $4, it's nothing, right? It's like a $4 difference between them. So like, why not switch it? Why not change between spring and fall? There's not really a cost difference that really, you know, really matters between the two of them. And it gives you another, you know, another, it, it just gives, it, you're just mixing it up. I, I've not really heard of, of, a, of a lot of weeds forming resistance to prodiamine, but I mean, why not just all, just um, flip back and forth between spring and fall if you can. I will tell you that if I had a choice, right, if I were choosing, I would opt for prodiamine more so in the fall and dithiapyr in the spring. Here's why. In the spring, when it's starting to get warm again, that's when, you know, crab grass will begin to germinate and that becomes, you know, the bane of our existence in our lawn. I've got some of it going on in my lawn now after the top dressing. And unlike prodiamine, dithiapyr has the ability to kill young crabgrass. So, so if it's fully grown, you know, you're, you're out of gas. You have to get conchloric or something else for it. But for young crabgrass um, that has not matured, uh, dithiapyr will actually take care of that. It'll actually kill it. So if you're trying to plan your pre-emergence around what is going to give you the biggest bang for the buck based on what the kind of weeds you're likely to encounter, then dithiapyr in the spring makes a lot of sense and prodiamine in the fall makes a lot of sense. Um, the thing with, with prodiamine, I'd say a pop of lows, if you do it in the fall at, with, the, with the main goal of keeping um, poannua, like annual bluegrass out of your lawn, then I find mixing it with um, some Princep and um, Image, Amazoquin, does, you, you're gonna get a better result doing that than just using just prodiamine by itself. So that, that's kind of what was in the product, or not kind of, that is what was in the product, uh, Spectacle Flow, that, that you guys saw me use for a couple of years. And uh, they don't they don't really make that anymore in a size that makes sense for DIYers. So you can just kind of make it yourself. Get yourself some prints up. Get yourself some um, some Mazaquin Abala image and some Prodiamine and mix it and away you go. So that is uh, my my take on it. But yes, absolutely, switching between altering between spring and fall or rotating back and forth is a good idea to me. So yeah, absolutely, I, I would do that. All right, Jackie Bear says Texas has rain in the forecast all next week. You got this. Yeah, man. So in Georgia, we're supposed to have rain tonight. And if I look at the forecast, I mean, it's, it's, uh, let's see here. Make sure I'm not, I don't want to be lying to you guys. Make sure I'm not fibbing here. Yeah. So we got rain in the forecast uh, today, 70% tonight. It's probably raining now. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday. So it's, yeah, it's supposed to be rain for the next, at least the next four days if the weather is to be believed, right? So I'm glad that in Texas, you guys are finally getting rain. You know, here's the thing, guys. I was feeling a bit bad because, you know, I, I would get out there and do the YouTube stories and show like, hey, look at all the awesome rain that's coming on the lawn and it's all, you know, grass is growing so nicely. And you guys are like, we haven't ever had rain in two months. So I'm glad that the, the curse, the drought is being broken. You guys are finally getting some rain. It's awesome. And your, lawn, your lawn's not gonna know what to do with itself, right? <laughs> all right, next up is Dalvin Larry. He says, Ron, no questions this evening. He says, this season has been a lot easier because I got ahead of the curve in the spring with the soil test, headway, a celeprin, pre-emergent. Now I'm just going along for the ride. Hashtag Golf Course Lawn Academy member. Yeah, man. So that's the thing. If you, um, especially with pre-emergent, I can't stress enough, guys, like uh, a 60 or $70 bag of pre-emergent may seem like a lot of money, but if you have start pricing out um, Celsius or um, or certainty or the, the surfactants and everything. Every, the surfactants is not the expensive part, but it's everything you need to eliminate weeds after the fact and not damage your lawn in the process. The cost of pre-emergent is, is a bargain. It's a steal. 
but yeah, Dalvin, do you, everything you did sounds great. Like you did, you know, you got your friend of fungicide down, you got your insecticide down and then pre-emergent spring and fall, you know, if you do the important, most important part, which is regular mowing, it's kind of hard to not have a great lawn, kind of hard not to have a great lawn. So guys, I want to show you guys something tonight. So there's a, a viewer, Jason, um, that sent me some pictures of, of where his lawn was starting in May of this year. So starting in May of this year, this is what he was dealing with. And you can see it was flooding. He had, he, he wrote in his email, he said, I had some major drainage issues, right? And I'd say it's kind of an understatement. If you look at the far part of that picture, you can really see how it was really puddling up and just really making a big mess. So he took on the challenge to do a renovation, did some leveling work, brought in some fill dirt to, to begin evening things out. He then, uh, you know, brought some, so I can get this next picture up for, for you guys. He then uh, sodded the entire lawn with Tiff Tough. So the entire thing after he got it leveled out, fixed some of the drainage issues, he went down on the entire lawn with Tiff Tough Bermuda and then brought in the soil cubed leveling mix. You can see the dark stuff there. So he got the level mix in there. So it's got compost and USGA sand. So it's 70% 70, 70 sand, 30% compost. And this guys, this is what the lawn looks like today. So from May, so from May, it went from that to that. So you guys got no excuse. I mean, to tell, to tell you that it's that you, you can't make, you can't turn a lawn around in a season is simply not true. I mean, in, in, in from May to, to now, that's what you're looking at. So it's like May, June, July, we're in August now. So four months, sounds about right. That's what I always say. I say that if you are really, really diligent, you you follow a, a diligent approach, um, you know, you get your soil testing done, you, you fix any problems, like any physical problems in the lawn, like what he had, as far as like his drainage problems, and then just go at it full tilt. You know, he didn't mention his mowing, but, I, but looking at this lawn, you know that man's out there mowing. I mean, that's clean. I don't care who you are. I mean, even if you're a cool season guy, you got to respect that. That's looking really, really sharp. Looking really sharp. So for anyone, anyone that wants inspiration, what you can do to your lawn in just a few months, that's a great, a great example. You know, I get, I get pictures like this every week. You know, it's, and it's really cool to hear from viewers that, you know, took, took on the challenge to really turn their lawn around to, to create a lawn that the neighborhood will envy and to have their personal golf course lawn, whatever that means to you. So Jason, awesome job, man. Keep going. Here's the thing. You're not going to believe this, but next year it's going to get even better. Now here's the thing. That, that, that color is sweet looking awesome, but it's going to get even better next year. It's going to get even better. Just, just keep up with what you're doing and you're going to absolutely love how the lawn develops over time. All right. Next up is Mark Harvey. He says, hi Ron, after I top dressed, I'm noticing baby crab grass and other weeds popping up. Should I throw down some granular dithiop here and maybe some um, prodiamine granular just because it's time anyway? Okay, so the fact that you're getting uh, crabgrass now or crabgrass after top dressing, I'm not really surprised by that. I, I have some of that in my lawn too. I just tend to pluck it out, when, pluck it out whenever I'm mowing. Um, what you find, right, is it could be some of it came in with the top dressing mix, but it, more than likely it's because you have all this bare dirt, right? Like whenever, whenever your lawn looks like how Jason's lawn looks, when it looks like that, it's pretty hard for weeds to get a foothold, right? Because the canopy gets nice and thick. Uh, there's just not, um, uh, there's not a lot of open, open soil for them to really bite down into, begin to germinate and be able to, 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 to grow, right? So now in a case where how our lawns are, right? How yours is and how mine is, where you have a lot of, you know, you have patches of two, three feet open of just bare um, sand where it was level, um, where, where the, the leveling mix went a little heavier, that is the area where crabgrass and other weeds are going to try and take root. I would not do dithiopyr and prodiamine. Remember, they're both pre-emergent. So really, I'd pick one or the other. What I would say is if you want to use dithiopyr because you're dealing with some crabgrass now, that's fine. That, that's, a, that's a good strategy. But if you also want to get rid of um, any other weeds or if the crabgrass, or if the crabgrass is getting out of hand, you're, just, you're irritated with it, um, spray a post-emergent. So use quinclorac um, to, 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 knock the, uh, to knock the crabgrass back. And then the dithiopyr should catch any uh, new crabgrass that tries to germinate between now and when you know the, the the grass begins to go dormant. So it's your call. I would not do prodiamine and dithiopyr. Pick one or the other. Given that you have again crabgrass, dithiopyr is more the logical choice. But it doesn't really matter. You can do you can use either one of them. But I would say is if you want to really get rid of the crabgrass, go after it with a post emergent. So what I was telling you is quinclorac, and you can see. I'll, I'll put a link here in that for you in the chat, um, in Mike. So this is what I'd recommend if you want to, to get rid of the um, of the active uh, crabgrass. So crab grassed, grassed, post-emergent. All right. 
So there you go. So use that to kill off the current crabgrass if you can't just pick it. Like, I mean, my lawn's pretty big. And when I'm out there mowing, I'll just stop the mower and I'll just, I'll just, I'll just take a, you know, a minute, literally a minute, and pick the few little pieces that came out and just continue on with my, with my mowing. So uh, unless it's really bad, you might be able to just get away with doing that. But it's, you know, it's, it's your call. If it's getting, if it's getting out there, I get it. If you want to, you know, go conduct some chemical warfare against the, uh, the crabgrass. All right, next up is Mary J. Mary J says, good evening, Ron. I ordered Prodiamine from your store. Thank you, I really appreciate that. This is, will be my first time doing liquid and I've been watching some of your older videos. Thinking I'm going to do a fall lap and split in the spring. Okay, that, that can work, I'm Mary. So I'm trying to, trying to remember what kind of grass you have. So if it's Bermuda, remember the total rate for Bermuda is um, the annual limit over a 12 month period is uh, 0.83 ounces per thousand square feet. I'm not sure if you, again, you're doing the liquids. So you got the, the water dispersal granule. Yeah, so 0. Um, 0.83 ounces over a 12 month period is what you got to work with. So if you're gonna go and use some in the fall, you could do, you know, you could use, um, I don't know, 0. 0.4, you go out and have half rate, and then do an or and then do another, and leave the remaining allocation for your split app in the spring. So it sounds like you wanna do like half now, and then maybe, 0 0.20 in late February, early March, and then another 0 0.20 in April if you want to go that route. And then the total, the total you've put down will be just under that annual limit. And that would be correct for Bermuda. If you have uh, cool season grass, then it's 0.185, so 0.2 to make the math easier. Uh, so it just depends on what kind of grass you have, um, but just read the label and um, and make sure that you don't, you know, you don't exceed the 12 month allocation for your particular grass type. That's that's the only uh, the only thing I, I would tell you. And as far as um, as far as tips, um, you know, the thing with Prodiamine is if you're using a backpack sprayer, make sure you fill the sprayer halfway up with water first, add the Prodiamine. And then what I like to do is add the Prodiamine. If you have a, like a uh, like a drill or, or something to, to, to agitate it, you can use that. Or, you know, in a pinch, if you're strong enough, you can just close off the, the tank and really give it a good shake with it half full. You don't want to do this when it's all the way full. Like begin getting it suspended when it's half full. So fill it halfway with water, um, put your prodiamine in it, close off the tank, give it a good shake. I mean, you know, like 20 shakes or so is what I do. I tend to, I tend to count to 20, like the number of times when I, I shake the tank. And then um, open it back up, obviously fill up the remaining amount of product that you need for your lawn. Again, with a four gallon backpack sprayer, I'm going to, I'm giving you examples if you have 4,000 square feet. I don't know how big your lawn is, but if you have 4,000 square feet, this is what you would do. So you, you um, finish filling it up, and then at the end, I add my marker dye, give it another shake, and then you go off and spray. Because what will happen is if you, what you don't want to do is put the, the water dispersal granules into an empty tank. You want to make sure there's water in there first. Again, I like it to be half full. Uh, so get it suspended, and then continue filling it, and add anything else you're going you're gonna to spray, and then um, and then go, go to town. So yeah, it sounds like you got a great plan. Uh, just follow the uh, the label, check the application rates. And remember, on the high end, on the high end of the rate, so I think for cool season grass, it's 0.55 ounces, I believe. It depends on the grass type, but I believe it's 0.55 ounces. Ounces is a high rate for prodiamine. So remember, that's for a 12-month period. So if you have cool season grass and you put all that down now, which I would not recommend, you want to say, you want to say uh, on the lower end for cool season grass, for sure. Um, just Just... Regardless of, of what rate you use, remember that that the, the upper limit, the upper end of that range is what your 12 month period is. So I beat that one to death. I think I've given you enough tips. And again, I, I might make a video here soon um, actually showing what I just talked about. I mean, I, I've got videos showing the showing it, um, you know, I've got several on how to mix prodiamine, but perhaps doing one live and then you guys can ask questions after the fact if you need it might be useful. So let me know if you guys want me to do that. And uh, we'll, I'll try to make it happen here, um, maybe even, if not this weekend, sometime uh, during the week if I, if I have some time. So good stuff, Mary. Good job getting your pre-emergent planned and down or getting it ready to put it down. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know how I can help out. All right, next up is Mike. He's back. He says, I was thinking granular prodiamine and uh, now and liquid in October. Yeah, so again, I, I'm not, I guess with the liquid you're referring to quinclorac, I really would just do one or the other. I would not do, do not use quinclorac as a post-emergent. Like it's really, a, it's, a, it's like a pre-emergent uh, first with some post-emergent bonuses. Kind of like how, how tenacity is really a post-emergent herbicide, but it can give you, it has some like pre-emergent effects for a few weeks. That's how, how you need to treat quinclorac. I, I'm sorry, how you need to treat um, dithiopyr. I would not treat dithiopyr, I would not use dithiopyr to try and eliminate crabgrass in a lawn. That's what quinclorac is for. You know what I mean? So do one or the other, and um, again, if you really, if the crabgrass is really getting out of hand, you don't want to just just to pull it out. Uh, then 
quinclorac is going to be your jam. That's what I would recommend, Mike. But do not, don't do both. I would not do both um, in the fall. All right, next up is Mr. Scott Menard. He says, hey, Ron. Scott Menard here from Gulfport. Gulfport, I guess, Mississippi. He says, yep, I made it. Well, congrats, Scott. Uh, thanks for coming to come hang out. Looks like you got a pl nice plane, man. It's a cool plane. Was it turbo? Is that turbo prop? I'm not sure what it is. It looks cool, cool looking plane, man. Very nice avatar. Appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream because I th I think I've seen, I'm not sure if you've, you've emailed, but I've seen your name before. So it's probably, you probably commented on some of the videos or something, um, which is where I've probably seen your name. All right, next up is Blaine uh, Sirio. He says, um, hybrid Bermuda, uh, Bermuda turf dealing with nut sedge and goosegrass help. So for nut sedge uh, in Bermuda, um, certainty is what I would recommend. For goosegrass, I'm trying to think what will, I don't think, I'm not sure if certainty will do goosegrass. Um, I know revolver will, but that's kind of an expensive way to go about it. Let me check the label. I don't believe certain, I think certainty will do Johnson grass, but I don't think it will do goose grass. I'm just checking the label here real, real quick just to make sure I'm not giving you bad info. I don't, I don't believe, yeah. So, so for goose grass, um, uh, Blaine, if it's so, it's a, if it's bad enough that you actually want to use a herbicide to get rid of it, then revolver will do that. But again, that's very expensive. That's very expensive for the nut sedge. I would go with certainty. So I'll show you that. I don't have, we don't sell revolver in the store, uh, mainly because it's, it's expensive and it's, it's something that, that not, not many people actually tend to need. So I'll show you here really quick. So if you go to the golf course lawn store, go back to shop and then weed killer right on the top shelf of the first page of the weed killer section is uh, certainty. So as far as, in my opinion, the best herbicide, the best post emergent herbicide for sedges in warm season grass. And you said nut sedge, but it doesn't matter if you have Kalinga, you know, yellow nut sedge, purple, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, this, this stuff will take care of it. It's an excellent herbicide. And even though temperatures right now are not really high, it is, um, it, it's one of the benefits of it is that it, it tends to be gentler on the grass. It's not gonna discolor your grass like some other options uh, tend to do. The thing with it, I'll, I'll tell you, is that um, you need to give it enough time to work. So if you if you decide you're gonna go with uh, with certainty, you know, give it 10 days. Within 10 days, you're gonna start seeing the the um, the nut sedge really begin to die off and it's going to really accelerate how quickly it kills it. So in the first, two, three days, four days, five days, you're not gonna see a whole lot. You might see the color beginning to go away, but around day 10 is what I find is that it really takes off. It goes, it begins to yellow really um, really well, and then it just dies off and, and turns like to brown, to shrivels. It, 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 again, certainty is excellent against uh, sedges. Again, for your, for your goose grass, if it's bad enough that you actually wanna use a, a herbicide, then a uh, revolver is what I would say. But again, bring your wallet because it's not, it's not inexpensive. I'll give you, I'll send you a link to uh, to Revolver if you want to go take a look at that. And then Certainty you can get at uh, at the golf course lawn store. For best results, use surfactant with it. We also have, I'll show you that real quick. We also have surfactant as well at the store. So hit this here, the, the high yield spreader sticker. That will work well. You mix that along with your Certainty and that will uh, that will absolutely get rid of your um, the, sedge, the sedge problem in your lawn. And then for Revolver, I'll make sure I got you covered here, Blaine. Uh, here you go. Revolver is, uh, is what you're going to look at. Again, look at the label and then just decide if it's, if it's for you, because again, it's an expensive product to use. All right. Next up is Patrick in Texas. He says, I got my like in early. I appreciate that, Patrick. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, here's the thing. We got 111 people in here, only 54 likes. What's that about? What's that about? We can do better guys. We can do better than that. We can certainly, come on, you can hit that like button. You can tap, smash, do whatever you want to do to it. Just get those likes up, man. It really is a free way to help support the channel. Let's do it. All right, Andrew Phillips is up next. Is hey Ron and folks, happy Friday! What's going on, Andrew? Thanks for coming to hang out. Papa Mosley says no sound. It should be back now, guys. Sorry about that. Again, I I had everything set up uh, for me to go to start the show outside, like I did last week, and then within an hour before, I was like, eh, it's gonna rain, and I was right, it's raining. So I brought everything back inside, and I forgot to change the mic back in the software I use. So there you go, technical technical error, technical boo boo on my part. My apologies. Hopefully you guys will forgive me. Hopefully you guys will forgive me. It happens. All right, uh, next up is Robert Mahoros. He's back. He says, I'm thinking about putting down Prodiamine this weekend, uh, second in 45 days, pennant magnum in the spring for the doveweed issue. So I'm, I'm trying to see if I understand the question or the comment. You said, so Prodiamine, um, I guess for your fall pre-emergent, uh, but you said second in 45 days. You're saying this is your second application. 
in 45 days, and then Pennant Magnum in the spring for the Doveweed. I'm I'm not ex I'm not understanding the second the the other the the second half of it. Um, the the comment, the second part of the first sentence, Robert. Uh, as far as using Prodiamine, sounds great. I'm I'm all all for that. It's a good option for the fall. Uh, but I'm not understanding the second in 45 days part. And then Pennant Magnum in the spring, if you want to go that route, that works as well too. It's a good um it's a good pre-emergent uh, as well. So if you can give me a little more context, I can come back to your comment because I'm sure you are still here. I'm sure you're still here. All right, um, uh, Andrew Phillips says, at Poppin was low, I used Dithiapir last fall and it worked fabulously. The person you need to talk to about Dithiapir is um, VMH. I'm not sure if VMH is in the live stream, but he is, you, you talk about a man that can tell you on, uh, you know, from firsthand experience how to eliminate crabgrass in a lawn, talk to VMH. I mean, he was he was Captain Crabgrass and he's no longer Captain Crabgrass. He, uh, you know, him, Dithiapir um, and Conchlorac, we're on a, and he were on a first name basis. So uh, so yeah, if it's bad enough that you wanna to use that, then um, then by all means, go for it. By all means, go for it. All right, guys, yeah, I see all the questions of saying uh, no audio. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I got it figured out fairly, fairly quickly because my meter wasn't moving. And I was like, oh, that's why, wrong microphone. Makes it hard. Okay, uh, Andrew says, I will use that again uh, this year. If, if you got good results with it, there's no reason to change it up, right? If you're liking it and you're getting the good results, keep keep it going. Shazia Sajri from the UK is in the house. He says, that's better and good to hear you. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks Shazia. Thanks, I appreciate it. And then uh, next up is Mike uh, Harvey. He says, I bought Prodiamine, Princep, and Image to Spray. Guys, yeah, I gotta tell you, that is that is a great combination. You know, I, I was a huge fan, still am a huge fan, but you just can't get anymore, uh, of, uh, of Coastal, which essentially was that was Princep, um, Prodiamine, and an Image. And the nice thing about it is that um, the both those products, you water them in um, to, uh, to, you know, they, they're soil-based, they work well from, from being um, getting down in the soil. Um, and as far as a an inexpensive, a poor, poor person, a poor man's um, spectacle flow, you know, that's a great combination. So if you have like a small lawn, let's say you got like a, you know, a, a really, a small lawn where you don't need you don't need a huge um, amount of of, um, of prodiamine. You know, you could get here, you go here to the store and you get, I mean, if you need the, the five pound jug, you could do that. But you could literally get, you know, 24 bucks, you get yourself a five ounce container of prodiamine. That will do up to, I think, 6,000 feet, uh, 6,000 square foot lawn or so for Bermuda. So you're, so you're at, you know, 24, 25 bucks there. Princep is not is around, unfortunately, it only comes in um, two and a half gallons and that's a little over a hundred bucks. And then image is like 30 bucks. So all in for less than $150, pretty much half the price, half the price of Spectacle Flow, you can replicate similar results. You know what I mean? So it's that that combination works really well. The only thing that I'd say you, you give up or you lose for, um, compared to Spectacle is the fact that Spectacle will last a lot longer. Literally, you you do a Spectacle, uh, an, an application of Spectacle and you're good for eight months. You know, it, it typically, um, you know, I don't have a single app in like this time frame, like late August, early September, and I don't have any any problems with Poa in my lawn at all. Like until I don't have any issues. I don't have any problems with weeds in my lawn at all um, using Spectacle in the fall. But it's a lot more expensive, and literally you can get again around the same results, good enough results for about half the price if you're willing to mix them. You know, mix it yourself. If you're willing to mix three different products, get three different products, and mix it up and apply it, then you can get you know as as good or close similar results for again like literally half the price. So something to keep in mind if you're if you don't um, if you have the time to do it and you're comfortable with um, with reading you know reading the label and figuring out the application rates and all those kind of stuff. Like last weekend I uh, I did a live stream where I covered the rates of how I would do it. But you know you feel free to you know to do it as you you know as you see fit. But I mean that's a it's a good combination. What you're you working there, with Mike? I think you're really gonna like the the results you get. Um, if, if it's your first time doing it, you're really going to like uh, how little POA and other weeds you're going to have in your lawn over the winter and into the, the spring using that combo. All right, we got our first super chat of the evening as a super, super sticker. Thank you so much for that, uh, Daniel. Super chat received. Appreciate it. It says a pear uh, character flying in the air with a red cape and a smile on his face. So that's cool. That's a cool sight. All right, so I see you have a question before. So I'm going to take that even though you didn't put it in your super chat where he says, happy Friday all. Hey, Ron, what's your height of cut during dormancy? Do you raise your height of cut at all? Thanks. I don't, I don't raise the height of cut. So right now the lawn is back down to uh, three quarters of an inch, so 0.75 inches. 
And that's just where I'm going to leave it going into the spring. I'm not going to, I'm not going to raise it up mainly because of I've, um, I've, I've gone into dormancy at that height several times for several years and the lawn does just fine. I've actually gone into dormancy at like half an inch and it's done. It's been okay. But the reason why I don't, I'm not a fan of raising it up is one, my lawn tolerates it just fine. And then I'm trying to cut down on how much work I'm going to have for myself when springtime rolls around. You know what I mean? It's, it's all fine and good to let your grass grow up to an inch, inch and a quarter, like to stop mowing it all together. But then when you do your scalp, it's a lot more work. And you know, I have 11,000 ish square feet. That's a lot more material to take out. I mean, you, you wouldn't think so, but you know, half an inch, half an inch more of grass is a lot of grass. You know what I mean? Especially when you're having to, um, if you're just cutting it, it wouldn't be so bad, but you're having to, you know, run the mower, bag it. And then it's just, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of material to get rid of. So I like to maintain the height of cut around uh, on, the, on the shorter side. So for me, 0.75 is where I'm at. And that's where I'm going to leave it going into, into winter dormancy. My lawn seems to tolerate it just fine. All right, next up is Lindrick Butler. He says, greetings. It's been a while. It has been a while, Lindrick. It has been a while since you've been uh, in the in the last stream. But, you know, you're back. You're here. So can't, you know, it's, it's good, good to have you around. You have a question? You just came just to say hi. Either way, it's so cool, right? All right, next up is TK. TK says, I sprayed two applications of Tenacity two weeks ago apart on my bent grass. It is totally fried now. We'll, over, we'll be overseeding tomorrow and we'll apply a third application what are the chances it comes back? Um, well, you did two apps. Is Tenacity even labeled for bent grass? Let me look here. Um, I, I also have to look at the label for cool season herbicides. I also have to look at the label because I don't, I don't, I don't use them really, right? Because I got, I got warm season grass. Let's see what what saith the label. It's probably going to say not to not to put it on uh, on bent grass. But I mean, here's the thing, guys. I, I get you get emails every single yeah yeah I, I get emails every single week um, from people that spray tenacity on their Bermuda lawns, and I don't I'm not sure where it came from. I'm not sure where this whole idea of using tenacity on on warm season grass came from. Um, but really, there's there's no reason to. I mean, I, I realize it's a little bit cheaper than Celsius. But Tenacity is designed for cool season grass. If you spray it on Bermuda, you take the chance of injuring it. I mean, is it, is it strong enough to, to kill it? Unlikely, but it's, it's going to injure it. It's going to discolor your lawn. It's going to make it, you know, it's going to bleach it, make it turn really unsightly. And as a way to, to treat weeds, like uh, Celsius is a much better option. Looking here at the label, it literally has on here control of, pent, of bent grass. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's designed to damage uh, bent grass is what I'm is what I'm looking here, um, but I'm seeing here in the on, on the label, um, uh, a TK. So I don't know that is that if the bent grass is going to come back. I mean, if you if you uh, if it were Bermuda, I tell you yes, right? I tell you yes. Bermuda is likely going to bounce back from the injury, but bent grass, I uh, I don't I don't know, I don't know. I it's I mean, if you've already done two apps and then you're going to be overseeding. I guess with, um, with I guess with a rye grass or something. If your goal was to get rid of the bent grass, then you, it sounds like you're on the right track. But if you wanted to keep the bent grass, then uh, I, I don't. I think what you're doing is the wrong strategy to keep the bent grass. So it, again, if you if you're still in the live stream, let me know what your goal is. I'm gonna look down here really quick and see if you're still in here. Um, is your goal to eliminate the bent grass to prepare for overseeding, or were you just trying to? Um, to get rid of weeds in your lawn and use tenacity on, on bent grass. Hopefully it's the it's the uh, the former where you're trying to get rid of it for a seeding project. Um, but to answer your question, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer if to if, if it's going to try and grow back. With Bermuda, I would tell you yes. Tenacity is not strong enough to get rid of to get rid of Bermuda. Um, but bent grass, it might be. It might be um, strong enough to um, to control it. So if you got electric, if you have time, it sounds like if you have time to get another application in, it sounds like you're gonna do another a third app then by all means go for it, you know? It really depends on if you have the um, have the time between when you wanna get your seating done to, uh, to to do that. So if you're still in here, yeah, yeah. So you said, yeah, I want to I want to kill the bent grass. I have a cool season lawn. Okay, yeah, so in that case, good. In that case, you're doing, in that case, you're doing it exactly right. Doing it exactly right. I, I just, I get so many email about people that are that are using tenacity incorrectly on warm season grass. I, I That's where my mind always goes uh, whenever I, I, uh, I hear about it, so. So yeah, man, you should be good to go. I don't know if the bent grass is going to come back. You go, you've already put two rounds down on it, and it sounds like you're going to do a third. That should be enough. That should be enough, I would think. But uh, but you know, give it a shot and let me know. You can definitely report back and let us know how it um how you how you get on. 
All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, good evening, Ron. The lighting is looking dial, Ron. See, I appreciate that. I appreciate, Robert, hang on. I'm gonna change from this camera to the good camera. I really appreciate that, sir, because I do tweak small things every week trying to get it a little bit better, a little bit better. So I, and the thing is that between last week and this week was lighting. That's the thing that I worked on and I'm glad that you noticed it, man. I'm glad that the lighting looks like that you approve. You know, most people don't notice it, but I'm glad that you noticed it. So I, I appreciate it. It was completely unsolicited guy. I, I didn't like prep him or ask him to say anything. He just noticed it on his own, which is, which is good, which is, I appreciate because I put a lot of time into it. Yeah, but I think it's about done. It's, of course, it's never really done, but I think we're close to done. We're pretty close to done on the lighting. I, I like where it is now. Appreciate you coming to hang out, Robert. Hopefully all is going well with your lawn. And if I can help with anything, definitely let me know. All right, Tavares Allen is here. He says, hey, Ron, I am loving real mowing. My man, I like it. You see this comment is already starting out on the right track. He says, I took your advice and brought my height of cut down slow. I went from two inches to one inch on my perennial ryegrass and things are looking good. Like it? I dropped some pictures in your email. Thanks for the tip. Do I have pictures from you? Let me see. Where do I? Okay. So the caliber. Ooh. Yeah. You know what? I normally don't like to do this, but I'm gonna have to do that one. Those. That. Those. That's fire. There. That looks good, man. I. I. My name is Ron Henry, and I approve of this picture. This is sweet. So let's take a look at this, guys. I'm gonna try and bring it up here live. We'll see if it works. Look at that. That's. That is clean. Looking good at one inch. That is looking solid, sir. Looking solid, I, I I approve, keep going. Let's, that's a, And it's only been, you haven't even had it that long. That's the thing. It's gonna get even better as you uh, as you continue to uh, to use it. Here's another shot of his lawn. Uh, let's see if that, if that pops in. But uh, let's see, there we go. And there. Yeah, so you can see the stripe action he's working with. Looking good, it's looking clean, man. Looking clean, look, you got a little bit of heat stress maybe there on the right side, a little bit of discoloration, but overall, I gotta tell you, that color looks good. You're doing it right. So you see, and here's the thing, Tavares, it wasn't that bad, right? Taking it down in steps wasn't that bad, right? Going Versus like going from two inches to one inch all in one swoop, you would have stressed the line. It would not have looked that nice. And now I got to tell you, do it the way you did it. That is clean. That looks really, really good. Oh, we got, you know what? We got, here's the thing. And I, I we, ha we, have the dom we have the neighborhood domination shot, guys. You guys know what the neighborhood domination shot is, right? Well, if you don't know, you're about to see. You're about to see what the neighborhood domination shot is here. Let's uh, let's get this one up here. This is the whole. You know, where, you know, on the, in the uh, on the store. You know, the 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 tagline that we use is "Be the envy of your neighborhood," right? So, hang on. Let me bring this down a little bit and then punch in here. Look at that. So, when, so imagine when people are pulling up to the street and they see that. You see the lawn next to it, and then you see his lawn. So, I mean, you know, the domination is strong, man. You got to recognize it. You got to recognize it. So great job, sir. I uh, I dig it. The lawn looks awesome. I'm glad you took my advice of taking it down slowly and it looks good. And here's the thing. You got cool season grass. The, the rye grass hasn't even started to pop yet. That That is going to look even better in another two to three weeks. It's going to get even better and better. So good stuff, sir. You know, keep, keep, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. The more often you mow it, the better it's going to look. So just, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. It's looking awesome. Great work. Glad, happy, happy to hear that the lawn is uh, is doing well. All right. Next up is um, Tell Tell Talorn says you must be pretty close to me at Lake Lanier. It drizzled a bit at the same time. Yeah. So I am about. Uh, it depends. There's a couple, there's a couple of different um, like boat docks around. I'm, I'm probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes from Lake Lanier. Not that far. So uh, so yeah, I'm not that far from Lake Lanier. So we have probably similar similar weather. I'd imagine Tellorn, but yeah, it, it didn't come down really heavy, but it came down heavy enough that if I had all my camera equipment out there and lighting and everything else, it would have been bad. So someday it'll happen. One day I'll be out there doing a live stream with you guys and it will just have a freak rain shower and you'll get to see how quickly I can put like, you know, equipment up. But whenever I have a chance to avoid it, I try to do so. But uh, it's good stuff, right? You can't, you can't uh, complain. It's good to have rain. All right, Mar Mauricio Salinas is in the house. He says, hello, Ron. Happy Friday. Hey, Mauricio. Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. So guys, um, in addition to taking care of weeds in your lawn, right? So this is the time of year when you really want to consider getting on that pre-emergent. When it comes to pre-emergent, I was saying this last week, but I'll say it again. A little bit early is better than a little bit late because it is, it is far cheaper, much cheaper much cheaper from like an emotional standpoint, from a monetary standpoint, and from a time standpoint, 
to avoid, you know, to, 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 to keep weeds out of your lawn in the first place versus trying to take care of them after the fact with a post-divergent herbicide. So if you guys have not got your bag of prodiamine or got your bag of dithiapyr, go get it. It's not that expensive. It's easy to apply. And it's gonna, you're gonna save yourself a lot of headache versus, I don't know, two months from now, three months from now, we're on the live stream and it's gonna be, you know, oh my God, Ron, my lawn's full of weeds episode, which tends to happen. It tends to happen in the spring and also tends to happen like in late fall too. So oh, don't be that person. Don't be that guy. Don't be that gal. Get your pre-emergent, put it down. If you wanna get it at the golf course lawn store and support us, that's great. But if you wanna get it locally somewhere else, that's fine too. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna benefit from it, but I, I, I would prefer that you put down a pre-emergent on your lawn in the fall and keep your grass looking nice than to not do it at all. So that's my, my I'm on my soapbox for a little for really quickly for, for this hour on the importance of pre-emergent. Please do it. You will thank yourself. You'll thank me later um, if you do. All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. Good question here. He says, hey, Ron, what do you think about applying Headway G now instead of September? Here in Texas, we will get at least five days more of, of straight rain starting Sunday, and I want to get ahead of any fungus. I like to do it a little bit later in the season, um, Andrew. So I like to do a, a Headway application the end of September, early October, and then another one end of October, early November. The only reason why I do it is primarily to try and keep spring dead spot away, to try and keep it out of my lawn. Last year I did that and I got really good results. Like I didn't, I didn't have, I had like one little patch in compared to having several areas with, it, with that being an issue. So now's a bit early. Now's a bit early. Remember when it comes to uh, fungicides, you're going to get about 30 days thereabouts of, um, of, of protection, of coverage from it. So I would wait. The, the thing, the thing you got to realize is I know you guys in Texas are probably traumatized because you haven't had rain in a while. And any kind of rain that's coming through the place right now, you're thinking, I got to put everything down because who knows if rain's going to come back. But it can't be like this forever. I, you know, in the fall, you're probably going to get more rain. September's probably going to rain more. And you're going to get enough, there's going to be a shower that's going to, you know, you're going to be able to get your headway down at a time that is more optimal for your fall application. And the rain will come. I, I would not do it this early in August, you know, for your for your fall up. I just think it's too early. It's just too early. I, I would wait till the latter part of September, early October, and then if you if you want, I like to do two apps: a second one in uh, late late um, October, early November, and then just hope and pray and wait till uh, Aprilish and see if you have any you know any saucers in your lawn of dead grass. Hopefully, you won't if you do that and you taper off your um, your fertilizer apps like you're supposed to as the the grass starts to go into dormancy. So. I wouldn't. It's your call, but I, I personally wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I would wait. It's too, it's too early in my opinion. Okay, next up is Mauricio Salinas. He says, does pre-emergent slow down um, even slightly Bermuda grass growth? I'm trying to get as much growth as possible to cover some weak areas in my lawn, but also rather use pre-emergent versus post-emergent uh, later on. I have not seen that, Mauricio. I've not seen, um, I've not seen it where pre-emergent, you know, slows down the growth of Bermuda. It might, but I've never, you know, I've never really, I've never really seen that. I've never observed that myself. The thing that will slow down how fast your Bermuda grows, and you know, on the top, we haven't talked about um, Primo in a while, but like this will, if you if you spray your lawn, wrong camera, if you, if you spray your lawn with this, with Primo Max, yeah, this will slow down how quickly Bermuda grows. And, you know, for cool season guys and gals, you know, this is around the time when you guys want to start loading up on Primo because your grass is about to start taking off, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, I would I would get your pre-emergent down. Remember, Bermuda is like that is like that uh, that 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 UFC fighter that UFC fighter that used to like be a bar fighter, bare knuckles fighting is like the bare knuckles fighter of grass. Like you really can't hurt Bermuda even when you really want to. Like a good example, like I sprayed those some some spots in my lawn, uh, not my lawn, in my mulch beds with Fusilade and. Um, on glyphosate, right? A 41% glyphosate product and a fusillate application. And while a lot of the Bermuda is dead, there's I, I went was looking in, in the beds today and there's a couple areas where a little bit of green is starting to come back. And I literally did the equivalent of dropping an atomic bomb on Bermuda. And it's still not dead. It's not dead dead. It's dead, but it's not dead dead. So it's probably gonna take another application to get rid of it. So the, you know, pre-emergent or prodiamine I've personally never, to answer your question, I've never really seen where it, um, you know, it, it, it in any way that I could tell slows down how much Bermuda grows. The thing that's going to help your grass grow in um, faster, if you get some weak areas and you're trying to get the Bermuda to, to, to grow in faster, 
Um, one, minimize shade. And if you can get out there and just mow more frequently, that's going to encourage the grass to grow. You know what I mean? So that's that's the only advice I would I can really give you as far as that. The pre-emergent, I would get it down. Do not not put down pre-emergent because you're trying to get an area to fill in because you'll get weeds and then you'll be hating life. So get your pre-emergent down. All right, next up is Talorn. Talorn is here. He says, I overseeded my Bermuda July 27 and zoysia sod in the backyard in April. Should I not apply a fall pre-emergion on either? So what did you overseed? So you did, you have Bermuda and zoysia. What did you overseed them with? I guess if the long, the, the, the answer is if you, um, if let me see, July 27th, yeah, we're not even a month out. Yeah. So if, if the grass or whatever you put down, whatever you, whatever seed you put down is still growing in, like it's still young, you may want to avoid um, pre-emergent because it's, yeah, July 27th, it's not even, it's not even been a month yet. But I'm curious to Lauren, if you don't mind, drop in the chat, drop in the chat what you, what did you overseed your zoysia and Bermuda with in the middle of the, of the summer? Because I, you know, I can't think of what you would use on both those grass types this time of, um, or even a month ago. Right, so I'm curious, but to answer your question, uh, you, I, if the, if whatever you planted is uh, has not germinated, you're just still trying to get it to go in, and you don't want to take a chance of it um, of injuring it, then yeah, laying off the pre-emergent is a is a good strategy. But again, I would, um, I'm not sure what you were what you seeded in the middle of um, summer in a zoysia and Bermuda lawn. So if, you, if you're still here, um, let me know. Oh, it looks like okay, I, I see what you said. So you overseeded with blackjack Bermuda. Okay, um, so you overseed your existing Bermuda with blackjack Bermuda. It's, you might wanna wait, man. I mean, so here's the thing. Here's the, the negative to doing that is you are likely to have some issues with POA, you know, and other weeds in your lawn because if you did it, let me see, I'm gonna pull up a calendar here. If you did it in July, let's see, July, so August, September, October, yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're gonna be, if you really are serious about the, about the blackjack taking and not doing anything to jeopardize that you're just going to be in that post-emergent life until the spring in the spring i absolutely would use pre-emergent but if you don't want to take a chance of um you know i mean it should be should be frankly growing in by now but if you want to take a chance of like root clubbing or anything like that injuring the the very very young grass that's just still starting to grow in then yeah avoiding pre-emergent this fall is a plan but just realize that you're giving up you know you're going to have weeds from that kind of like whenever um you know years ago whenever i did uh, an arden when i was doing arden 15 like that that time that spring i didn't do pre-emergent and i i went into that knowing that hey if i want if i want the seeding project to work then pre-emergent is a no-no. So here's one thing that cool Susan guys have and gals have that's cooler than we have, right? You know, with tenacity, a lot of people give tenacity a bad rap um, because it just colors lawns, which is not great. But if, if you're looking for a, a herbicide that will kill a lot of weeds and then also give you a bit of a buffer for uh, a seeding project, that's where tenacity is kind of cool, right? We, I don't, to my knowledge, I don't think we have anything like that uh, for a warm season grass that has like pre-emergent qualities to it. But yeah, to answer your question, um, to Laura, I'm not to go off on tangent too much. Um, no, I would not. If your if your goal is to have the blackjack to give it every opportunity to to you know, get established, then avoiding pre-emergent makes this fall makes sense. Just realize you're just going to be just taking care of any weeds that come up in your lawn, um, you know, with post-emergent herbicides, which is not that big a deal. Not that big a deal. I mean, you know, the for POA, you can use um, Certainty. Certainty is really good for POA. And then for any broadleaves that come around, certain thing is certainty will take care of some other, a lot of other weeds too. So if you if you have weeds other than poa in your lawn, check the label and see if it's not if it's not going to take care of that too. But worst case, you can do like what uh, Robert uh, used last December. In December, Robert was spraying uh, the Celsius uh, certainty combination, and and that that will work well. So if in your case, if you find that, hey, you know I didn't spray pre-emergent, I've got poe in my lawn. I've got some other weeds in my lawn, broad leaves. That Celsius certainty combination will get it done. It's just a lot more expensive than, you know, using pre-emergent. But you can't have it all, sir. You can't have it all at the same time, unfortunately. You have to choose. You got you to pick your battles. You got to pick your battles. All right. Anthony Davis says, can I use Conclorac on St. Augustine grass? And it's not recommended. It's not recommended. It's going to injure it. You should not. No, I, I would I would recommend against using uh, Conclorac on, um, on St. Augustine um, yeah, no, don't, don't. Cause if you look, what you're going to want to use, um, Anthony is a, um, a product that has atrazine. Like if you look at, uh, let's see here. If you look at like, um, the spectrocytes, like the less, the more inexpensive herbicides, right? Like the 
the uh, Home Depot stuff, right? Like uh, if we look here, and if you go to, if you want like an inexpensive option on page two, I think, I think it's still here. I think so. Yeah. So this guy for centipede and, and, um, and, uh, and St. Augustine grass, you want something that has atrazine in it. And you look at the active ingredients, which you will not find in here. This is just atrazine. You're not going to find quinclorac. So, um, so no, I wouldn't, I would not use quinclorac on St. Augustine. You are going to give it a big ouchie if you do. If you do, it's definitely, I don't, I don't know if it'll kill it, but it's just, it's not labeled for use on that. You're going to damage the grass and or kill it if you spray, um, if you spray Kinclorac on St. Augustine. It's too, here's the thing. I know that we're not, we don't call St. Augustine crabgrass, but they're, they're kind of kinfolk on some level because, you know, that this herbicides that injure crabgrass will also, will also injure St. Augustine. So, so there you go. All right. Two Trilla's up next. He says, hey, Ron and, and everyone else. Happy Friday. Thanks for coming to hang out, Two Trilla. Appreciate having you in the live stream. And he said, that tipped up Bermuda for you. Looking good. It is, man. For, for those of you guys that are in the live stream, uh, so, you know, earlier I was showing you a viewer's lawn. So, again, for some motivation for some of you guys that are, you know, your, your lawn may look not that great and you're really trying to turn it around. So a viewer, you know, earlier this week sent me some pictures saying, you know, thank you and pretty much, hey, I appreciate everything you did and soil testing and getting everything done and you know, the, the suite of products that he used. But this is where he started and this was in May with serious drainage problems. The lawn was a mess. He took on the challenge of doing a renovation where he started leveling it out, fixing the drainage problems, which before I go into the pictures, that's something I always tell you guys. You, you notice whenever you, you guys ask me a question in the live stream and there's like a, um, a moss problem or there's some other issue that a lot of times points to a drainage problem, I always tell you guys to fix that first because if you put all this time and effort into trying to create a great lawn, but just fundamentally like there's like there's a, a dip that turns into a, a swimming pool for two days after a rain after it rains, the lawn is never gonna look great in that that area. So you look at what Jason did, you know, he he you know took the pain and you know went through and fixed the areas that, that were not draining well. And then he installed new sods and fresh tiff tuff sod, did a, uh, a top dress. And then literally these pictures were from this week. And look at the color. I mean, from, from that, nope, wrong one. From that to that in May to now. So that's four months, four months, just four months. He, you know, it's, that's, he turned his lawn around. It looks incredible. So as a motivation for you guys that that you know may have lawns that don't look great, you can really make grass look awesome in a relatively short period of time if you have a good plan and you are consistent in in your approach to it. So uh, so there you go. All right, next up is Jason uh, Botvich. I can't say Botkovich. Okay, I think I think I think I butchered your name, but I apologize for that. He says, "Hey, Ron." I overdid PGR and now it's recovering. When can I put pre-emergent and which one do you recommend? I've got Zeon Zoysia. I live in South Carolina, close to the beach. Anyway, love your channel. I appreciate it. So uh, so yeah, so as far, I'm glad to hear that the lawn is recovering from the over application of growth regulator. Um, as far as when to apply your pre-emergent, the most correct answer is when soil temps are cooling off and going to se going like south of 70, 70 degrees. I am a fan, and the, oh, the really way the way to know that is you'll have to get you have to get something like this if you're trying to be super precise, like a soil thermometer or a meat thermometer. They can work just as well, or you can just apply it in September time frame. You know, I, I'm a fan of getting pre-emergent down a bit earlier than later because you know, as I said in last week's live stream, and as I've said in a lot of my videos, like the 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 name of of how it works and how you get the best result out of it is in the name of the product. It's pre-emergent. It's prior to the weeds emerging. So if you can get down a bit earlier, you're going to get a good result. Now with you being near the beach, you might it's probably warmer where you are, so you might be able to wait till the end of September and still be uh, still be okay. But a little bit early is better than than late is what I'm getting at. You know what I mean? Because that's that just saves you the headache of having to deal with weeds in your lawn after the fact. So how much PGR did you put down? You said, now you told us you overdid it, but you didn't tell us what uh, what, what rate you used. On the Xeon, it should have been around a quarter of an ounce with a gallon of water per thousand square feet. So it should have looked like, actually, no, that's way too much. So it should have looked something like, uh, I'm trying to, to get this out. So it should have looked something like, not like that. So per thousand square feet, it should have been something like right around there. Like that should have been about that amount is what you should have been mixing with a gallon of water and putting over 
a thousand square feet. And the problem with PGR is, and it, it never fails. You see it in the Facebook groups, you see it, I get emails about it, is you'll look at that. Let's say you have a 1,000 square foot lawn, right? Which I mean, most of you guys probably don't. But if you, let's, you, know, you look at that amount of product and you say, there is no way that that itty bitty amount, that itty bitty amount could do anything. So you double or triple it and then you injure your lawn. But, um, but yeah, going forward, stick to the actual label rates. You don't need to go heavy. As you, you know now, I'm, I'm, pre I'm preaching to the choir. But, um, but to answer your question, uh, September is when I would say is when I would say is, is a good time to do it. With you being close to the beach, maybe a little late wait till the end of the month. But again, earlier is better than late when it comes to pre-emergent. Earlier is better than late. All right, next up is G Free. He says, hey, Ron and Strap Action Gang, good Friday, enjoying the class. It's not really a class so much as just hanging out and just talking about grass, man. We're not really, you know, it's not really teaching. I don't know if I'm not really teaching a whole lot tonight. Um, I'm just, just begging, I'm imploring. I'm, because here's the thing. We had this conversation, guys. If you've been on the channel and you've been watching the live stream for a while, we had this same conversation in the spring. Like February, March timeframe, I said, guys, get your pre-emergent. Go get you a bag of, of, of Prodiamine. Get you a bag of Dithiopair. We have it in stock at the Golf Course Lawn Store. If you don't like me, don't want to support me, go to your local, like, you know, your local store and get some. I don't care where you get it. Just get some pre-emergent and put it down on your lawn because that way we don't have to, we can just talk about fun stuff over, you know, the, the fall time frame. You can show me pictures of your lawn and all that cool stuff. We don't have to look at pictures of like, you know, weed infestation, this kind of thing. But yeah, G Free, thanks for coming to hang out, man. I appreciate you. It's always a fun time. I'm trying to plan what I'm going to do this weekend, assuming the rain holds out. It's not looking so good. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Next up is Tutrilla. He says, Hey, Ron, can you explain how to use the white T jet? I got, I don't have a white one here, but I've got one. The white T jet tip that comes with the yard mastery sprayer. I said it like an idiot, but it only seems to spray my feet when using it on the way the wand is curved. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I, I know what's happening, Tutrilla. So if you watch, uh, do I, I can't show you in the video, but I, I'll, I'll tell you the video to go watch. You actually see my technique for doing it. So with the way the, the product comes out of here. If you have a curved wand like the Yard Mastery Sprayer is, it does end up it does end up like blasting your feet. So what I do, and I don't have a sprayer here to be able to show you, is I take the wand and I turn it sideways. Like you know, kind of like how people shoot gangster style. Like you turn the wand, si like I turn the wand sideways and then clock the tip, rotate the tip so that it sprays straight down. And if you walk like that. It will, it will literally, like a, it'll be like a shower. It literally spray right down the lawn. It won't spray towards you. And I'll actually show you in a video what I'm talking about because there's a video I did on Coastal. Ooh, it was last year. Let's see, pre-emergent. Um, let's see, can I find it? I'm, I'm someone find my video from last year. If you look at my video that, that covered using, applying pre-emergent last year, last fall, where I spoke about Coastal, then in that video, if you watch, here it is, I found it. Um, in that video, if you watch how I spray, in the, the, when I'm showing the B-roll of me actually spraying it, you'll see how I'm holding it. I hold a little bit lower and it's literally sideways and I just clock the tip so that it literally it sprays straight down and it doesn't, it doesn't spray towards myself. So to uh, two Trilla, I'll show you here what I am talking about. So watch this video. Um, and that's that's gonna cover it in there. So you can see the technique that I use. I kind of I kind of I kind of roll it over, man. Roll it over. Roll it over, and then kind of put it out. Put it a little low and roll it over. And you you once you once you do it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's harder to describe than to actually do. Actually, if you saw me do it, it would make sense. And I, trust me, when you get out there with your sprayer and you just turn the wand sideways and you just clock the um the uh the quick the QD to where the 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 uh, spray, the spray pattern is straight down, it's gonna do a great job. But, but uh, you are right, if you hold it upright, if you hold it vertically, you do end up spraying your feet unless you're really, really super short and like can hold the wand low. So that's what I do. And in that video, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So, and maybe that's something I'll demonstrate. It's a good, that's a good point. Maybe something I'll demonstrate if I am able to get some clean weather, some nice weather this weekend to talk about pre-emergent. Because I, I like, I got so many good, some good feedback from that past video that I would, I'm, I'm thinking about doing um, like a live stream, probably Sundays, what it's looking like, where I will, um, I'll have two backpack sprayers, one for cool season grass, one for warm season grass. I'll be labeled, so for you cool season guys, this is your section, for warm season guys, this is your section. And we'll mix up Prodiamine, like the water dispersible granule. I'll show you guys how to use the scale, how to weigh it out, and how to mix it up for cool season grass, so you guys will be covered, and do the same thing for warm season grass. For the warm season folks, we're gonna probably have a little bit more fun 
because we'll, uh, you know, we'll probably throw some Prince up in there and some Amazequin. You know, we'll make our little, our, our poor man's coastal. But if you guys are interested in that, you know, let me know in the chat and I, I will try and make it happen. And in, in that, if we do that in the live stream as well, I'll also show you how to, how I hold it to be able to get a good result to Trillo. So hope that helps, sir. I know exactly what you're talking about, but it can be made to work without problem if you do, do what I'm telling you. All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. Andrew Phillips, he says, is it possible? to treat nut sedge with certainty or just pull them out. I ask because I have 10, about 10 sedges that I keep pulling even with the root and they grow back right back in a few days. Yeah, so sedges are like one of those things, they are, they're worse than spurge. Like spurge, it, spurge will tend to grow back a lot too, but sedge, like pulling nut sedge is not a strategy that will work well for you. You can spot spray with certainty. As a matter of fact, like I've spot sprayed, I'm trying to think, there's only been one, time, that's not true, there's been two times when I have blanketed an entire lawn with certainty. In most cases, I, use, I just spot spray with it because I have sedges in uh, just a few areas, particularly where the lawn drains. That's where I tend to, um, where I tend to use, uh, where, I, where there's nut sedge to, to, to grow in my lawn, so I use certainty there. Um, but yeah, what you're doing, as far as Andrew Phillips answer your question, absolutely. Spot spraying is what I would do. The product's expensive, so you don't want to use, use more of it than you absolutely need to. And that will take care of it. So, you know, get certainty. Hang on, I'll show you here real quick. You I think you already know this, Andrew, but get, um, go to shop, weed killer. Get yourself some certainty and get yourself some surfactant. These two together should be all you need. Now, if you if you got a bunch of different spots and you wanna be able to see where you're spraying, then mixing a little bit of blue marker dye in there is a good idea too. But, you know, these two are what I would say are the bare minimum if you want to get a really good result with uh, with sedges. I've tested it, here's the thing, I've tested it both ways. I've sprayed sedges just using certainty by itself and it works great, it works really well. But it works faster if you use, you mix surfactant with it, it works better. So I would um, I would, I would do this. And considering that surfactant is so, so inexpensive, like that's what I would, um, it, it's, it's a no brainer to mix that along with it because you're gonna get a better result if you uh, you go that route. And yeah, spot spraying is exactly what I would do. That's that is how I've used it more that way than I, than the other way around. You can blanket with it, but I I tend to just to just spot spray. All right, uh, Mary says yes. I have Bermuda. Cool. Thanks, Mary. So I think so. In that case, yeah. So if you have Bermuda, revisiting the comment about pre-emergent, you've got 0 0.8. It's 0.83 ounces per year of the water dispersible granules. So if you're going to use prodiamine in the fall and again in the spring, and you wanna do a split app in the spring, let's take half of it, use half now. So 0.40 per thousand square feet now in the fall. And then if you wanna do a split app in the spring, you could do 0 0.20 in like February-ish timeframe, late February timeframe. And then again, the other 0 0.20 in April-ish timeframe, and that's gonna get you your 12 month allocation of prodiamine. So that, that's how I would do it. I don't do split apps, I just do, I, I just, uh, I've, I've tested it both ways and just doing a single app, I get great results doing that. Um, but if you want to do the split app, then that is how I would go about it. So half in the fall and then um, and then half of what's left. So 0 0.20 and then 0.20 twice in, in the spring. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. All right, so we got a super chat here from Cedric G. Super chat from him. Super chat received. He says, hey, bro, Big Ron, I don't know if anyone has told you, but you're doing a great job, young man. Keep up the excellent work. I know your destiny is right at your fingertips. Turfs up, furt down, strap action forever. Thank you so much for the kind words, uh, Cedric. I really do appreciate it. I, here's again, guys. I'm having a ton of fun doing this. I, I really, really enjoy it. I mean, this we are at two years now, two years of this show, the live stream going on, and it's gotten gotten a lot better. I've made a lot of friends. Uh, you know, I've made a lot of friends, and I've got you know some people that don't like me, which. I still love anyway. I love that. I love. I love. I love, the, I love both parts of it. I love both parts. I love you guys, and you know, haters are a necessary evil, unfortunately. But uh, but yeah, man. I just I want to keep helping people out, help everyone, help you know, get better lawns as much as possible. Like this kind of stuff, Cedric. Like this is what I live for. Getting these kinds of emails and uh, with with this with these kind of transformations. That's the stuff that makes that makes doing this worth it. So I really, really uh, appreciate the kind words. Thank you for the super chat. And you know what? Because you have the um, actually you're not you're the first, you're the highest super chat of the evening right now. You are now the show sponsor. So there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. I really appreciate it, sir. I'm just gonna keep going and keep doing the best I can. That's all I can do, right? 
Okay, now the hard part is figuring out where I left off. And yeah, Tony, Tony Israel is here. He says, hey, Ron. Hey, Tony, how's it going? How much time should lapse between image apps? Fighting <laughs> Nutty Nut Sedge. Uh, two to three weeks, but if you really wanna, if, here's the thing, image will work against Nuts Edge. And people say that it doesn't work, it does work, but it's just slow. It's like like a couple of weeks to get any kind of results slow. If you wanna get rid of Nuts Edge and you wanna get rid of it in like less than two weeks, this is what you need to do. And you've, I'm, you've probably already seen it because I've already answered the question another way around, uh, you know, a couple times here in the live stream, but certainty, like this is the product you want to use on Sedges. I'll show you. Let me, let me scroll down here and it's going to jump around a little bit because the window sizing for the live stream has to be this way for it to work. But this is Nut Sedge, right? This is probably what you got going on in your lawn. This is, you know, I think this is Yellow Sedge, but you got Sedge all throughout the lawn here. A single application, a single application of certainty. This is what it looked like seven Seven days later, you see it's already dying, and I didn't take another picture after this. Like I took another, if I take another picture, like another five days after this, this would be like brown, like uh, like brown paper bag brown, like dead, dead, like not coming back dead. So if you are really, if you really want to get rid of, um, if you really want to get rid of, of sedges, this is really what I, the way I want to go. I mean, you, you you can use image, but it's going to be. It's gonna, it's gonna take more than one app. It's gonna, it's going to be slow. And literally within two weeks of using certainty with a surfactant, you're not, the sedges are gonna be gone. They're gonna be dead. You know what I mean? There's, 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 there's not a better product in my opinion anyway, um, for sedges in warm season grass and certainty, you know? So that's, that's what I would say to go with. It's not that hard to use. It comes with a, um, with a measuring, a measuring scoop. And, uh, you know, you can, in your case, you could do, um, I think, uh, so three small scoops with two gallons of water and surfactant is a good rate that's gonna produce a good result. So three, like three of the small scoops, two gallons of water and some surfactant, and uh, that that rate is uh, is a good rate that'll, that'll help you out. And in the description, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and look at Certainty and check in the product description, we actually have a video showing how to mix it, how, how, how I mix it anyway. It's not the only way to do it, but it's how I do it. And um, also shows how you can combine it with Celsius for like a great combination for warm season grass. So. Not to talk your ear off, but that if you if you're really serious about getting rid of sedges in your um, in your Bermuda or your warm season grass, then certainty is the way to go. That's what I would I would go with. All right, next up is Anthony Jackson. He says I had centipede grass, but I overseeded and got Bermuda to take over. Okay, um, I'm trying to get the Bermuda to grow on the side of the house where there is low sunlight and bad drainage. Any tips? Come man, look. I just spent, you know, Anthony, you've been in here for a while. You've been in here for a while, Anthony. And I just I just spent the first part here talking about Jason saying, hey, look, see how bad his lawn was because of all the drainage stuff? And look at the first thing he did. He fixed the drainage problem. Like he fixed it. See, he leveled it out and made it to where the lawn drains properly. And then he did all this other stuff to make his lawn look great. So to, Bermuda does not have very many enemies that are actually successful against it. Even, you know, even glyphosate just by itself is in at least one app is not to enough to take out the almighty Bermuda. But the one thing, the one thing that is Bermuda's kryptonite is shade. And more than anything else, probably more than any, more than any other grass type that I'm aware of, Bermuda absolutely loves direct sunlight. It needs it. It thrives on it. It's, 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 it's what makes it, it, what makes it really go. So if you have a part of your lawn, a side of the house where there is low sun, sunlight and bad drainage. Um, you know, if you, unless, if the house is what's causing the shade issue, then I'm gonna say you're gonna mulch that area, maybe put some fescue in that area. You I mean, maybe try a different grass type or just turn it into like a, an, a decorative area of, of some sort, but Bermuda is not gonna do well. A, a general rule in general, right? Is if the, um, let's say that, the, let's use this as an example. Let's say that you know, my soul test kit is your lawn, right? And like right here, this section right here, is, well, this, this section right here is an area where it's shaded or it's not growing. But all the way here, this is Bermuda and it's growing really nicely. But as soon as we get to here, it starts dying off because right here is shaded. A general rule is if the Bermuda's not growing there now, right, because it's not getting enough sunlight, it's, you know, you can try sodding it, you can try throwing fertilizer at it, you can try top dressing, you can do all kinds of things. If it's not currently growing there, there's a reason why. And with you saying shade, the area having enough shade that the grass isn't, isn't you know, isn't really taken off, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight it. I don't want, I don't want you to waste a bunch of time and money trying to, to make something happen that's probably not gonna happen. What you can do is if it's getting some sunlight, so you know, instead of 
you know, all the light, which is what Bermuda wants, like, you know, 10 hours, all the, all the light is what Bermuda needs. If you're getting five to six hours of direct sunlight, you could try zoysia. Zoysia might do all right in that area where Bermuda will not. Um, you know, if it's very, it's really, really heavily shaded, then like a, a fescue could be all right. But I mean, I, I would just, you know, the thing, the thing with that, and that, well, I'm not really a fan of mixing warm season, cool season grass in the same lawn, is that once you get into doing things like, um, say you're using like a, like Primo, like using like growth regulator, or you get into start using herbicides, you gotta be really, really careful, right? Because let's say, let's say you, you could now take, this is again, going back to your simulated lawn where this portion is Bermuda, right here we have shade. So this portion is now fescue, for example. If you're spraying um, Primo, you gotta be careful. If you're spraying any kind of herbicides, you gotta be really careful because what's safe for Bermuda will injure and or kill the fescue or whatever other grass you put in there unless it's zoysia. So, you know, you can what you can do is this. If the drainage is the problem, you know, if the drainage is the reason why it's not growing, fix the drainage and then see what happens. Like fix drainage first, because no grass is gonna grow there if it's not draining properly. So fix the drainage, that's where I would start, and then see how it's, um, you know, see how, how the grass does after that. If it's still not growing in there, that's when, you know, I think making, you know, putting some a mulch bed or some rocks in there or, um, you know, um, just doing something different, making it like a decorative area versus grass is going to be a less of an exercise in frustration than trying to get Bermuda to grow in a shaded area. So I, I, I'm just trying to save, save you a bunch of time. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't push to try and make that happen. It's highly unlikely that you're going to be successful. All right. Grass Thief is up next. He says, uh, Ron, I am picking you for this Turf Wars tournament between yourself and all the other YouTube lawn care channels because they beat the, because uh, because beat thy neighbor is weak when the neighbor doesn't take care of their lawn. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you I don't know how you would do that because really, if you were going to have like a World Cup of lawn care YouTubers, like how would, how would you even do it? Because you got you are you going to compare the cool season guys against the warm season guys? That's not really fair. So you'd have to compare like Bermuda against Bermuda or St. Augustine against St. Augustine. You have to, you know, it would it'd be, it'd be difficult to do. And, and how would you judge it? How would you judge it? Right. Um, but, uh, you know, you're saying the beat thy neighbor because the, the, their lawn, they don't take care of their lawn. I would say be an example. Here's, here's the thing, which you'll find, unless your neighbor just truly doesn't care about their grass, which is entirely possible. It's completely, you know, possible. Just be a good example. Like try taking care of your lawn, make it as nice as possible. And it might rub off. You know, if they see you're out there and your lawn is looking great, they don't want their lawn to look like garbage next to, next to your lawn. I mean, some neighbors don't care, but most people are somewhat competitive. So, you know, if they see your lawn's looking nice, they're going to try and set their game up a little bit. And maybe it's enough to keep weeds out of their lawn, out of your lawn, enough to make your lawn look, you know, to, to, a lot, whatever the problems that their lawn are causing in your lawn, if you can get them to set their game up just a little bit, it might be enough to make a difference. So just, you know, just keep being the example, man, and, and it will, um, it will get better. You know, you know, it'll get better or it won't. And in which case you just have to make sure that whenever you put your pre-emergen down on the, the, the domination line, make sure your application is really good there. Just do your best to try and keep, to keep their stuff from invading. That's all I can tell you. And he says, and we, the subs can choose the winner. I have no idea. You guys figure out the contest and figure out, you know, if you can get anyone to participate and we'll see. I'm not sure what, what, what the, uh, what the criteria would be. All right. Next up is Mr. Scott. He says, I emailed you some you pictures with questions. Sorry. I should have put this, uh, in the first email. Yes. The pick is TMB 930. Sweet. Oh, cool. Okay. That's the name of the airplane. I don't, I don't know. I like airplanes. I like anything that has an engine and flies or goes fast, but I don't, I don't know airplanes like the models of airplanes or anything like that. Um, but, um, but cool. Yeah. I didn't see your pick your email as yet. Um, uh, Mr. Scott, I can look here really quickly and see if I got it, if I can show up here real, real quick. Oh uh, yeah. If, if I won't say your last name, I won't say your last name, but I think, I think this is you. So you guys want to see Scott's lawn. It is looking, uh, it's looking pretty clean. I gotta, I gotta admit, I mean, I'm not that I'm a judge of like lawns looking, you know, looking super crazy awesome or anything, but I mean, this lawn, I think most people would argue looks pretty good. So let me back out here a little bit. You got the sidewalk. So, look, at that, look at that edge work too. I mean, the lawn looks good, but can we take a moment and appreciate this man's edge work? Let's get in there. That's clean, man. The line lines are good. The color looks great. Nice and even. Nice job. Nice job, Scott. If this is you, I, unless there's another Scott that just emailed me, if this is you, the lawn looks great, man. Color looks awesome. It looks really, really good. So keep keep doing what you're doing. Keep up the great work because the lawn looks incredible, you know? 
It's looking solid. All right, next up is Rich V. He says, uh, Rich, Se Rich V7, he says, hey everyone, what's going on, Rich? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream as always, appreciate you. You're very, very welcome, Blaine. You're very welcome, no problem at all. That is what I'm here for, sir. And then next up is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey Ron, happy Friday, sir. I have hybrid Bermuda, but not sure what variety. Is there a way to find out? Grass was, was installed prior to me, and all I know is that the grass was installed in 2015. More than likely, it's Tiff. I mean, I'm not sure where you are in the country, Dwayne, but it's probably Tiffway 419 or maybe Tiff Tough. I mean, if they paid extra, it could be Tiff Tough, but it, in, at least around here in Georgia, at least in, in my area, um, I've, in, I've been in, let me see, I've lived in, I've lived in three different places, three different houses in Georgia, and every, in, in every one of them, um, they have installed uh, Tiffway 419 by default. So if you wanted anything else, assuming the builder would even let you do it, you had to pay extra for that. So more than likely it's Tiffway 419. A way to find out, I think you can, you can, um, you can get, you, you, you can take a look, take a picture of it and look on the extension office's website. Like if you look at uh, UGA, they might have pictures of different types of Bermuda to where you can maybe identify it that way. Um, but it's more than likely, if I were a betting man, I would, I'm going to lean towards Tiffway 419. It's more than likely Tiffway 419 is what, is what you got. So, um, because here's the thing, really, if you know that it's a hybrid, that's really what matters. Because when it comes to spraying stuff like, um, like Primo, like the, the label calls for a heavier rate, like it's three quarters of an ounce, it's much heavier on common Bermuda or common Bermuda variants. And on hybrid, it's between 0.25 up to just under 0.4 fluid ounces per thousand square feet with a gallon of water. So if you know you've got a hybrid, which you probably do if you're in a subdivision, they, you're sure they put that in there, then you know for, for all intents and purposes, that's all you really need to know, unless you just really wanna know what kind of grass you have just for, just for your own knowledge. But again, it's probably, probably, it's probably Tiffway 419. If I had to guess, it's, it's probably that. All right, next up is Cleve Anderson. He says, I applied two weeks ago, uh, applied Pilex two weeks ago to suppress Bermuda before I aerate and overseed. Should I apply another round of Pilex after overseeding? I can't answer that one, uh, uh, Cleve. I've not, I'm not, um, I've never used Pilex because to your point, it's really for, it's really a, more of a cool season herbicide. So uh, if another round of it is necessary, I, I don't know if that's going to be, um, if that's going to be needed. What I would say is this, if you applied it, you said two weeks ago. So if you applied it two weeks ago and you're looking at the Bermuda and it, the Bermuda is really dying off, like it looks like it's, it's being, it's, it's, it's hating life, it looks like it's dying, um, then maybe you don't need to use another round. Because I know that stuff is very expensive. It's a very, it's a good herbicide, but it's a very expensive herbicide. So if you don't need to use more of it, I wouldn't. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you, um, if you, if you, if you've got it and you've got, you know, you don't mind to just to be extra safe and you want to, you want to do another app, you can. What I might say is if the, the label should have some guidance on, on the label, as far as using Pilex, um, along with a, an overseeding strategy. So it should, it should say to, for, if you're using this for overseeding or to control, you know, these grass types when overseeding, this is how we recommend you do it. Because a lot of herbicides that are designed to be used that way, like Tenacity, for example, will, ha will have a specific section that discusses overseeding and how to use it if that's your plan. So I'd imagine Pilex would be the same way. Um, and if you're getting good results out of your application two weeks ago, you're probably going to be fine. But if you want to do another one, as long as it's not going to interfere with um, with your uh, your seeding project, then then by all means, it's just, it's just expensive. So I just try to, you know, when a herbicide costs a lot of money, I try to limit how much of it you use when it's, when it's unnecessary, you know? So just, just something to keep in mind. I, I don't know the answer to your question because I, I've never actually used it, but um, I would say check the label and also look at the weed or, I mean, I hate, wow, I, I call it moving no weed. The, 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 the grass, the plant that you're trying to control. And if it's having the desired result, the desired effect, then you probably don't have to do another application. So hope that helps. All right, next up is Ben, uh, no, Reno. I said it looks like Ben, but it's not, it's not Ben, it's Reno. Cool. Reno like renovation, like you're trying to renovate your lawn. Reno says, hey Ron, thanks for all you do. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming to hang out. He says, I have some new Bermuda grass that was sod planted around May of 2022. So new grass, I like it. Uh-huh. I have a small lawn that is full of crabgrass. I'm thinking of getting a soil test. What else should I do? So yeah, getting a soil test is always a great idea. The one that I recommend is the one from my soil, 
We carry these at the Golf Course Lawn Store. So if you go there, there is, um, I'll, I'll show you which one I would recommend getting. So if you go to, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, we get away from the weed killer section because we don't really need that just yet. And you go to sold test kits. I would get this one if you don't already have some way of pulling cores. Reason being, reason being is that this tool this tool makes your life way, way easier as far as getting core samples. So the first time, get the version, get the, the the bundle that has the kit and the tool. And then if you decide you're gonna pull, you know, do another soil test to say in the spring, all you need is just this, just a just a test kit. So yes, I would get a soil test done, um, mainly so you know what fertilizer you should be using on your lawn. But also given that we are going into the fall, right? We're getting close to dormancy. We're not getting not quite dormancy, but we're getting, we're moving towards dormancy. If your pH is off and needs adjusting, so to where you might be able to get off with get um, put down a lime application, assuming it's low, like a soil test is also gonna tell you that. So in addition to telling you which fertilizer is the best fit for your lawn, um, pre, uh, a soil test will also tell you really more importantly, where your soil pH is, because it that really affects everything. That affects um, your nutrient availability. It, affect, it affects how well your fertilizer works. So to answer your question, yes, absolutely get a soil test. The one I would recommend is one from my soil. All right, for your next part here, where you said you have a lawn full of crabgrass, if you want to spray, if you want to use quinine chlorac on it, that will get rid of it. Um, that's a, you know, that as far as a, the, as far as a, a, an excellent herbicide for crabgrass, in my opinion, Quinclorac is uh, is the best option. Now, if you are new to lawn care, let's say you don't have a backpack sprayer and or and or mixing products, mixing liquids, it seems intimidating. You want to just try to try you want to try something else. Then what you can do, it's not going to work as well, or it's not going to work as as quickly. Is um, is this? I'll show you here really quick. Let me go over to where is uh, Spectricide? I thought I had it. I do have it. Here we go. So on Bermuda. This product, not that one, not this version, but you go to Lawn Weed Killers. If you go to Wally World or Home Depot or any, any of those places and you, you get the orange bottle, this product, the Weed Stop for Lawns, contains Quinclorac, which is the herbicide that we really want to uh, for, for your crabgrass. Now, you would get better, you'd get faster results if you got just straight, you got Quinclorac yourself and then mix it up, but that's, you have to have a backpack sprayer to do that. You have to mix it properly. You have to apply it. It's not hard, but it's just it's just not as easy as like just buying this, connect it to a, your hose end sprayer, and then spraying the entire lawn. What you find is if you decide to go this route, you will likely have to do more than one application. And given that we are also late in the season, you know you, you'll it's going to be interesting to see what kind of results that you get, especially if it's like fully grown crabgrass that's really mature. You know, the the quinclorac, while it works well against crabgrass, it does better against younger crabgrass, kind of like, kind of like most herbicides. You know, uh, a, a more mature weed that's established is harder to kill than one that is that's young, right? But if you just want something to, to try that is going to help reduce the amount of crabgrass in your lawn, give this a look. It's relatively inexpensive. And j I would just say just a plan for another application two to, th well, th more, two to three weeks after you do this one. Now, if you, you have a backpack sprayer and you're like, hey, Ron, I'm good with, with uh, spraying more professional grade herbicides, then what you can use is this, is this instead, which is um, which is quinclorac, which is allows you to have more control over your over your application rates and concentrations. And this is what I would use. I'm saying here at Rano Clorac. Can I type? I think I can. Uh, this is what I would use on uh, if if your your goal is to get rid of crabgrass and you want the best method for doing that. That's that's going to be that's going to be your jam. That's going to do a really good job. But again, you need a backpack sprayer and you need to make sure you use the product properly. So hope that helps. I mean, outside of that, we got your soil test covered. We got a couple of options for the crabgrass. What I would say is and again, it sounds like you're new to your lawn is so we're we're going to eliminate weeds, which you know either weed stop will do that or Clark's going to do that. Get your soil test done, which sounds like you're probably going to do that. Go to the golf course lawn store, get your soil test kit, get your get your uh, your soil test done, and then fertilize your lawn based on the soil test results. So the way that I've got it laid out here, I've got it here in an infographic on the store. I think I do. If I can pull it up, I can find it. Okay, yep. So if you go just to the to the golf course lawn store, 
here and just click on shop, just click right there, is an infographic that outlines how I think, you know, uh, the process really works for getting a great lawn. So number one is eliminate weeds. Right now you're dealing with crabgrass, so we've got a strategy to get rid of that. So that's thing one. Thing two is get a soil test done. Again, the one I like is the one from my soil. We sell them at the golf course uh, lawn store. And then fertilize your lawn based on the soil test results. Now here I say fertilize, but it's not only fertilizer that the soil test is gonna tell you. Like if you need to, to, to make any applications, any amendments to adjust your soil pH, you know, if you're in this area of Georgia, more than likely your soil is more than likely um, um, acidic, so it could benefit from a lime application. So it's gonna tell you that. So apply your fertilizer, apply any other um, adjustments that your soil needs, and then it's just really down to mowing. You know, mow, mow, and mow some more. Then we can start getting into, you know, your your um, your your carbon biostimulants. You can go, you get over here, over onto the, the Miramichi uh, shelf here, and you can start getting into the carbon kit, which has biostimulants to help improve the quality of your soil and just really give your lawn that X factor. But the the core is to obviously want to eliminate weeds because you want one type of plant in our in our lawn. We want one type of we want grass. We don't want crabgrass in there, obviously, um, and then get a soil test done, fertilize based on the soil test results, and then mow your lawn a lot. The, if there's any advice I can tell you, the thing that most people do not do enough of is mowing. They don't mow their grass, they don't mow their, on, their lawn enough. So that's that's what I would say. I think that gives you enough to start out with. If you have any other questions, let me know. My email is ron at golfcourselawn.com. So if you have any questions outside of what I've already gone through, you can drop me an email here and I'll do my best to, to help you out. I do get a lot of emails, so if I don't answer right away, it's not because I'm ignoring you or being a jerk. It's just that I get a ton of email. So, and here's the thing, most of the questions you're gonna probably ask, I probably heard, I likely already have a video for it, but you know, if there's something that you specific that you want answers for, drop me an email and again, I'll do my best to help out. And he says, you're in Augusta, Georgia. Cool, yep, everything I said will still apply to you being in Augusta. All right, next up is, Prin Yak Jossi, he says, or she says, I'm not sure, says where to buy the best seeds. It depends on what kind of um, depends on what kind of what kind of seeds you're looking for. For warm season uh, grass seeds, I like uh, Hancock seed in I think they're in Lakeland. I think they're in Lakeland, Florida. They uh, they have a pretty good selection of seeds. They probably sell cool season grass seed as well too. But I've never I've never actually looked for that because I don't have cool season grass, right? Uh, but check uh, check. Uh, again, Hancock Seed in Lakeland, Florida. They're you know nice set of folks. I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that, but I mean I've I've worked with them in the past and I've gotten my seed from them and it's always been good stuff. So I would I would look there. If you're talking about cool season grass, then uh, Baron Brug is really highly rated. Like a, that, a lot of people seem to really like Baron Brug uh, grass seed. So you can get it directly from them, and there's probably other places that carry it. But as far as cool season grass, that's what I know. I know if you're going to recommend, um, as far as a, a quality grass seed for cool season grass, uh, Baron Brug is the way you want to go. And um, you never know, Hancock might carry that as well too. But for warm season grass, they definitely got you covered. They got you, they got you covered for zoysia and Bermuda. And they might even, you know what, I can, I'm, I've got the internets. We can find out here really quick. Why not, why not look? Why not look? Let's see, Hancock seed. There we go. What kind of, what, what kind of grass seed do they have? They go, they, we can look here. Uh, seed variety by application, lawn and turf, lawn. Yeah, so it's mainly, you know, so they got some raw grass, they got cool season too. So you got their own mixtures, they got bent grass, Bermuda, bluegrass, buffalo grass, carpet grass, centipede, fescue, and rye grass, and zoysia. So yeah, so they got a bit of everything. So, so give them a look, give them a call, they'll be able to uh, to help you out. That's who I would uh, who I would go with. That's who I've worked with in the past, and again, it's always been, always been good stuff. All right, hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, next up is Austin Ostriker. He says, can I spray Dimension 2EW as my only fall pre-emergent with good results or or should I throw down the usual granular barricade? That's the, grand, that's the um, brand name for Prodiamine, Bermuda in Texas. I would do one or the other, Austin. I would do one or the other. I would not because they're both pre-emergents. Again, you know, I know that, um, I know that Dimension, um, Dimension or Dithiapir has some post-emergent um, tendencies or t t uh, capabilities against crabgrass, really only against crabgrass. Uh, and a lot of people like to think that I can spray that and use it as like, you know, to go after crabgrass. They go out, I can also go out and spray prodiamine. I mean, you could, but I just wouldn't. There's really no need to, to put two pre-emergents down at the exact same time. I would do one or the other. So if, you, if you've used barricade, if you've used prodiamine in the past and gotten good results with that, just do that. 
do that and save the dimension application for the spring. That is, that's what I would recommend. And again, if you, you've seen my uh, live stream last week on, uh, on pre-emergence, I would recommend, you know, if, unless you're getting good results already with just using straight barricade, mixing in a little bit of Princep, a little bit of image along with that is gonna do a lot for really keeping weeds out of your lawn. Like, especially against POA, like the barricade, Princep, and um, an image is a really good combination that's really not that expensive and produces, and produces good results. So dimension, let's put that on the shelf until the spring and just use your barricade in the fall, especially if you've gotten good results. You know, there's no reason to, uh, to change it up if you're liking what you're getting. All right, next up is VMH, Mr. Captain Crabgrass, no more. VMH, I needed you earlier, man. We had some people in here talking about crabgrass in their lawns, and I, I needed you to come to come and I needed to, you know, hand, hand off the football to you, let you chime in on it, man, because I know you you know how to you know how to clean up crabgrass in the lawn. Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Appreciate you as always. Uh, C Mike CS says, when is a good time to use prodiamine in cool season lawns? I put Anderson's barricade down at the five month rate in March and battled all sorts of weeds going into the summer. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure what the five month rate in March, um, what it what it would be. Um, C, C Mike CS, I don't know why with your name, I always have trouble saying it. I'm just gonna start call, saying Mike CS. Um, I'm not sure why why you battle with so many weeds and, um, going into summer, uh, Mike, but I will tell you that if, if you, well, it depends when in March you did it. If you applied it after the the, sea, the weeds had already began germinating, then that would explain it because barricade is not going to do a whole lot against weeds that are already growing, that are already actively growing in your lawn, which is why I like to do it earlier. I tend to do it like late February. Um, I, I like late February or like mid late February is, is exactly when I, I personally like to do that uh, in this part of the country. Because again, earlier is better than later. Because that's the only thing I can think of why you would have a bunch of weeds in your lawn in the summer. You shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like really what would happen is if you did your pre-emergent application at the right time in the spring, around this time of year is when you might start seeing some more weeds. Because really they say five months, but it's really more three to four months, you know, is, is typically what you get. More, more around that four month time frame. So if you have been fighting weeds the entire time, then I'm going to say your application was probably a bit late. As far as um, as far as that goes, and and then as far as when to use it on cool season lawns, the rule still applies for the same rules that apply for warm season. So if you're using prodiamine in the spring, you want to apply it before the five day at the five day uh, soil temp average is 55 degrees. Now again, does it mean you apply it when it's 55 degrees? If you wait till then, it's too late. You want to do it before then. So really, once you start getting you know, several days where temps are in, you know, the high 40s, low 50s, or, or the soil temps are low, you know, high high 40s, low 50s, go and get your pre-emergent down. Even if, you, even if you get it down a couple of weeks prior to whenever the soil temp average hits 55 degrees, you're going to be better off than waiting to say, you know, I got my soil thermometer and I'm like, stick it in here, it says, huh, okay, today was 55 degrees, I'm going to check again tomorrow. Oh, 55 degrees again, good to go. Third day, 55 degrees, okay, I'm going to do my pre-emergent. The weeds, the, the crabgrass is already germinating. It's already going to start. It's already going to. It's already going to wreck your life and and be a big problem when summertime rolls around. So I'm guessing that you you probably waited a little bit too long to apply it, <coughs> because assuming that you applied it properly, you applied it at the correct rate, you watered it in. Barricade is a great product. You know, prodiamine is a great herbicide. It should have kept the weeds out of your lawn. Um, you know, going into summer. You know, around now is when I would expect you to start maybe having a little bit of weed pressure as it wears off, but not, not at the beginning of uh, of the summer. So, so hope that helps. Um, not sure if you had anything else, but um, but yeah, really the at before in the spring before soil te- before the average soil temps are above 55 degrees, and in the summer or in the in the fall uh, before they go south of 70 degrees. So like as as soil as temps are cooling off. And as you get to that 70, 70 degree um, point, that's when you want to get your fall pre-emergent down. So if you're in Georgia, if you're my neighbor, which you're not, because you're, you've got a cool season lawn, I would say February or so, springtime, September, uh, fall. That's That would be what I would say. So hope that helps, sir. If you can help with anything else, let me know. But it just sounds like that spring app was maybe just a little bit too late, which is why you had some problems with weeds in your lawn. All right, next up is Alan C says, Ron, hey Ron, do you think Syngenta will come out with a smaller spectacle flow container uh, for 5,000, for 5,000, uh, 5K yards and 18 ounces is like 10 years of product? I don't think, I don't think um, spectacle, 
Um, I don't think this is made by. Isn't that Bear? It's a Bear product, isn't it? I used to have it on my bottle. I think it's in the garage. Actually, hang on a second. No, it's not. I've got it right here. I didn't think so. Yeah, it's Bear. It's not. It's not. I didn't think it was Syngenta. I was like, eh, I'm pretty sure it's not Syngenta. Yeah. So this is this is Spectacle Flow. Wrong camera. Is um is by Bear. It's not. It's not Syngenta. And I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that. I mean, I don't know that. Um, one Bear does smaller. Um, this is already small for them, right? This 18 ounce is already the small size. So this is like for the small lawn care or the small, small lawn care business size, right? Um, you gotta realize like where Syngenta has really began embracing DIY with Barricade, what else have they got? With Barricade, um, Heritage, Primo, um, and uh, Acelaprin. Like these guys, the reason why this exists is because of us. Is because they they they're trying to to you know cater to the DIY market. Like you know they realize we like the good stuff too, so they started doing this. I don't know that Bear is really in that market or looking to really get into that game. If they were, they would sell a ton of it. You know what I mean? If they they offered it in smaller amounts, like like a, like even even a four ounce bottle of Spectacle, that's still a lot. That's still a lot of product. It's a ton of product because you figure Spectacle Flow on Bermuda is um, is like either 0 0.10 ounces, fluid ounces. Which, so, I mean, to put it into perspective how much that is, it is that much. Like, you see that little point one there? It's that much for 1,000 square feet at the low rate, and it's this much, 0 0.20, at the high rate per thousand square feet with a gallon of water. So, and you think about it, this is not like a fertilizer that you use it all the time. Like you literally would spray this once in the spring and maybe in the fall if you wanted to, but you literally you only use this once a year. So even in a four ounce container, it's still a ton of product for, for the average um, homeowner. So I don't know, I don't know. I mean, Syngenta won't do it because it's obviously not their product. Um, and I don't know that it's really worth it to bear to um, you know, to make it any smaller. They already make it in 18 ounce and they figure, I think they figure that if you want it, buy it. If you don't, you don't. So, uh, so yeah, to, to, to kind of like what I said last week, Alan, uh, when I was outdoors talking about it, your best bet, if you want to get spectacle, which again, it's this, as far as a pre-emergent for warm season grass, in my opinion, this is, this is it here. This, this is the bee's knees right here. But what you could do is if you have some of your buddies that are into their lawns too, they, and they, they take care of the lawns, they got like the, the equipment, they know how to apply the product properly and safely. Then if you take the 300 and something odd dollars that this bottle costs and you split it across, you know, four or five people, it's not as bad. You know, like the pricing, the, the it becomes a lot, lot easier pill to swallow. And you still, even divided like five ways, this is still a ton of product for, um, you know, for the average, the average size lawn. So that's something I would consider if you, um, you know, if you really want to use that, which again, it's a great product, um, but it's the, the the $300 price tag for a smaller lawn seems a bit steep, which I, I get, I totally get. So, but I, I doubt it. I don't think that you're going to see, I know Sargenta is never going to do it because this is not theirs, but I don't think Bear really is um, really, at least you're not yet anyway, really cares to have uh, DIY as um, as one of their, their audiences. So, so there you go. Good question. That would be nice, but I don't think so. Not yet. All right, next up is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, I have a large supply of prodiamine that is about two years old. It has been stored in the shed where it gets very hot in the summer. Is this safe for the product? Also, same question as it relates to, to granular furt. Um, will it still work? Yes, but what you, what you might find, um, Dwayne, is that the effectiveness is, may not be as as good. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at, pretty much every single one of these products on the, in the label, what you're gonna see in addition to like where the proper PPE is gonna say store in a cool, dry location. So it's without knowing how hot, like how what, like what it was subjected to, um, I would say two years is probably still fine. Once you get to three years or more, that's when I would say, hey, it's time to cycle it out and, and maybe get a fresh, a fresh bottle. What you could do next time is if you don't, if you're not going through it, Go with something, go with a smaller amount. Like go with like a little five ouncer, you know? Scroll down to, to go to page two and go with one of these guys. You know this? Go with a, go with something like that. Cause this is like, you know, 24, $24, $25. If you buy this every, now buy, of course, buy volume. This is more expensive than the five pound jug, but you can, you're getting what you're gonna use in a year. And that way you always know what you got is always fresh, you know? And we have some some um, uh, some articles here, a little some notes here about when to apply weed killers, best time to choose the right one for your lawn, all this jazz. Cause you know, we try to make it, make try to make it as, as one-stop shopping for everything you need. But to answer your question, at two years, I would still use it. 
I would still use it um, once you get past, um, if we're having this conversation next year, uh, I might still use it next year, but then past that, I would I would get a new bottle. I would I really would. I would um I would try and get I would get a fresh one, especially since you're saying it's being stored in you know not great conditions. So hope that helps. Um, you know, even when it comes to like Primo, or if you went with uh, like the, some of the off-brand ones, like 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 Teenex, like you get like a big gallon of that stuff. Most people will never go through a gallon of um of growth regulator, right? So unless you're splitting it with friends, really three to five years is about you have what you have for shelf life. And it depends on a lot of things. It depends on like where it's kept. Is it cool, dry? Are you, were you really good about always store, um, tightening or making sure the cap was, was nice and tight so no moisture got into it? There's a lot of different factors. So really three years is about what I tend to do on, um, on those types of products. But I mean, if it's, if it's kept cool and dry, it can last for a lot longer. All right, TK says, yeah, you want to kill bent grass, cool season lawn. So I remember that was from earlier. All right, next up is Robert Mahoros. He says, correct, Ron, second app of Barricade, 45 days after the first. Do you think Spectacle Flow is better than Pennant Magnum for Doveweed? Both are labeled for Doveweed. I can't say for sure. I've, I've never um, I've never compared them. Um, I've never compared them side to side to be able to say which one is going to be better. I will tell you <laughs> that when I have spectacle flow on my lawn, like when I use it in the fall, I don't have any weeds in my lawn at all. Like until, I mean, when springtime rolls around and really it's not until summer is when I'll, I may start seeing weeds. And that's only if I don't do, um, you know, if I, if I mess up my, my, um, my spring pre-immersion or, 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 or just, I get something wrong. But I mean, really, if, I, if you use spectacle flow on your lawn in the fall, you will not have weeds in your lawn. You just won't. The only, in, in general, the only areas where you might see some are along the edges. So like sidewalks, uh, sidewalks, driveways, anywhere where you're edging, where the soil is always being disturbed all the time. That's, if you have any, that's where you're going to have some, but that's true for pretty much all pre-emergence. But I mean, I've never, I've not really used Pennant Magnum to be able to tell you how well they work for Doveweed compared to Spectacle, but I mean, it's, it's really tough to beat Spectacle Flow in my opinion. Like I said, I've, I've, I've used it um, many times over the eight years, almost nine years or so that I've been, I've been here. And the one thing is consistent is I don't have weeds in my lawn when I use it. So it's your call. I'm not sure what the price difference between them, if it's comparable, that might be a factor, but, um, but spectacle, you're not going to feel, you're not going to be angry if you, if you go with it, man, it's a great product. Excellent, excellent product. All right. Next up is Mac 042. It says, Hey man, Julian. Oh yeah. I remember that. I mean, I remember your, I remember your email. It says, Hey man, thanks for your help today with my new 2419 as I continue to fight moles, <laughs> fight with moles for funerals so far. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, moles are terrible, man. I just I I had one, and uh, that was enough for me. One, it was it was more than enough for me. I don't want any more moles in my uh, in my lawn. They are horrible, especially when they dig up your lawn in broad daylight on camera. Just just, just no respect. You guys remember Rodney Dangerfield? No respect. No respect whatsoever. Yeah, and they and it, it, this it, they, it's ugly. You know, moles make your lawn look is like it's diseased. It, it looks it looks terrible what they do to your lawn. So so irritating. Oh, get me mad all over again just thinking about it. All right, Mary J says, how many square feet is the back lawn of yours? It's, um, I haven't measured it since the fence went in, Mary, but it's it's around 9,000 square feet. It's between eight and 9,000 square feet is what it's at. The entire, between, the entire lawn before the fence was there was front, back, swill area, everything was 12,000 square feet. And um, so now we're 11-ish, but that back area is between eight and nine. Eight, 9,000 square feet is what I am working with. But night, but... Thankfully, it's all flat and wide open, so it's easy to mow. You can burn through it really quickly. All right, next up is, let's see here. Next up is TK. He says, I applied two after prodiamine this spring. Still got a big breakout of crabgrass around the hot spots of my lawn, along the driveway and walkway. That's going to happen. Um, any tips next year? Perhaps a third app? No, not really, man, because, again, the the, the areas of the lawn um, where where it's getting disturbed so whenever you're, you're edging your lawn a lot or people, you know, just, it's just that, that, that area, it's really hard to keep weed free. Like, um, the only areas of my lawn that have gotten, a, a, that have gotten issues with spurge or, um, or crabgrass are along edges, like the patio, the back patio that you guys see me film on all the time, like the spurge will grow around there. Um, around the, it'll, it'll grow along the sidewalk in the front. It'll grow, grow along the driveway because that's where it, that's that's where it's going to it's going to happen. So there's not a ton I can tell you outside of that. If you are also keeping up with your mowing, TK, like you're really out, you're doing everything else properly, like your your mowing practices are great. You really shouldn't have 
you really shouldn't have um, the 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 weeds shouldn't be able to, to be able to get out of hand is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're cutting crabgrass off all the time and it's only in this one little area, it shouldn't be bad enough to where it becomes a big problem. So I I don't really um, you know, whenever I, whenever I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm mowing or edging and I see some, I see like a little bit of crabgrass coming through, a little bit of spurge coming through, I'll just pluck it. Because what you find is because it can really only grow in that one spot, because everywhere else the lawn is really thick and, and doing well, that it, it, it's never rooted in very well. It's never rooted in, it's never really well established. So like, getting rid of it is easy mode. It's not like you're having to get like a tool to dig it out. Literally, you can just grab it with two fingers and it'll come right out. So that's the approach I would take. I mean, the only other thing you could do is if you want to get out there and spray like a post-emergent herbicide, you can, but it's, I personally think that's overkill for what should be kind of an edge case. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be something you're fighting with on a major scale um, if you get your pre-emergence, your pre-emergent um, apps down. But yeah, what, what you're experiencing is pretty much what everyone experiences um, in the areas that you're experiencing it. So I don't think a third app of, 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 of prodiamine is going to make a difference. If you want to try it, like you want to not do a split app, but like break it up into thirds, you can. I think you're going to see the same thing though. So if you only have weeds along sidewalks and driveways, then you're you're doing it right. That's that's about, that's the only area that I, I really have any kind of weed pressure. And I hate to say you can say weed pressure, like just little stragglers that pop through here and there. All right, next up, uh, Dwayne Hopkins says, Ron, does Tafaris Allen make you want to overseed? No, not really. <laughs> nope, it, it, it doesn't. No, I mean, I don't, dude, I don't want to have to mow when it's cold. I, it's one of the, because I, I know myself, it's one of these things where I will do it and then like come December, then when, that, when it starts to get really cold, it'll be one of these things that seemed like a really good idea at the time when it really wasn't. Plus that I have to also maintain the mower, it's more wear and tear on the equipment. I just don't want to have to do it, man. I just want to be able to hang out with you guys and look at cool season grass in the live stream. I don't want to mow every other day when it's when it's uh, cold outside. I don't want to. So no, I'll I'll enjoy cool season grass and overseeded Bermuda lawns vicariously through watching your guys' projects. All right, uh, Frank Beer says, can I seed if pre-emergent is used? In general, no, Frank. So. If you have a cool season lawn, like uh, Kentucky Bluegrass Rye Fescue, and your plan is to do a seeding project this fall, what you can do is you can use something like Tenacity to kill the existing weeds in your lawn, and that's going to also have a, a very light pre-emergent effect for up to three weeks, and then you can seed right after that. If you use um, Prodiamine or like any, any real pre-emergent product, you're gonna have three, a three or four month period where seeds are gonna, anything that's trying to germinate from seed is gonna really have a hard time. It's gonna really, really have a difficult time. So the answer is no. You really don't wanna seed your lawn. Um, you don't wanna apply pre-emergent if seeding is your priority. So that's that. this is one of those things where you really can't have it all, right? If, you're, if your goal is to overseed or to seed a lawn or establish a lawn from seed, then what you have to kind of be willing to live with is that I am gonna have some weeds in my lawn and then I'm just going to take care of them after the fact with post-emergent herbicides. You know, that's just going to be the that's just that's the that's the sacrifice you have to make because if you if you apply per, um, any kind of pre-emergent and then try and put down grass seed, if you get germination, at best it's going to be spotty and it's just not going to do well. So I would avoid it. I would just decide which one is more important to you and choose that and just realize that hey, I can just I'm just going to be using post-emergent herbicides to take care of the weeds in my lawn until this is established. And then next year, next, next, uh, you know, when next uh, time for pre-emergent comes around, then you can use it. You should be good to go, right? All right, next up is Thin Cut. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Checking in from Chimney Rock, North Carolina. Enjoying a 20th anniversary weekend. Still have to check in. Congrats, man. We got to give it up to you. 20 years, that's awesome. Congrats. Congrats, man. You're doing, doing it right. That's pretty awesome. Congrats on 20 years. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing 20 year anniversary, right? So you're like married for 20 years. So I, I'm thinking. Uh, but yes, if that's what it is, congrats. And if it's a well, work anniversary, congrats to that too. All right, uh, let's see. Frank Burr says, St. Louis need to seed. Can pre-emergent go on first? Yeah, so if you're in St. Louis and you're going to be you're going to be doing cool season grass, what you're going to want to do instead is use Tenacity. So I'll show you here, Frank. Go to the golf course lawn store. And then I'll show you real quick. Make this easy. Go Go here. And then go to shop. I'll just do it like how you'd see it. So when you go to this to the to, to there, and actually I have got a link, I've got a link actually pinned in the top here. So you see here with my face, the big yellow, the little yellow at the top of the comments it says Ron Henry products to keep weeds away. If you read if you read that comment, if you click on that comment, you'll see a link that will take you to 
here. So you go to shop and then weed killer. It's gonna bring you to right here. So if you see the top of your chat, you'll see that. What you're gonna to wanna to use is a product called, Meso, um, called Tenacity or the active ingredient is Mesotrion. So this you can use, this you can use and then seed three, three weeks later. So you wanna grab a bottle of this, you can use this to knock, to knock back any weeds that are in your lawn. And then again, three weeks later you can seed and you should still get a pretty good result. But this is not really, in the truest sense of the word, this product is not pre-emergent. It, what it's really gonna do is it's gonna buy you time between when you burn down your existing lawn, when you kill off the existing grass or, or, or get rid of a lot of the weeds in your existing grass, and whenever you do your seeding project, but it's not a pre, it's not a, it's not strictly a pre-emergent like um, like prodiamine is or like dithiapyr is. So that's that's kind of a nice middle ground. If you're planning to seed, that is I would lean more towards that than putting down any kind of uh, any kind of pre-emergent because then you're just working against yourself. You know what I mean? It's kind of like trying to grow Bermuda grass in the shade, working against yourself. It's like uh, it's like mayonnaise and ice cream don't go together. Pre-emergent and seeding like mayonnaise and ice cream they just don't go together. All right, next up is Tavares Allen. He says, uh, hey Ron, when it comes to leveling, should I go straight mason sand or do a 50-50 mix on my cool season perennial ryegrass? My lawn has some bumps and dips, but I'm worried about using pure sand, thoughts? So if you can mix, if you don't if you don't mind mixing the 50-50 blend, that's that would be my, my recommendation. That's what I, I like. I like having a bit of organic material in along with my top dressing mix, you know, and what I used to, to level the lawn. So the sand will, will fix the bumpy areas of your lawn, but while you're out there doing it anyway, why not Why not also add, you know, an organic um, component, add some organic material to your, to your soil if at all possible. There's a lot of people that do uh, leveling projects and they do nothing but sand and they get great results. There's still people in the, in the academy, even the Golf Course Lawn Academy that, that do um, leveling projects and all they do is sand and their lawns look great. It's, so I wouldn't be afraid of using 100% mason sand, but if you have a choice, like if you can go to a place that's going to deliver it and they say, hey, you know, Tavares, we can offer you 100% mason sand, or we can offer you this blend we've got here that's got sand and then like 30% compost or 50% compost. I would lean more towards the 50-50 blend than I would uh, just the straight sand because you're going to get the best, you can get the best of both worlds. You're gonna get the benefits of the sand and you're also gonna get the benefits of the compost. So it's your call. You're not gonna, there's nothing to be afraid of using just pure sand. I mean, people do it all the time. As a matter of fact, more people, more people likely level their lawns with just sand than they do with any kind of blend because a lot of places don't carry blends. Like you can get masonry sand, you can get river sand, you can order that. Like a lot of places will carry that, but it's only like it takes more of a specialty place to get a, uh, a, a, a pre mixed top dressing mix, you know, where you have some sand and then some organic material, kind of like what Super Sod does. So, it's your call. Either one will produce a good result, but if it were me, I would lean more towards, really I would do 70-30, but if 50-50 is easier for you to mix, that is what I would do. But again, you can get a good result either way. All right, Harfelt Fashion is up next. Granger is in the house. What's going on, sir? He says, good evening, Ron. Tell me if I got a deal. Uh-oh, uh-oh, sounds like someone got some hardware. He says, I sent the wife to site one to get some Carbon Pro G. She came back with carbonized PN, Receipt and price says she paid for Carbon Pro G. Hookup or not? They are pretty much, if memory serves me, they're the same price as Site 1. They're, they are the, um, is that, wait, is that right? They are, no, that's not true. No, um, Carbonized PN is actually a little, is a little bit cheaper than Carbon Pro G. Carbonized PN is a little bit cheaper than Carbon Pro At least the last time I was at the uh, the Buford location, that's what that's what I, I recall, yeah, because Carbon Pro G has been around, I know I know what it costs now because I use Essential G, but it was around, that's why I looked, it was around $25 a bag, thereabouts. And the Carbonized PN is more like $20 a bag, 20, like low 20s. So it's, it's not a night and day difference, but the Carbonized PN is a couple dollars cheaper than the Carbon Pro G. So check with them, call them and say, hey, listen, I paid for Carbon Pro G and I got carbonized PN. Can um, you know what is are the is the pricing now the same? Because they may have changed it again. I have not bought Carbon Pro G in a, in, a, in a long time, but um, but check with them. Check, just call them and see. And if 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 it's if they made a mistake, they'll make it right. Their site one's pretty good about that. So just just call them up and say, hey, listen, I paid for carbonized P, carbon. I wanted Carbon Pro G. I paid for carbonized. I paid for Carbon Pro G, and I got carbonized PN. Can we make, can you, I mean, can, is the price, can you get a refund or can you, can I come by, pick up a couple extra bags to make, you know, to pick up the price difference or whatever? And they'll take care of it. But the lot, from what I recall, 
the um, when I bought it, last time I bought it, there was a price difference. It was a few dollars difference. Site one may have now made the price the same on both of them, but um, in the past it was a little bit cheaper. Uh, and you say that three bags worth? Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's you're talking about maybe you know I don't know six dollars between I mean for over over all three bags. Because from what I recall, it was like a two or three dollar price difference. It wasn't a big amount. So call them, ask them, and they'll probably say, "Hey, we've changed pricing. It's now the same price now." So in which case, you didn't really either way. You didn't get a deal. So hope that helps. Maybe, maybe that's why they didn't. They just rung it up, um, which whatever skew was easier for them to pull up in the system because the price is the same. That's that's that could be what's happening now. Because again, it's been a while since I bought it. All right. Next up is Anthony Jackson. Anthony Jackson. He's back. He says, "Hey Ron, what is a good shade tolerant grass?" that will blend well with Bermuda on the shady side of my house. I'm in Louisiana, by the way. <sighs> blend well. I mean, when you say blend well, I mean, there's not, <laughs> Bermuda doesn't look like, um, doesn't look like most other grasses. So like if you, if you did like zoysia, zoysia looks like the leaf of zoysia is, is um, a bit thicker. It's a thicker leaf than, um, than Bermuda. So they don't, they don't visually, they don't look the same and color wise, they don't look the same. So if, here's the thing I would say this, Anthony, if the area that is shaded, if you can see the shaded area and the area of the lawn from one vantage point, so if you're like walking by, the, walking by the sidewalk and you can look at the house and you can see the area where the grass is growing and you can also see the area where that's shaded, I would, in a situation like that, I might think twice about introducing another grass type because you're gonna see the difference. You are gonna see it. I mean, unless we're talking about a small area where it might look like a border or something. Maybe that's going to be okay. But there's not really a grass type that I'm aware of anyway that's going to blend that you're going to you're going to plant and it's going to look like Bermuda. It's going to look it's going to look different. You know, zoysia is um, a bit more shade tolerant than Bermuda is, but they look different. They look the the grass texture, the leaf is different, and the color is different. Whereas Bermuda can be like a, a darker green, zoysia is more of a like a lime like a lime green, like an emerald. Like an emerald zoysia, like an emerald or lime greenish color, in my opinion. So the color is different, the the texture of the leaf is different, and um, I mean, for most people that don't really pay attention to grass, they may not notice it, but you will notice it. If you, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you're if you're asking the question, so with the expectation that you won't be able to tell the difference, that's not going to be the case. But if you, just the average person is walking by, if they're going to notice it, probably not. They're, you know, most people don't pay attention to grass. They don't pay attention to anything. So they got their 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 head in their phone half the time. So. If it's more onlookers you're worried about, then you're okay. If it's you, then it's, it's gonna look different. So hope that helps. All right, next up is uh, Grass Lawn Care says, how do you get rid of Bahia? Uh, Celsius will injure and or kill Bahia. I'm trying to think of what else you can use for Bahia. I don't know if Conclorac will. Let me look here really quick. I'm not sure if Conclorac is labeled to kill Bahia grass. Let us see. Let us see. What says, what saith the label? What saith the label of Queen Clorac and Bahia grass? Let's see. Because there's a nice, there's a nice graph in here that tells you what's tolerant, what's not tolerant. And uh, let's see, does Bahia, does Bahia pass? It does not. So yeah, so you got a couple of choices. You can use Celsius or you can use Queen Clorac. I would probably lean towards Conclorac because it's cheaper and we'll do the, do the job. So I'll show you here. Let me pull up the label. I'll actually show you what I'm talking about here, grass yard lawn care. So if we look at the Conclorac label, you will see it says tolerant turf grasses established. So we have in the highly tolerant section, we have alpha grass, Bermuda. You know how Bermuda does. It takes, it takes, a, takes a look and keeps on ticking. You got your bluegrass, KBG, buffalo grass, fescues, different types of ryegrass, and zoysia grass. Even zoysia grass will tolerate it. Moderately tolerant, fescues don't really like it so much, or some of them don't like it. But then Bahia grass, uh, St. Augustine centipede are susceptible, meaning that it, it at higher rates, especially if you mix it with um, uh, MSO, with a methylated seed oil, you'll likely injure and or kill it. So if your goal is to get rid of the Bahia, then Conclorac is, a, is an, is an ex inexpensive or a less expensive way of doing that. Again, Celsius will injure Bahia too, but it's a lot, it's like twice the price. It's a lot more, a lot more money. So if all you're trying to go after is just, just the, um, just the Bahia grass, and I would definitely give Quinclorac a shot first. If you decide you're going to do that, I'll, I'll give you a link here to it. 
And be sure you read the label because in the label, it's not only gonna give you like application rates, but it'll also give you application rates for the methylated seed oil, which you really wanna use with it for the best results. So let's see, so at grass, uh, yes, lawn, nope, that's not grass thief. This another one, at grass, yes, lawn care, uh, Quinn, Chlor, Rack. There you go. So that's that's what I would try first. That should do, should do the trick. And again, read the label because it's got some good guidance in there, especially with, with the um, with as far as like MSO ratio to use with uh, with the amount of active with the amount of clinical you're using. All right. Next up is JBL four three four five, and he says, "Hey Ron, I have Saint Augustine, but at the end of my side yard is a surprisingly beautiful centipede grass that I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, will my Saint Augustine snuff it out, or do I have to kill it?" Huh, I wouldn't, I'm like, now, here, now here's the problem. I, now the thing that I know will, that will kill centipede will also kill, will also kill or damage um, St. Augustine. So here's the thing, JBL, like the same advice I was giving, I was giving grass yas as far as queen chlorate goes. If the area is just centipede, like the area that is just, you don't have any uh, St. Augustine in there. If it's just centipede, then spraying it with queen chlorate will injure and or kill it. But if you got if it's kind of a mutt area where you've got the Saint Augustine mixed in with it, uh, then you may just have to bide your time and wait and wait and see because it's going to you know it's going to injure the that, that herbicide will also injure the Saint Augustine as well too. So it's your call. As far as if it's going to take over, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to if it's eventually going to grow in and snuff it out. And and here's the thing: even if you if it does, it's it's a long process. It's not like kind of like people that that um that that try to um mix multiple different types of grass. You can do that, but it's not like it's a month time frame and it all looks all nice and even. It's all evenly distributed. It could be several years before it looks it looks you know evenly blended in. So if you have the centipede, and you really want to get rid of it. And again, it's an area that is just centipede where you can spray a herbicide on it and not injure the Saint Augustine. Then you could use quinclorac. You could use glyphosate. You could use glyphosate. You could use a lot of different things because you're not you don't have to worry about injuring the grass you want to keep. And in that case. The St. Augustine would, um, then you could plug that area and, you know, it, then it will, you can jumpstart the process of getting the St. Augustine to, uh, to fill in in that spot. So that's something to think about. Um, I, unless you're really, really super patient, I would, I would look to get rid of the grass you don't want versus hoping that the one that you do want is going to fight with it and take over. So hope that helps, sir. Need anything else? Definitely let me know. All right. Um, um, Isaac is here. He says, enjoy your, see, here we go. See, why, Isaac, why you, why you gotta come here and throw shade, man? Why? Is it necessary? Like, I'm being nice. The warm season people in here in the live stream are being nice. Why you gotta come in and be like, enjoy your time with your cool season grasses, cool season grass, or your warm season grass, cool season grass is about to take over. Totally not jaded with this, with this hot, hot, uh, with this ASF summer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. Your, your guy's time to shine is coming. You guys are going to be living your best life. You can tell, uh, well, who was it that sent me this? It was Scott. You can see that already, man, the cool season grass is starting to come around. You know, the rye grass is starting to, starting to, starting to, starting to raise its, you know, starting to put its elbows out a little bit. It's trying to, trying to, trying to flex a little bit. And another month from now, it's going to be looking really good. But it's okay, man. Listen, we only get one growing season, Isaac. You guys get a spring growing season and a fall growing season. So let, let, us, let us dominate for the little time that we have. You know, you're about to be shining here again soon. Let us enjoy our time in the sun, pun intended, right? All right, Mr. M Mr. Made in the 80s is up next. He says, I'm dealing with Spurge and Nutsedge. Got to get out the sprayer. Yeah, yeah. So Spurge is pretty easy to get rid of. Like even Spectricide is pretty good against Spurge. Like I would, that, that's a great product for that. For Nutsedge, uh, certainty. If assuming, if assuming you have warm season grass, uh, certainty is what I would recommend. But it just depends on uh, on your grass type and what you what you know how you want to go about it, um, Mister Made in the '80s. But for the sedges, certainty will get it done. All right, Jev Van seventy two says I just hit uh hit a bunch of sedge that sedge was sedge hammer. It's been ten days and it's yellowing quite nice. Nice sedge hammer is a good product too. Is a good product too. It's not as good in my opinion as uh, as certainty. Like whereas what I what I've seen is if I've areas that I've, I've tried sedge hammer in the um, the swale area, the area between Alex's lawn and my lawn, and I've tried sedge hammer on Spurge there. And what I found is if I spray, I've in the past is I spray that area with it and it does not get back. You have the results that you, that you what you're talking about, but then it, it will come back. Whereas if I spray um, 
that sedge with with certainty, it's gone. Like it doesn't grow back in that area again. You know, at least for the season. Next season it'll probably come back, but I don't I don't have to deal with it again for the remainder of the season. So let me know, Jeb. Let me you know keep me posted on how it does for you. It, the area, and again, to, to be fair to, to Sedgehammer, the area that, that, that I experienced that is an area that literally, when the back when it rains heavily in the back lawn, literally all the water that's on the back lawn drains through this like four foot section that a lot of water passes through, which is exactly what Sedge likes, right? So it's maybe not the best test for, uh, for the effectiveness of a product, but again, certainty when it's, when it's gone, it's gone. It's gone until next year anyway. So keep, keep me posted on how it does, man. Good stuff. Sounds like you got a plan. All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. He says, Ron, I have Bermuda grass yard at 0.7 inches or three quarters of an inch and the slick end green. So far, so good. I have a neighbor who has St. Augustine runners creeping in. Mm. The thickness of the yard is holding, but I need to kill it without killing Bermuda. Cream Clorac, you can, you can use that. That'll do it. Because Bermuda, Cream Clorac won't, won't uh, damage the Bermuda, but it will, St. Augustine does not like it. So the same... Um, these are the last three questions about, about uh, herbicides. Well, the last three out of four anyway about herbicides has been, Queen Clark has been the answer. So yeah, for what I would say, Andrew, is get your hands on um, on some Clorac and and that will that will do the trick. That'll do the trick. The, the Bermuda will tolerate it just fine, but the uh, St. Augustine, not so much, not so much. Let's see, so at Andrew, and I'll, I'll, send you, I'll give you the links here just in case, but you've already, you've probably already seen it because I've, I've put this link in the chat a couple times tonight. But take a look at that. That should do the trick for you, sir. And if you need anything else, uh, let me know. That's a good way to, again, keep your Bermuda happy, but the Concorac, again, not so much. She says, okay, thanks again. I got my certainty. Blue marker dies are and ready to go. Also, we'll wait on the Headway G. Good stuff. I think it's a good idea. I wouldn't, you know, it's just too early now, man. You're going to get rain in Texas between now and October. It's going to happen. And then you'll be happy that you waited. Keith O'Connor is up next. He says, if rehabbing a neglected lawn with some bare spots, will pre-emergent like barricade prevent Bermuda and or fescue from filling in? Generally, no. Um, helping a family member? No, not really. So if it's if you have grass that's already growing, so it's already, in other words, you've already got the lawn, it's already established, it's already, it's already doing its thing, and you have a bare spot that is due to neglect or you know, something else going on, then yes, if, you, if they're gonna start taking care of the lawn, then the Bermuda will fill into that area. Fescue doesn't really creep like, uh, doesn't really spread like how Bermuda does, not as aggressively anyway. So with, um, if your goal is to have Bermuda in that area, Bermuda will take care of it. If the goal is to have fescue in that area, then I would avoid getting pre-emergent there and perhaps plan for seeding that bare area. Cause I don't, I don't, again, I don't know how big the spot is, but I'm guessing if you're saying that the, if you're using Bermuda and fescue in the same sentence, then it, I'm, I'm reading between the lines here and I'm starting to think that the area is heavily shaded and maybe that's why it's bare. Because if, if, if that's the case, then you would want to avoid putting pre-emergent there because you, you know if you want to get the fescue to grow in or, or, or see that area, um, you're not going to want to have pre-emergent in that, in that, in that, um, that spot, in that location. So um, if, you have a bit, if you can give me a bit more details, Kevin, I'll do my best to give you a better answer, but just the fact that you that you mentioned Bermuda and and uh, fescue in the same sentence and a bare spot leads me to think that it's a it's a shade problem. And if it's a shade problem, then fescue will be will do the will, will work. And in that case, I would um you, know, you probably want to seed it to get it to grow in there. And in which case, no pre-emergent in that in that area, at least just not in that section where you are um, trying to get to fill in. So hope that helps. If you can drop some more so like another some more context around it to make sure I'm giving you good info. But I, I believe that's, um, I can read between the lines. I think that's what's going on here. All right. Um, Mo, no more, no Mo worries. That's, that's actually, that's actually, that's a really good, good play on words. No Mo worries lawn care. It's pretty good. How to prevent, uh, get rid of purslane. It's spreading all over my customer's lawns. Um, well, pre, I mean, I'm trying to think of per, perdiamine will, um, is labeled for that. I'm checking here. Really quick, uh, no mo. Purslane is not a question I get um, too often, but I mean, I would think that's probably on the predimine label. Let's take a look here. Let's look together. Let's look together on if that if that is listed as one of the weeds that it will. Yeah, purslane is on there. Yeah, so so it is. So I'll show you right here. It is it is on the label for um, one of the weeds that it will. Uh, control. So the way to avoid it is to use pre-emergent. Now, 
you didn't tell me what kind of grass you have or what kind of grass that you're, you're dealing with because there are there's there's different herbicides that will kill it after the fact but they're different if you're dealing with warm season grass or um or cool season grass so that the, the the way that I would say that if you want to make your life easier is to get your your customers on a pre-emergent program, get it down in the spring and the fall, and that way you won't really have the problem with uh with purse lane with with purse well, I can't say that word with purse lane in the first place. So hope that helps. Let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check the labels real quick for to see if certainty um not certainty if Celsius is labeled for for purse lane. And again, I'm, I'm answering this question as as if you have a warm season if it's warm season lawns that you're dealing with again without that's one thing guys whenever you guys ask a question tell me what kind of grass you have because that changes the answer yeah so yeah so celsius is labeled for uh for for purse lane uh for purse lane um, um no mo um worries so show you here really quick so if you have warm season grass let's say you're in georgia and all your customers are war are, are, are warm season people then you can get your hands on some Celsius and that will, will do the trick. It sounds like you have a business, so you can probably, you probably already have it. But if you don't, you can go to here on the golf course lawn store and go to shop and weed killer. And it's right here at the top shelf. So you got Celsius and you got surfactant. That will, that these two together will work to get rid of it. And if you want like a great combination that will knock out most weeds in your customer's lawns, if they, if they have warm season grass, again, this is only for warm season grass. This kit that we carry that has Celsius certainty, uh, surfactant and a marker dye is really good. It's really, really well is received and it covers, it covers you as far as, you know, most of the common weeds you're gonna have in a warm season grass lawn. So hope that helps. Again, I would, um, you absolutely, you can use uh, Celsius to treat active, like weeds that the person that's, that's actively in the lawn, but the way to make your life easier and to keep the customers happier is to avoid them having it in the first place with pre-emergent. So think about that, um, you know, check and check the label, but Prodiamine is the least expensive out of the ones that I'm gonna, I would recommend and it, it'll do the trick. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, definitely let me know. All right, let's see what else we have. Jeff Van says, what about killing nuts edge in ornamentals? I've got it in my lawn, but in my landscaping beds too. I would still use certainty, just be careful. Just, just um, what I've done, and I don't have a piece of cardboard here. When you're trying to not spray, because um, remember, cer cer certainty um, works by getting on the leaf, on, on the foliar, right? So if you can get a piece of cardboard, take like an old box and cut it. And if you can shield your ornamentals away from like when you're spraying it, that's a that's a strategy for not getting it for not you know getting hitting your ornamentals with uh, with certainty. That's a that can absolutely work. I, I mean I don't have pictures of it to know what what your beds look like, but if you can if the if the sedge is away from if it can be isolated, I guess what I'm trying to get to away from the stuff that you're trying to preserve, then that can work just fine. So you you can't get out there and just just blast the entire like your beds and your ornamentals and everything else. You only want to spray the stuff you're trying to kill. But and if you and if there's a way to isolate the the sedges from your ornamentals, which I would think they there would be, then you should be you should be just fine. Get a piece of cardboard and just you know kind of mask off and make sure you're not you're not spraying you know whatever it is roses or whatever else you have. Check and also check the label for certainty too, because there are a list there's there's a list of um of other plants other than the grass types that tolerate it as well. So check the label and see if the stuff that's in your bed is on that list. But if it's not, worst case, cardboard and just again just keep it shielded to where you're not you're not blasting uh, the stuff you want to keep with the uh, with the product. All right, um, Anthony Jackson says it's a it's the house and fence. Okay, yes, yeah, so you got you got a house and fence. So yeah, so those those areas, if it's a shade problem, so Bermuda is just not gonna it's not gonna grow there. If it's not currently growing there, it's probably not gonna grow there. Is gonna be the answer. So your options again are if you can tolerate two visual two two different looking types of grass is a fescue or perhaps a um, perhaps zoysia um, or just turn the area into like a bed like a mulch bed or something that's decorative that you know it shouldn't be it really shouldn't be that big of an area typically for with near a fence it's four feet four to five feet it's not, like, not a, a huge area away from the fence which again it's four to five feet is not a small area but um it's not like it's like half the lawn i guess is what i'm trying to get to 
So you, you can do something kind of cool there that's not going to have you pulling your hair out with trying to get grass to grow in an area where it's always going to struggle. Because here's the thing, even if you get the zoysia to grow there, it's still not going to do as well as um, as if it had like a lot of direct sunlight. So it's, it's your call, Anthony, if you really want to go down the route of trying to get grass to grow there. But I, I would just really lean towards mulch bed or rock garden or you know something else that looks cool and is pretty nice to look at that doesn't involve grass because shade is grass really needs sunlight to do to do well all right and then no more uh, lawn worries i already got you answered as far as how do you get rid of uh, slash prevent purslane pre-emergent and i give you a pre-emergent and a post-emergent uh the pre-emergent will work whether it's cool season grass or warm season grass and then the post-emergent the one i i covered um celsius is for warm season grass only Check the label for tenacity if you're dealing with cool season grass and see if it is labeled for that. But I don't know off the top of my head for sure. All right. Next up is <laughs> Justin Cherapy. Take a sip here, guys. Throat's getting dry. Uh -oh. He's... He says, hello, Ron and all. Is it too late in the season for a PGR and a verticut? No, it is not too late in the season for PGR, I my last my, my last PGR app will likely be the middle of next month, depending on how the weather does. If it's super super hot and still you know the the grass is still growing aggressively, my last one will be in October. But typically September is when I begin to taper off using growth regulator. And as far as verticutting, you can if done right, verticutting is not. Um, I don't have your, your question up here. Done properly, Justin, verticutting is not terribly. Um, it's not super, super stressful to the grass. Now, if you're digging a trench with a verticutter, like if you set the blades really deep, then yeah, that that you may not want to be doing this time of year. But if you're doing it where you are above the surface of the um, of the soil, you know, you're, you're pretty much just just cutting runners, and you're, you're being you're not you're not being too aggressive. That's going to be just fine. It, it, that shouldn't that should not be a um, a problem at all. So, growth regulator, yes, you're still good on on using uh, Primo this time of year. If you still want to, you're still good to use this. And then verticutting, as long as you are not doing it aggressively, as long as you're not being super aggressive with it, you should be good on that as well, too. And then he says, P.S. Just during the discussion, sorry if you answered already. Nope, no one's asked a question about verticutting tonight, and no one's asked a question about when to stop using growth regulator tonight. You're the first. So there you go. All right, next up is Garland Holland. He says, sad to say my lawn looks horrible. Sad to say my neighbor's lawn looks horrible. I thought about just letting uh, treat, uh, just just treat, just treat, letting. What are you trying to say? I just I thought about just just asking him to let me treat the side close to me. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I mean you can ask him and see. You can ask him if it's um, if they don't mind. You can uh, you can say. Or you might just say, hey, listen, I I know and don't. <laughs> You have to be diplomatic when you do these kind. Of, you have these kind of conversations, Garland. You don't want to say, "Hey, man, your lawn looks like trash. Can I can I just spray this area so so it doesn't mess up my lawn?" What you might say is something like, "Hey, I noticed that you know you're probably really busy with work. You probably got a lot going on, and you don't have as much time as I do to be able to work on my lawn. Is it going to bother you if I just spray like you know four or five feet into your lawn area, um, like with my pre-emergent, my herbicide applications to try and keep um, you know just to try and keep." Maybe some of the weeds or some of the, the the stuff that's going on in your lawn from getting into mine. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to take over or anything like that. I just want to see if you'd be okay with me doing that. So kind of phrase it like that. Don't <coughs> don't go in there saying, "Hey, man, your lawn looks like trash. You're messing up my lawn. Uh, can I just can I take care of this for you?" It's probably not going to be too well received. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it might be well received. You guys would be, you guys might be like really good friends. In that case, it might be just fine. But um, but it's you know, I, I don't. I'm assuming. I'm, I'm answering. I'm I'm answering the question assuming that you guys are not like buddy buddy like for example the my next door neighbor not alex uh, like he's asked me to do um to, i want to help him clean up the weeds in his lawn and he's also asked me to help him like spray the carbon kit because he doesn't have a backpack sprayer so if they ask then sure i'm i'm happy to help out but you don't want to go out and like volunteer you know to go do something on someone's lawn unless they they actually ask for it you know they might they might consider it to be rude so just just a thought just a thought. And if you do, again, preface it like, hey, you're probably too busy. Can I just, do you mind me just doing a small little area and see what they say? And if they tell you to kick rocks, you know off, you know worse off than you are right now, right? All right, next up is Eric B. Eric B is up next. He says, I liquid burned my front fescue plus the side yards. You went kind of heavy on your application rate on fertilizer, I guess. He says, besides lime, what do I need to increase pH. Use lime during the reseed or several times during the process 
uh, during the process of a before and after reseed. Right now, my pH is 6.6, but more lime. No, if, if your pH is 6.6, you don't need lime. Your, your pH is exactly where it should be. So low pH, um, Eric, is more when you are below 5.8. You know, five eight, five eight to seven two is acceptable. Mid sixes is like the Goldilocks zone. So if your pH is six point six, don't do anything. Don't you don't need to apply lime. It's it's, it's exactly where it should be. Um, it, you'd only apply lime again if you were like below five eight, and you'd apply some kind of a sulfate or citric acid if you're above seven two. So in your case, no lime necessary. I would not apply lime to your to your lawn to your soil with it with you having a pH at 6.6. That's, I mean, that's that's a pH for people live live and fight and dream for, man. I wouldn't mess with it. I would just leave it exactly where it is. No lime, no lime is necessary in your lawn at all. All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. He says, we are, forgot to mention that we're separated by a fence. So I'll be killing any that crosses over to my lawn. I'm tired of pulling runners. Yeah, so I mean, if it's, whatever comes into your lawn is fair game. You know what I mean? I just wouldn't go out there and be spraying any of your neighbor's lawn or spraying someone else's property without their permission or, you know, if, if a neighbor is asking you to help them out with something, that's one thing, but I wouldn't, you know, just go out and just start blasting someone else's lawn. You really don't want to, you really don't want to go there with that. Next up is Mike Harvey. It says, does Spectacle Flow cover everything? Poa, crabgrass, et cetera. Yes, it covers poa, crabgrass. It covers, uh, it covers a lot of stuff. I'm see if I can pull a label up here because it, 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 takes, it takes care of a lot of different weeds. Let's see here, Spectacle. So I can find it. It does everything Prodiamine does and and uh, and then some, which it better because for what it costs, right? Let's see here. Let me find the label. So it on here, on here. So you've got uh, nightshade, bittercress, burr clover, carpet grass, clover, common chickweed, common ground cell, purslane, dandelions, doveweed, um, you know, uh, let's see what else you got. Eclipta, primrose. It's got it's got a bit of it's got a bit of, of every. I mean, the 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 stuff that it covers, it literally is like this big. It's like it's in, it's in fine print. It's huge. It's, it covers a ton of stuff. And gra crab grass, you got poa, cheat grass, barnyard grass, obviously crab grass, foxtail, uh, guinea uh, guinea grass. I don't even know what that is. Mouse barley, nut sedge, annual nut sedge, um, rye grass. So again, so don't spray it on cool season uh, lawns. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, it is, it is a superior pre-emergent on many levels that you don't need a lot of it. Like a very little goes a long way. It works for a very long time and it's very good at keeping weeds out of your lawn. So, so yeah, you don't need to, to ask your question. You don't need to use prodiamine along with spectacle flow or dithiapyr along with spectacle flow. It can stand by itself. So what you could do is you could use spectacle um, in the fall. You could do it now if you wanted to. And then in the spring, you could use dithiapyr. Like that's a good strategy. Like I've done, I've done that in the past. So that's that's an option for you if you wanted to use a, a spectacle now. Because the big the, the the big thing that spectacle does, right? In my opinion, that that um, that a lot of herbicides, a lot of pre-emergents by themselves have a difficulty with is um, is poannua. Poanu is the is the is the is the thing that it is it is world class on on keeping out of your lawn. Like crabgrass, dithiapyr does a pretty good job on that. Prodiamine does a pretty good job on crabgrass. Like there's other there's other pre-emergents that do pretty good job on keeping crabgrass out of your lawn. But poa, unless you're willing to mix again, unless you're willing to do that that blend of like the simazine, amazequin, and prodiamine, or use something like spectacle, poa is really hard to keep out of your lawn all throughout winter and into the early spring. Where spectacle flow will do that. So. Hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. But again, yeah, no, I would I would mix them up. I would do spectacle in the fall if you want to now, and then something else in the spring. Probably dithiapyr um, out of the two if I had a choice between the prodiamine and dithiapyr. That's what I would go for. All right, next up is Sunset Way. Sunset Way says, hey, Ron, what's a typical... <laughs> this is a weird question. It says, what's a typical daily, weekly diet for you as you always appear healthy and have lots of energy in the lawn? Thank you. Well, I'm I'm pretty active um, as far as diet. So in the last two months, two months coming up on two and a half months now, I switched to a plant based diet, which um, I did it because um, a a friend of mine suggested it and said, "Hey, you know, you'll you'll sleep better, you know, you'll feel better." And I'm like, "Uh, eh, well, I said I didn't I didn't do it for like because of like I don't like meat or anything like that. I love I actually love meat. Like when I have ramen, I still have my cheat meal. I still have my pork and my ramen. I gotta have that. But um, but I uh, for the most part, I've been eating a plant based diet." which does a lot for keeping weight off. Like I've lost, even though I didn't want to lose weight, I lost um, 10 pounds going to that. 
You know what I mean? So I sit around 180, 185 pounds now, whereas I was like more closer to 195-ish before. And then I'm just, I'm just active, man. Like a typical day, my typical week, like I mow the lawn every other day. So there's that. And then Tuesday night, I go to karate. Thursday night, I go to karate. Tomorrow, I will do 90 minutes of karate. And then the problem is like the Tuesday night class and the, the Saturday morning class is like, is horrible. I mean, from a, from a physical standpoint, because like this time of year now, it's black belt cycle. So the people that are trying the test for black belt, literally it is like 60 minutes of, app of not say abuse, but it's 60 minutes of where you're working the entire time. And then tomorrow morning, it's 90 minutes of like, of like of it not letting up. So between that and also working in the lawn and I eat reasonably decent, um, I'm, I'm able to stay fairly, fairly lean. I mean, but I still, I mean, I don't eat like super clean. Like I love Chick-fil-A fries. I still get Chick-fil-A fries. I still like Chick-fil-A lemonade. So I still eat stuff, but I just, um, I think it's a lot of it's activity, activity levels. So I uh, hope that helps. I mean, try a plant-based diet. The biggest thing that I got out of it is um, sleep. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, before I get to the next grass question, the one thing that I did not expect, which was that, which was weird, I don't understand why, is that the, I, I sleep now better than I ever have. Like literally, like after three days of doing it, I got the best sleep that I've had in years. So that's the one thing that you, you'll, you, may, you may notice if you give it a shot. All right, next up is Mike. He says, do you use Spectacle? I do, I do use Spectacle. I do use Spectacle. Last year I did Coastal. So the last time I used Spectacle Flow was not last year, but the year before. So what is that, 2020? The fall, the, so 2020 is a, was Spectacle year. Um, but, and this year I'll probably use Spectacle. I'll go back to Spectacle Flow again. Because last year I was playing with, um, with Coastal. So if you look at, as you can tell by the content, but this year I've got some, got, I'm got some Spectacle, so I'm just gonna start using it up. So I will be doing that on my lawn this year. So my lawn, Alex's lawn, maybe the next door neighbor's lawn. Cause I got, I, Lord knows I got, pl I got plenty of it. I got enough to do, you know, several people's lawns. So, so yeah, but it only really makes sense to buy if you have, if you and a couple of friends are going to go in on it and you've got more, more people that can actually use it, you know, cause you just, cause you use so little of it, Mike, that you just, you'll, you'll never go through it by yourself unless you have a really big property. All right. Next up is Frank Robinson. He says, do you use Scott's weed and feed? first, then Milo, or Milo, and then weed and feed. Okay, so it depends on what's in the weed and feed. If the weed and feed product is like an act, like a complete fertilizer, because a lot of times the weed and feed products are like uh, like the stuff that we carry, like the, um, the it has like, it'll have like some potassium in it, like 7% potassium, but no nitrogen or, or phosphorus. Like those types of products, if it's something like that, then yeah, you will need to use like a, a more full-fledged fertilizer to, to give you to get to, to meet the nitrogen requirements for your lawn. Um, but if it's a, if it's a weed and feed, that's like a, if you look at the label and it says something like, you know, I don't, I don't buy weed and feed, so I don't know, but let's say it's something like, uh, like a 1608, right? But it's also a weed and feed product that can stand by itself because it's got enough nitrogen and potassium to be, to be able to meet the regular feeding requirements, but it also has the herbicide. So it, um, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't use Scott's weed and feed products. I can't tell you for sure, but, but it, the answer is it depends. It depends on how much fertilizer is in the feed aspect of the weed and feed. You know what I mean? So I don't, again, I don't really use um, their products, so I'm not familiar to be able to tell you um, if you need to use Milo along with it to be able to, to meet the nutrient demands of your lawn, Frank. So if you can let me know what the product is, I'll be able to tell you and I'll be able to help you out. But I mean, if you want, shoot me an email, drop me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com right there with what the, the product is. And I'll look at the label and I'll be able to help you out. But off the top of my head, I don't I don't know because I'm not that familiar with Scott's products. All right, next up is Aaron. Well, actually, it's not true. I'm familiar with their um, Green Max. But I'm not familiar with their weed and feed products. All right, Aaron G's up next. He says, how long should I wait to lay down starter fertilizer after overseeding my ryegrass? I'm thinking three days. Uh, it's your call. I mean, I would let it get a, I would let it start growing a little bit, Aaron. I mean, three days is, I mean, there's people that apply it the day of, you know what I mean? Some people will, will seed and they'll apply a starter for it along with the seeding. So if you want to wait three days, that's fine too. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's your call. You know, a lot of times the, the, the process will be seed and a fertilizer on the same day. And but the thing I realized too, most of those seeds have a little bit of juice, a little bit of energy, and they have enough in the, um, especially if it's a coated seed, there's enough in there to get the seed going. It's not like if you don't apply fertilizer, the seed's not gonna germinate. But if you wanna do a light starter, a light starter fertilizer app, you know, along with your seeding, your ryegrass seeding, sure. I don't, I don't see a big issue with that. There shouldn't be a, a problem at all. Three days afterwards, again, 
for all intents and purposes, like doing it three days afterwards is the same thing as doing it the same day because it's not going to, it's not going to be growing in just yet. So hope that helps, sir. Um, and if you need anything else, let me know. And then Reno says, Ron, you're awesome. You answer my questions perfectly. Thank you. I'm glad it was useful, uh, Reno. I'm glad it was, uh, it was helpful. That's what I'm here for. If you need anything else? Give me a follow-up comment. All right, next up is Dale's channel. Dale's channel, I think. He says, I put down grass seed on a big patch last month. The grass grew after a month. It was nice and green, but when I mowed, it turned yellow. Why? Okay, so Dale, so um, Dale's, or Dale's, I'm not sure um, what it is, but so here's what's ha what, what likely happened. Uh, if you, whenever you, you look at grass, even though your lawn looks nice and green, really in most cases, only the upper third of the grass is is really green. It's truly it's truly green. So if you let the grass, um, so you don't need to put down a month. In a month, it shouldn't be that bad. But if, if you if you let the grass get a little bit tall, and then you mow it shorter, like you mow it, maybe you took off a little bit more than you should have. What you're going to find is you're going to get into like the stalk of the grass, and that is going to be yellow. What's going to happen is it will come back. It'll take I don't know a week or two, but but it, the color should come back after after some time. And the, the way you get around that is to mow more frequently. So with mowing, you the, the rule is you really don't wanna take off more than a third of the, the total height of the grass in any one session. So what that does then is it drives how tall you have the grass. So, so if you wanna have, if you wanna have a lawn that is say an inch, right? Which is relatively short. If you wanna have like an inch lawn, a, a third of an inch is 0.33 inches, right? And most for most grasses, that's gonna your grass is gonna grow, you know, a third of an inch in three days or so. Which means in every three days, no more than every three days, you need to be out there mowing it because if you wait like for a week and mow it, you're gonna take off and you maintain the same height of cut. You're gonna take off enough material that you're gonna get some yellowing in, in some parts of the lawn. So the way to get around that again is just to mow more frequently. It sounds kind of counterintuitive that mowing more would help the grass to stay green, but that's the way it works. Like if you want the grass, if you want the grass to stay green between mowings, you have two choices: mow taller or mow more frequently. And that's uh, given the given your current height of cut. And then it'll you'll find that you'll be able to mow it and it'll remain green in between mowings. So Hope that helps, sir. I'm surprised that you experienced that just with, with the grass that's only a month old, um, but it, maybe you got kind of aggressive on the height of cut that you went to, and that's what caused the uh, the yellowing. So, all right. Next up is, is Robert Rainey. He says, all right, I have a question. If you had spectacle flow, dimension, and prodiamine in granular and liquid, which would you go with in the fall versus spring? I would use spectacle flow in the fall, and I would use uh, dimension in the spring. So, so if I had if I had like a bottle of, of spectacle flow and then and dimension and prodiamine on hand, I would do in the spring I could you could rotate back and forth between dimension and prodiamine. So like but every fall I would likely use spectacle. You know, I'd use spectacle or use prodiamine and simazine and amazoquine with it. But spectacle flow is it's just so good, Robert, for keeping POA out of out of your grass. And it's just easy. Like literally you, you apply it once and you don't have to deal with deal with um, POA, um, that that is where I would really reserve the use of that herbicide. And I would leave the dimension or um, or uh, prodiamine for spring apps. So you could you could roll back and forth like between like this, like next spring dimension, the spring after that prodiamine, the spring after that one dimension, you go back and forth. But in the fall, you could just roll with just spectacle flow because it just it's just easier. But, uh, but that's that's how that's how I would do it. Um, or again, like as I said, or if you don't have spectacle flow, you can mix up poor man's spectacle flow by mixing some uh, some post-emergent herbicides along with prodiamine. That can work too. And you said, I haven't had good results with prodiamine controlling burrweed. Uh, try, again, try spectacle. I mean, it's a good, it's a great, great product. I, I have to look at the label here. I'm not sure if burrweed's on there. I mean, it might, let's see here. Let me, let me, let me check here really quick. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Let's see. Um... I don't see burr clover. Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't see burr weed on here. But just ch check the. But I'm just. I'm. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Lawn burr weed. It's on there. Yeah. So spectacle treats that too. So again, pretty much all the common ones is what it is. What it'll take care of. So if you want to try it, um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, Robert. It's not inexpensive. Like this stuff is not cheap. But like most things in life, you do get what you pay for. You know, it's it's literally one of the best for warm season grass. Or in my opinion, among among the best. It's like for forms using grass. Okay, next up is Eugene Gato. It says, I need your help with how to eradicate goose grass um, for good. I have used a product called Pylex and it, key, and it seems to kill 
most of it, but next year it comes back again. You know what? I don't know as far as, um, so use Pilex. So I'm guessing you got cool season grass, Eugene. Um, and let me see if, um, if goose grass is on the label for, um, it, for your, for your pre-emergent. I, I'd want to think that pre-emergent should be able to, to help with that. But let me check here really quick for you and see. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not sure for, I don't know for sure, but um, yeah, it is. So yeah, so, so, so the way to keep it out of your lawn is to use pre-emergent. So Prodiamine will do that. I mean, if you go look up the, uh, the label for it, it's, uh, it's listed, it's listed on there. So Pilex being a post-emergent, yeah, it'll kill it, but again, it'll, it'll come back. You can use something like Prodiamine and that should do a good job of keeping it out of your lawn. So the, again, Pilex is super, super expensive. It's like, 300 plus a bottle, 300 plus dollars a bottle, if memory serves me. So uh, if you haven't been using pre-emergent in your lawn, I would lean towards, um, I would lean towards, uh, towards doing that. Hang on, we got someone here we got to, to ban and yep, there we go. Oh, they're, they're already gone. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, thanks for that, the, uh, the person that texted me. Um, appreciate that, man. Got you, we, we, we got them, we got them, uh, we got them taken care of. Um, but yes, um, so where was I? So Pilex, yeah, it's it's expensive, and while it does work to knock it back, why not just use pre-emergent? Like pre-emergent, what, what, what you might find is this, Eugene, like the pre-emergent will do most of the heavy lifting, like it should do a pretty good job of keeping it out of your lawn altogether, and the very little that may come in, you'll be able to get rid of get rid of pretty easily. But if you're just relying only on post-emergence, it's gonna. It's a very expensive way to go, and it's it's a much. Um, it's just it's a lot of headache, man, because you're gonna be out there all the time spraying herbicides on your lawn. You know what I mean? So it's it's that's that's why pre-emergent is less money, and as far as a strategy for keeping your lawn weed free, a, a solid pre-emergent application in the spring and in the fall, along with regular mowing, so that you have a thick stand of grass, like a healthy stand of grass. That is going to do a lot for keeping weeds out of your lawn. And then when you have the occasional, you know, goosegrass that pops up here and there, assuming you just don't want to try and pull it or dig it out, that's where like, you know, spot spraying with whatever your, with your herbicide of choice tends to, will work well. But I mean, like I would not, I would not try to control crabgrass in my lawn without pre-emergent. Like that's what does most of the work. And then, you know, if I, if, if there's any, which I don't really have any, but if, the, but if there's any, um, that's that's a that's a that's an edge case versus like you know every month though I got to get out of here and I'm spraying for crabgrass you know what I mean so it sounds like you're not using pre-emergent if you haven't been add that to your lawn care program because there's products out there that will that are like again prodiamine which is like one of the cheapest ones that is labeled to prevent goosegrass and that'll save you a lot of time and money so hope that helps sir if you need anything else definitely let me know but I think that will uh, get you on the right track. All right, Danny uh, Richard says, Ron, what is the best grass for Southeast Alabama in your opinion? Depends on what you like, depends what you like. I like Bermuda, I like Bermuda, but I mean, if you like zoysia, that can work. Um, it, I would definitely choose some kind of a warm season grass. So Bermuda or zoysia would be my, um, would be my, my choice, so. Depends on which one you like more. If it's a lawn you're going to use a lot, like you want to, you're going to be out there playing football on it. You're going to be out there just, you know, it's going to get a lot of wear. Bermuda stands up better to that than zoysia does, but zoysia, depending on who you ask, looks is a prettier grass than Bermuda is. I personally think Bermuda looks great, but I mean, if you like, you know, if you like uh, the look of zoysia, then you can do that. But I, the, one of those two is what I would say. Bermuda or zoysia is what I would use in. Southeast Alabama. It's for our for that climate, those grasses are going to do well. All right, Morris Ohm Odom is here. He says, "Hey Ron, I've gotten so much comments since I've been using the Greens Master 1600 that I'm tired of winning my I guess but winning best in neighborhood." Yeah, because I, it, here's the thing: you're using a great mower, and it sounds like you're using it a lot. So I'm not really surprised that you get a lot of comments that about your lawn. You know, being uh, being one of the best of guys. Because here's the thing. Again, going back to this, you know, I'm not not to not to be a you know, sales pitch or anything, but to show you, like literally, like you see what he says. Like he's getting lots of comments about his lawn being the best one, because once you get past the weed control section, right? Like once you get past the fact that you're not dealing with weeds in your lawn, it really comes down to step four. So get control of weeds, soil test, fertilize your lawn as you need to, and then and this one, step four really should be big. Step four should be as big as steps one, two, and three put together. If I could do, if I could do them in the, and like the, and waiting, that, that's how big step four should be because mowing 
is the thing that's going to set your lawn apart from an apparent standpoint uh, than anything else. You know what I mean? Like using, if you're using proper fertilizer and you are um, you know, you're using biostimulants in your, in your lawn care program, the lawn's going to look great. It's going to be nice and green. But as far as having that nice, tight cut look, like I mean, that looks like a golf course, uh, or even if you cut it taller, it looks like golf, like a rough, like golf rough, but it looks just really nice. Um, mowing is what gives you that. Like mowing is the thing that just most people don't do enough. And that's what makes the, makes the difference. That's why more, that's why your lawn, that's why you're getting the compliments. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the thing. And you're using a great mower. So I'm not surprised you're getting, uh, compliments. And then cut says, yes, 20 years of marriage has been a great 20 years. Awesome, man. Congrats. So keep, keep going. You have another, have another 20, man. That's what you, you got to do next. Okay. Morris says, Hey Ron, you inspire me with that, with that Greens Master 1600 that I went and I got one now. I get so many compliments on my grass. You know what? I don't know when you got it, but we're gonna copy that. We're gonna give you, we're gonna give you some applause for that because I like to hear when people are into mowing their lawns, they get the right equipment, and then they actually use it, and they get the results, right? So that's uh, that's pretty awesome, sir. Keep going. It only gets better the more you do it. You know, if you, this is your first year real mowing, next year it's gonna be even better. So just just keep up with it, stay consistent and the lawn will uh, will continue to, to get better and better. And and you know, you know the thing is that's cool about that, Morris? And this is for, for everybody else. Mowing is the great equalizer. It really is. Because you can get out there and let's say your neighbors are um, putting down fertilizer, which is which is fine. Because most people will go out around springtime, they'll, buy, they'll, they'll all flood home people, they'll buy a bag of fertilizer, they'll throw it down on their lawn, and it will green up some but you can't fake mowing. You can't fake the results you get from mowing. Like I always say, if I could if I could bottle mowing, I'd be like a billionaire, right? But that's the one thing that doesn't come in a bottle. And as a general rule, if you use the right mower and it's sharp, he or she who mows most wins as far as like the domination, the lawn domination game. And in your case, you got, you know, you got a, the Cadillac of mowers. You got a really, really good mower and it sounds like you're using it a lot. So you're gonna be hard to touch, man. Just keep going. Keep going. All right, next up is Brandon. He says, hey, Ron. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> and then next up is uh, Gary, the cable guy. He says, what do you think about, tri think of tri triclo uh, triclopyr, I don't know why I can say the word. What do you think of triclopyr ester for killing, creeping Charlie and not the grass? Never, I've never really used triclopyr to be able to tell you, um, Gary, the cable guy, to tell you. I mean, there's other products that'll kill creeping Charlie, but I've never, I've never used triclopyr to know what kind of results as far as, um, how the grass would tolerate it. Also, what kind of grass? Which grass type? Um, you know, what grass are you are you um, trying to spray it? Or try, which grass are you trying to eliminate the creeping Charlie in? I don't. It's all, all that matters. But I, I've never. I have not. That's one of the herbicides I've not used. I've never. There's a lot I haven't used. But triclopyr is one I've not sprayed, so I couldn't tell you how uh, grass tolerates it. Unfortunately, so not much help on that one. Sorry. All right. Next up is Tavares Allen. He says, "Hey, Ron, is cool. It's cool season, guys." Oh, we don't hate, we congratulate. That is not true. Cool, man, listen, cool season grass people are some of the biggest haters. Y'all, you guys are like, um, y'all Y'all are something else, man. You know, us warm season folk, you know, we, because here's the thing, we're all, you know, in the cool, in the South is where, in, in Texas area, you know, you, that's where, you know, we're more, more southerly, more nice and everything. And then y'all cool season folks, man, you guys think y'all are the greatest things since sliced bread. It's just, and, and heaven help us, if you guys top dress and start laying some stripe action, it's like, you can't, you, you just, you hear it all, you know, six days from Sunday. So, uh, so yeah, he says, it's time for us to warm season guys to pass the baton. They'll pass it. We will pass it back come summer. LOL. It's all love in the lawn community. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hear you, but it is true. Cool season guys do think they're better than warm season grass people. I'm telling you, it's just, I think so. I think that warm season grass folks, we're just, we're, we are a more humble bunch than the cool season people. Not all of them, but in general, in general, I mean, I'm glad to be proven wrong on that, but in general. All right, next, I'm gonna get someone to agree for that comment. I, you know, I don't even know why I said that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there's, gonna be, there's gonna be hate in the comments. I can't believe you said that. I'm nice and I got cozy in grass, jerk. All right, next up is Lane Boone. It says, I'm late to the show, but thanks for the tips. I'm in Southern South Carolina, okay? Southern South Carolina and my Bermuda grass has a mole cricket issue all season. Any chance to recover for the fall leading into into dormancy? So what are you what are you going to use for it? I think um, I'm trying to think for for mole crickets. Um, what insecticide are you using to try and get rid of them, Lane? I mean, yeah, the, you you should be able to, um, if not completely eradicate, definitely knock them back to where the lawn will look better. And you didn't, South, yeah, Southern South Carolina. So yeah, so it's still it's going to be pretty hot where you are. Uh, yeah, I mean, there should there should there should there should still be time, 
but you need to do something about it. You know what I mean? Like they're not gonna go away on their own. So if you are using a product to eliminate them, there should be enough time for the lawn to um, to recover and, and look look fairly decent going into um, going into dormancy. But it's it's a kind of a question mark. Like one, are you already treating them? Are they are they are they you know are you eliminating them? Are they gone at this point? Um, if so, yeah. With you being in Southern South Carolina, which is that could be like like near near Florida, right? So it's um so that could be near the coast or whatever. Um, then yeah, there's still there's still plenty of time. The further south you are, the more time you have for the lawn to keep to recover from damage and to keep growing. So yeah, I'm inclined to say that yes, you still have time. All right, Fabian Martinez Molinares is up next. He says, "Hey Ron, I kill lots of crabgrass. Should I take them and seed, or should I seed into on the killed crab?" Okay, I get your question. So. So you kill a lot of crabgrass. It depends on the kind of grass, the kind of lawn you have, um, Fabian. Um, if it's a warm season grass like Bermuda, no, you shouldn't. You don't need to. You don't need to seed it. The Bermuda, the area the the crabgrass was occupying, the Bermuda will spread into there and fill in. If it's cool season grass and you had, you know, a big chunk of it that was all crabgrass, then you may need to seed. Yes. So it depends on what kind of grass you have. It's a cool season lawn and like you hit a big area that was taken over by crabgrass, then yeah, this time of year, you know, putting, doing, after you kill it, using some, you know, doing some seed to get the, the that area to begin to fill in, what is a, is a strategy that can work. But if it's a warm season, if you have warm season grass like Bermuda, typically not necessary. You, now it might not fill in completely this season, but once you roll around to next year where there's plenty of heat, the Bermuda should take off and, uh, and fill in really nicely, especially if it's an area that's getting plenty of sunlight. So the answer to your question is, it depends. If it's cool season grass and it's a really large area, then sure. If it's a warm season grass like Bermuda, then typically unnecessary. So hope that helps. Um, and if you, and again, if, if there's any more, any more context you can add uh, later in the comments, feel free to do that and I can revisit it. But in, in general, no, you shouldn't have to seed. It, the, the, grass, the, the grass that was being displaced by the crabgrass should begin to fill into that area. It also depends on how big the area is too, right? But yeah, it, sh it should fill in. All right, Kevin O'Connor's up next. He says, the bro-in-law has a front lawn, uh, front part of the lawn by the driveway that may be a mix of Bermuda and fescue. Back part is with big ball areas that look like all Bermuda. I see. Okay. That, that's good to know, Kevin. I'm not sure what the question was or if you asked me a question earlier and that's just for more context. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a nightmare to be able to treat. Having Bermuda and fescue all mixed in together. Good luck with, um, you can use prodiamine, but good luck if you have to spray herbicides, keeping the fescue alive, right? Um, well, no, that's not true. I guess you could use um, blindside. I guess you could use blindside, but like you can't use like the, the really nice stuff. Like you can't use like Celsius. All right, next up is John Williams. He says, hey Ron, thanks for the show. I have a centipede, I have centipede grass and I just did an overseed job on my yard. How long should I wait to blanket spray for weeds? I have a lot of dove weed and various other weeds. Okay, so how, when you say you just did an overseed, um, how long, like how has this grass, started, has a new grass began coming, growing in? You said, I just did an overseed. What, like how, how what kind of time frame is that? Is that like, uh, is it like last week? Um, or like two months ago. So if it's if you if you literally just did it like today, and the, the the seed hasn't germinated yet, then yeah, take this time while the seed hasn't actually started growing yet to go out and knock out or or, or knock off knock out the weeds because a lot of the products that will kill dove weed um, will um, that are, if it's, especially if it's a, if it's a post emerge like a foliar based product like something like Celsius, then it's not going to have an effect against the gr the grass that hasn't hasn't germinated as yet, right? But if you wait for it to, to grow in, like you have brand new baby grass, brand new centipede that's growing in, you may wanna, you wanna lay off on, on herbicides on, re, on really young grass. So if you said, I just did it, and by just doing an overseed, like it was literally a couple of days ago, then yeah, I, go ahead and get rid of the, um, the weeds that are in your lawn. Go ahead and get your blanket spray be done because like the post emergers, especially if they're uh, something like Celsius, isn't gonna have a, a big effect on um, on the seed because there's no there's no grass there yet. There's no there's no foliar. There's no there's nothing growing as yet. Um, but I, what I wouldn't do is if you have very young new grass, is hit that with herbicide. That I would not do. All right, hopping, Sunny Bermuda is up here. He says hopping on to say hi. Always a great show. What's going on, Sunny man? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully the uh, that new C24, the new Alad is doing all right. Hey guys, if you guys want to see um, some some a guy that also 
is on that outlet life. And I, I want to say it's a C24 you got, right, Sonny? Uh, he, check out his channel. He's a, a channel, Sonny Bermuda. Oh, and it's a Tifway 419 lawn, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, he got a new piece of equipment. And if you just want to see, you know, someone go through staging and setting up and doing an oil change and get it all, getting a new piece of equipment ready to go and, you know, mowing a lot with it, check out his channel. Give him some love because he does a, he does a great job on his, on his content. All right, next up is Kwanbana Kumi. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for the great channel and advice. You are very, very welcome, sir. He says, my goal is to have a golf course lawn. I have cool season lawn in the Chicago land area. Nice, so that's a good goal. So what does a golf course lawn mean to you? Does it mean like having a lawn that is very shortcut and um, to having a lawn like whenever people drive down your street, like your lawn is the best lawn on the street? If that's the case, so, so if, it, if it's just to have the best looking lawn on the street, that we can do with, um, you know, with soil testing, first of all, getting weeds under control, getting a good fertilization program, and then lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of mowing. Like if you do that, you're gonna get a look, great looking lawn. If you really want that short golf course lawn look, so like, you know, you're cutting your lawn at like an inch or shorter to get that nice, like a, a fairway look, that is where the kind of equipment that you use really begins to matter. So if you have, um, you know, you didn't say what kind of grass you have, but if you have like a rye or Kentucky bluegrass, those grasses tolerate, tend to tolerate being cut a little bit shorter. So like they'll tolerate being cut in an inch or so. But um, to really do that and get, have the grass look good, you're really gonna wanna use a real mower. So that's where you're getting into like a, a true cut, an Allet, a, a Toro Greensmaster, a John Deere, like one of those types of mower, like a cylinder mower that cuts the grass more like a pair of scissors than cuts it like a, you know, like a machete, like hacking at the grass. So that's a, that's a, the mower is literally um, the most important part for having, having the great looking, for getting a golf course lawn type look. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if you take a look at my lawn right now as it sits, which is, that's not my lawn, uh, this one. If you look at how my lawn looks right now, right now it's not looking that great. But if you look at that, if that were mowed with a, with a rotary mower, it would not look anything like that. Regardless of everything I'm doing, like the, the mower is making a huge, is a huge part of how the, of the look, the appearance you get out of the lawn. So you gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta ask yourself, how much time do you have? Do you have time to get out there and mow at least twice a week? Because if you're, you're real mowing, that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take at least twice a week mowing to have the lawn looking as good as possible. And it's also gonna be getting a real mower. So what, what I would do is this. Um, I'm not sure where you are starting. You said, I'm about to start my fall overseed with perennial ryegrass and, and KBG, sounds good. But what I would what I would do is um, do your overseed, like do your or sorry do your seed project for the perennial ryegrass and KBG. Get a soil test done, and fertilize and feed your lawn based on the soil test results. And and whatever mower you have now, let's say you have like a rotary mower, like um, cut the lawn with the mower the equipment you have for you know if you want for this season for the remainder of this season so you've probably got like 3 months or so of of uh, of growth left you know in this season you have to see august and september october november yeah maybe 4 3 4 months of the season do that do it make sure you do it every 2 days and see if it's something that you actually like you know what i mean because because a real mower is a big commitment from a standpoint of both cost or expensive and then from a maintenance standpoint you know they require not necessarily a ton of maintenance but they do require more maintenance and and the maintenance is more expensive than what a rotary mower requires so Get a soil test done, fertilize your lawn according to the soil test, and then mow the lawn um, regularly at least twice a week with the equipment you currently have. So if you got a rotary mower, put a fresh blade on it, make sure it's nice and sharp, and then get out there and mow the lawn twice a week and just see if this whole idea of like being out there all the time, a couple times a week mowing your lawn is something you like. Because you may think you want to do that, but you may find out that you actually hate it, you know, after a month of doing that. But if you find that you really like it, you like the results you're getting, if you like the results you're getting with a rotary mower, the lawn will look an order of magnitude better with a real mower. Take, take for example, the, the gentleman, Scott, that sent me some pictures earlier. So this is his lawn. This is a rye grass lawn. And mind you, this is in summertime. So the gra grass isn't even looking that great now. And you can see how the stripe action looks. But also this other picture he sent, look how that looks from a distance. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. That's really, really nice looking, right? And then if we go to another angle, you can see how a real mode lawn can look like a a, a lawn mower with a rotary mower will not look like that. It's gonna, it'll look nice, but it's not gonna be nice and tight and smooth like how that looks. But you know, a, a real mower, again, it's a commitment. It's a, a cost commitment, a maintenance commitment. So what I might do if you're just starting out is 
Go to the golf course lawn store, get yourself a soil test. The one I like is this, the, 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 the one's from my soil. Get your sample sent in. Within a week, you're gonna get an email that's gonna tell you, hey, um, Quambena, this is what your soil needs. So buy a fertilizer that matches what the soil test results are telling you, and then get to mowing. Get to just, you know, taking care of your lawn. And then, uh, and then if you wanna move into real mowing, you can absolutely do that. It's gonna be a game changer as far as a parent. But I want you to make sure that it's something she wants to do. In, in, and look at this. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going on and on and on and on about soil testing. And I did see your next comment where you said, the results from my my soil, my soil test say, <laughs> so you're already doing it. All right. So you already got a soil test result. Let's read it. He says, I got my, my pH is high, low N, low K, low sulfur, high calcium, high, mag, high mag, um, magnesium, high zinc, and everything else is optimal. Okay. So here's the thing. If you are just getting into feeding your lawn, so you're not fertilizing it, which it sounds like you're not because your nitrogen and potassium are low, um, just start fertilizing it. So in your case, you're gonna use something like a uh, like flagship, so something with nitrogen nitrogen in it and with potassium in it. I should, just, I should have read down and found your other comment before I went on my whole big spiel about um, soil testing, because obviously you already did that, you already headed the game. So what I would do, um, Quabena, is something like this. So go to shop, and lawn fertilizer, unless you already have one that you like. If you already have one that you, that you like, use use that. But what you're looking for is something that is a number, zero number. So meaning nitrogen, no um, phosphorus. So I guess your lawn party, your soil has enough phosphorus, and then potassium. So you want something with not with nitrogen and potassium in it. So that would be something like this, like flagship, right? This has. 24% nitrogen and then 6% potassium, which is a great, um, great ratio. That's gonna work great in your lawn. If you have a smaller lawn, you can get like a small bag of it for like a like less price, like an 18 pound bag, you know, 6,000 square feet. If you have a larger lawn or you just wanna buy it and buy more of it and have multiple applications, then you could go with the larger bag. So either one of these guys will work, but this based on your soil test results is a good fit. I really wouldn't be in a rush to do too much about the pH at this point because the, here's the thing, the salt, the salt that's in fertilizer tends to have um, tends to have like an acidifying effect on the lawn, and what that means is that the it tends to make it tends to lower pH. So if your if your nitrogen and your potassium levels were fine, like your N and K were fine, um, and your soil your pH were like 17, like almost 7.2, that's still okay. I, I wouldn't be in a rush to do anything about it. But the fact that you um, that you're you're missing the macros, meaning the lawn isn't really receiving fertilizer, it's not really being fed. Um, I might just for just just do fertilizer, just do don't do anything else, just just do something like um, like the flagship product. And if you want to check the check your soil check your uh, your um, your soil test results again at the end of the season to see where your pH is, I think what you might find is that they they've trended down a little bit. So give that a shot. Um, again, optimal. The optimal range for soil pH for grass is between five eight to seven two ish. So you're still in the you're still in the in the ballpark. You're, I mean, you're in the higher end of the acceptable zone. But um, you know, I wouldn't. I don't know that I would be in a rush to get out there and put down. You know, put 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 out put out like a um, like a, a, a ammonium sulfate or anything like that. I mean, if you wanted to do something along with flagship, you could use. And you really want to do something about the pH, you could do like a citric acid, but I, I might just start feeding the lawn and see how it responds. That is what, what I, I would do first. It's your your call. But um, but also if you if you want to see also some options for lowering your um for lowering your soil pH, uh, the same people that make the soil test kits that you use, my soil, they have a channel called um Soil Lab. Soil Lab is their channel. And on that channel, they did a test of showing different options for like raising soil pH, which obviously you don't want to do, and for lowering soil pH. They did, they used like citric acid, they used um, some sulfate products, and they showed over the course of, um, over the course of, a couple, of several months, this series they filmed, how the soil responded to different types of products. And citric acid worked really, really well. And the nice thing about that is that you can use that product and then still use whichever fertilizer you want. So if you wanna use something like flagship and then just use like say citric acid, if you decide, hey, I wanna lower my pH, then that's something that's not gonna, um, that's not gonna throw off your your, your fert application like um, like, an, like a sulfate will. Cause a lot of times the sulfate products are like 21% nitrogen. So at any rate, you're, you're looking, you're in good shape, sir. Um, it says your suggestions were organic, a 10-0-1. Uh, I mean, that could work, but I mean, is your, 
I, I might want to get a little, a little bit more um, potassium than 1%. I mean, unless it's just, just barely outside of where it needs to be, I might want to go a little bit higher than that. Uh, this is Or the Stress Blend, um, which again, that's a decent product too. So I, I'd have to see the results. If you don't mind, send me the test results, um, um, Kwabe. Now my email is here. So ron at golfcourselon.com because the, the fact that it's recommending Stress Blend leads me to think that the nitrogen is just barely outside the acceptable range, but your um, potassium is very low. And that's why they're recommending that. So send me, if you don't mind, take a picture or send me a screenshot of the soil test results. Email them here, ron at golfcourselon.com. I'll take a look at it and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let you know what, uh, what I think. But I would do something with a bit more um, um, potassium in it than like a 1001 because what's, what's odd is that the granular has a lot more potassium and then the or the organic option has very little so send me the soil test results i'll take a look at it and i'll get you a um i'll get you a, a better answer because it's hard to, to tell you for sure without seeing the results and you're saying which process would i recommend um i gave you some options but if you want like a very uh, an even better answer send me a copy of your soil test results and i'll, I'll help you out you're very very welcome all right next up is john williams um we already i think i already got your answer um, to that, John, you said, I just did an overseed with centipede grasses growing, but they are they are small plants. Should I wait for the pre-emergent application? Yeah, if you just did it, wait. You don't want to take the chance of, um, with, if it's Bermuda, when it comes to Bermuda, I am a lot less, I'm a lot more aggressive or I don't, um, I'm not necessarily as worried about pre-emergent close to the lawn being sodded or or, um, or Bermuda being, in, or being put in. I Because I don't have direct experience with centipede, I'd, I'd rather err on the side of caution and not have you put down pre-emergent right after you uh, you just seeded the lawn because I don't want, you don't take the chance of like undoing all your hard work by damaging the grass. All right, Mike Harvey says I bought some Primo but I have not used it this year as yet. Should I start now or just power through the, to the fall? Uh, going on vacation, consider spraying it to help out to not be too long when I return. Yeah, so if you, um, I forget what kind of grass do you have, Mike. Uh, if you're if you want to if you're going on vacation and you want to put some down, that's a that's a great time to do it. Um, I'm not sure how long a vacation you're going because if it's, it's if it's like a week or so, it's gonna help. But what I will tell you not to do is I, I had a viewer that uh, that um, that sent me an email saying they went on vacation, they applied Primo, and they went on vacation for three weeks, and then they said when they came back when they cut the lawn, the lawn scalped. I'm like, well, yeah, you went on vacation for three weeks and it wasn't mowed for three weeks, so. If you're if you're just going out, out of town for you know a long weekend or four or five days, that's going to be just fine. And if you are considering using Primo, yeah, there's there's still time to do it. I guess is what I'm trying to say for warm or cool season grass because I um I will still be using it up until uh, mid September, so you should be just fine. Follow the application rates. I will tell you. You said you got you bought it, but you haven't used it. Follow the rates. I will tell you that when you measure it out, if you're using like the bottle, it's not gonna look like a whole lot what's in the measuring cup, but it does, but follow the label rates. You don't need a lot to get a great result. So that's the only other advice I'm gonna leave you with as far as Primo goes. All right, next up is Joshua Chastain. He says, hey Ron, my North Florida Zoysia lawn was hit hard by army worms last year. So I put down a, pre a preventive app of Acelaprin early in the spring. I started to notice what I thought was insect damage in let's see in mid july so i put down another app of um a cellar before i left town for three weeks once i got back my entire lawn was heavily damaged and i could not figure out figure out why i didn't it didn't look like like uh lawn disease but i put down a fungus app anyway i also top dressed uh the front with carbonized pn i put on that app a flagship to help it recover after two weeks i didn't notice much it's a long long comment much improvement and it looks horrible. I started noticing mole crickets and it looked like looked like the label for celeprin. I didn't see them listed. Is there an insecticide that you would recommend for um for let's go here? Uh that would prevent this in the future. Thanks. So first of all, we got to figure out before you throw anything else at the lawn, let's figure out what what was happening. So army worms, you can actually see them. If you look at the look at the lawn, you can actually see them on the um on the surface. They're not like grubs that do the damage beneath the surface. So if it were army worms, you should be able to see it, Josh. Uh, and it's if it's mole crickets, um, what is what is good for that? Delta Guard, that's for Bermuda mites. I'm trying to think of what else will, um, what else will do 
What else we'll do on milk? Because I don't know if um, the Miramichi pest control is labeled for that. I don't, I don't think so. Let's see here. Is that on the label? No, chinch bugs it is, but not, but not that. So maybe bifenthrin or um, Delta Guard is good for Bermuda mites, but let me see if it is also good for mole crickets. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on that one. That's not one that I get that I get very often. Not sure. I'm not sure on this one. Um, on that one, um, Joshua, I'm, I'm trying. I'm beginning to think bifenthrin, which you'll end up having to use. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else other than bifenthrin that you can use to to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, bifen. Yeah, it looks looks like um, yeah, it looks like bifenthrin. So it, before we throw anything else though, before we do anything else, let's figure out what's causing the damage. It sounds like it's already been done, but it but army worms like you can you you can actually see what they look like. They look like worms. Like they you can visibly see them. Um, and if you did a celebrant in the spring and a celebrant again, that you probably don't have army worms. It's probably, it could be something else. So, um, I don't know, man, if you can, can you send me some pictures of what you're dealing with? Again, my email is still up, still up on the screen here. Send me some pictures of, of your lawn, of the damage, and I will see if I can do something to help you out. If it isn't, if it is in fact mole crickets, bifenthrin is what you can use, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be a one and done. I had a viewer in Texas that uh, that was fighting mole crickets, and it was something that they were always they were chasing. It was it wasn't like a one a single application took care of them. So um, so hope that helps. Again, send me an email because I'd like to see the pictures of what your lawn looks like, um, and uh, and see if there's anything else I can I can do to help you out. But um, but yeah, I don't think it's army worms because if you did again not one but two apps of a celeprin this season, kind of unlikely that it's army worms. It's probably something else. All right, John Williams says, like, share, subscribe. Ron, this show uh, has changed the game. Keep up the great work. FYI, every product I've used works great. The Yard Mastery Sprayer is the real deal. Yeah, I will tell you that. I mean, the the Yard, the yard Mastery Sprayer is not inexpensive. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, you can go out and buy, like, I'm sure it's like, you know, like 40 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, you can, but it's not as good. So uh, it's uh, kind of like most things, like most things in life, you get what you pay for. It's a it's a really good sprayer. And the big thing that that, that I like about it is the hassle factor is low, meaning you buy one piece of equipment and it comes, it's a great sprayer, great flow rates, great plenty of pressure, the battery life is great. Um, and most importantly, it comes with all the spray tips you need. So you never, you, know, you buy that and you're done. You have to go out and try and um, source like, you know, T-Jet tips and adapters and all this kind of stuff. Literally you buy it and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, so yeah, I agree, sir. It's a great, uh, it's a great piece of kit. Not cheap, but it's still a, um, a great product. All right, John Williams says, we're going to get my hands on some Spectacle Flow. Will you be getting that in the store? Um, weeds and bugs must die, especially big roaches and palmetto bugs. So for roaches, you could use this. This is very good against roaches. The, um, the Miramichi Green Pest Control, like this is a great product for roaches. They can't, they won't form resistance to it and it's non-toxic. Uh, and what else? Palmetto bugs, I am not sure on. I have to get back to you on that one. Spectacle Flow, you can get it on Amazon um, or you can go to like, there's some like local places you're gonna have a hard time finding it locally. Like site one might, will we'll probably have it, but like Home Depot is not gonna have it. Um, like uh, you need to go to like, a, if you wanna get it locally anyway, like a site one or a Ewing or something like that, they might um, they might carry it. If you feel like supporting the channel, um, you can get it also on Amazon unless it's sold out. Uh, like that's that's the place you can get it. But it's it's because it's um it's a herbicide that is really it's primarily professional applicators use it because it's so expensive and that a little bit of it goes such a long way that um oh they lowered the price on it. Looks like the price went dropped because this was this was like three hundred and thirty uh the last time I checked so it's actually a little bit cheaper now. That's so if you want to get it now this is a good price. <laughs> it's a good price, John. So I'll put a link here in the chat for you for it, and it is actually cheaper than it was um, last weekend when I, when, I, when I looked at this. So at John Williams, uh, Spectacle Flow, uh, this link will take you to it. So there you go. And it's it, that, that price is about $30 cheaper than it was last weekend. So if, you, if you're on the fence about it, now's, that's a great time to, to grab it. Or you can find, try and find it locally somewhere else, but that, that price is really not bad. Okay, um, Q Dog says, "Can you overseed in Atlanta yet? Uh, depend, what, depends what you're talking about. Are you overseeding? You talking about ryegrass or um, or what? Are we? Are you talking about like overseeding your warm season grass with 
Oh um, yeah, with rye. With rye, um, I might wait a little bit longer. I might wait till the end of the month. So we're we're getting close. You're you're getting close, um, Q dog. You're getting close because it's going to start cooling off soon here. But what you don't want to do is um, overseed with rye grass, and then we get like a a, a a snap of a lot of really hot weather, and then it damage or kill off all the grass you just put down. So I might give it another couple of weeks before I, I did that. Like the end of this month, um, early September is a good is a time when it's going to be good and safe. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we're, you're definitely entering the window if that's what you decide you want to do. We're, we're close. And I think that was that's not for me. Next up, we got uh, Brad Stevens says on a very cool note, very cool bracelet on your on your right hand. Can you tell me uh, what it? Oh, this which what this is? Um, this is a um, it is a just un, it's a it's a just in clue. It's a nail. Essentially, it's a nail that is that's bent into the into the shape of a of a bracelet. It's a nail that's bent into the shape of a bracelet. Um, is where you can, as far as you can get it, um, as you get it at the old, the, if you're getting a real one, which is what this is, you'd get them at Cartier. You have the, so Cartier is who, who sells them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's basically, it's basically a nail that's bent into the, um, into the, into the shape of a bracelet. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. I liked it. So that's why I got it. All right. Next up is, um, Fairway Bermuda Lawn. It says, Hey Ron, I am enjoying the live stream. I appreciate that. I'm glad it's at least entertaining. I, it, better than you tell me you're not enjoying it. I'm going to check out a couple of Toro Greens Masters tomorrow and hopefully come back with a flex real mar. See, see, Daryl, look at you, man. You started out with a true cut and you're like, oh no, this is the best thing ever. I'll never need anything else. I love my true cut. And now, and now look, see, see, but, but what's, what's the reason where, um, because you need a backup mower, right? That's, that's what it is. You want to get a backup mower in case the Greens Master down for the count, maintenance, you want to make sure you're never out. I, I get you. Now, once you find one, what you're gonna find is they're gonna swap roles. Is the, the GM is gonna is gonna be you know gonna be the starter, and then unfortunately the true cut's gonna be a bench warmer, is what I imagine is gonna happen. But uh, but yeah, don't, I still got love my true cut. I mowed today with it, like I mowed swale area with it. I mowed some areas around by the rocks with it. So I still love my true cut, but it's uh, nothing beats a uh, a real like a a drum a greens mower a drum a drum propelled mower just it's a, it's a different it's a game changer you're gonna you're gonna notice a big difference in the quality of cut if you're able to find one. John says thanks for the professional built show keeps me coming back hit that like button um, hard and fast you guys thanks John it didn't it wasn't always this way like if you go and look back at when it was two you hot looked a couple of years ago it uh, didn't look as good <laughs> you know it was a lot a lot lot worse and I still I still make mistakes here and there but. Oh, every week I try and improve it a little bit more. I don't always, I'm not always successful, but I always try and make it a little bit better each time where there's like lighting or changing something else or, or whatever. I try to do something to try and make it a bit, a bit better. Do research so I can get you guys better answers, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, and I enjoy it. It's a great way to interact with the community and find out what kind of challenges you guys are, are, um, are having. It's a great way to help out, right? So I have fun with it and you guys seem to enjoy it. So that's why I do it. Johnny Ramos. Johnny Ramos just says, hey Ron, I am planning on overseeding my cool season lawn this fall, but I won't be able to use pre-emergent. That's true. What is a con in regards to not putting pre-emergent in the fall in regards to weed control? The con is you're gonna have more weeds because there's nothing preventing them from germinating, right? So you are gonna have to deal with more weed pressure, but that's not, a, that's not like the end of the world. All that means is instead of using a pre-emergent to prevent weeds from being in your lawn, you're going to end up using a post-emergent, so something like a three-way, like um, like triad, like triad select, something like like that, or a um, or tenacity. You can spot spray with that, so you can still take care of the weeds in your lawn. But it's it tends to be more work to use a post-emergent herbicide than just prevent them in the first place with pre-emergent. You know what I mean? But given that you are seeding and that that's your goal, your goal is to overseed and get the lawn looking really nice. You, that's kind of a trade-off you have to make as far as um, as far as just realizing that you're either just gonna get them pull weeds or use a post-emergent herbicide to control them because using pre-emergent is gonna be working against yourself if you decide to go that route. All right, um, LG uh, is is chiming in. LG, you're here, man. What's going on, sir? He says, uh, Eugene Gato, uh, the product, any product that contains Phenexaprop would be good to kill goosegrass, a claim herbicide is a third of the cost of Pylex, but yes, definitely use your preamp. So there you go. There's LG weighing in as well. He lives in Iowa and does, you know, does a lot with cool season grass. So 
It's probably it's uh that's likely good advice. Acclaim is also one of those uh, herbicides. That's claim I've never actually used it because it's actually labeled for uh, for Bermuda. It'll actually, it'll target Bermuda grass. So hence I've never actually used Acclaim. But yeah, I, I would trust LG um, Eugene. Obviously check the label, but uh, that that's uh it's, it's probably good advice. He tends he tends to know what he's talking about. All right, next up is Ken. He says how to kill bent grass. There's a I mean, bent grass is is fairly sensitive. I'm trying to think of how to kill bent grass in in and in what? And I mean, if you're just trying to kill, just kill out the bent grass. There's nothing else that you're trying to keep safe. You can use something like glyphosate. You can just use like a non-selective herbicide. Like that's going to be the cheapest way to get rid of it. But if it's mixed with something else, and you want to keep the something else and not keep the bent grass, that's when the answer changes as far as like a selective herbicide. But the the least, the most, um, the more cost-effective way to get rid of bent grass or really any grass is going to to use to be to use like a non-selective herbicide like um like glyphosate can so just depends on um on if there's another grass you're trying to keep too all right john williams says at this time of year what should i be throwing at this time of year what should i be throwing down for some heavy nitrogen this time of year i wouldn't be applying heavy nitrogen this time of year really any time of year what i would do is apply the amount of nitrogen that is needed that's correct for your grass type so uh, you have, I'm trying to think if you have warm season or cool season grass, um, John, a- at any rate, find out how much nitrogen per, like your, your particular grass type needs per month and feed it that much per month. Like don't get out there and throw a heavy application at it, like go double or triple the rate. You'll, you'll likely damage your grass if you do that. Um, and then if you don't, you're going to create other problems. You're going to, you're going to cause a lot of excessive growth and just, it just, it creates more problems than it uh, than it solves. So I would never, I would not go out there and do a super heavy application of nitrogen. Feed your lawn what it needs, and over just just do it that way over time, and it's gonna it's gonna look fine. It's gonna do well. But I would not get out there and, and slam it with a, a like double or triple the um, double or triple the rate as far as uh, as far as your how much nitrogen you're putting in, into the lawn. All right, we got a super chat from John Williams. Thank you for this, uh, John. I really do appreciate it. Has it come across? Yeah, there it is. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate that. Super chat received. He says, great show. You're very welcome. I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you're having some fun and, and getting something out of it. And uh, and yeah, as far as your, um, as far as your, yes, yeah, so you, you have you have warm season grass. So your next, your point about... Um, heavy nitrogen. So you have probably have Bermuda. I'm assuming it's Bermuda because you're asking about spectacle. So yeah, so Bermuda needs, the conventional wisdom says around a pound of nitrogen per month when it's actively growing. So what you need to be applying is about a pound of nitrogen per month. I tend to go a little bit less than that. I, I am more around the, the 0.8 pounds per month of nitrogen all in between the liquid and granular products that I use on my lawn. But you don't need to get out there and do like, you know, a pound and a half, two pounds, like double, triple the rate. You just don't need to do that to get a good result. So I would I would stick to what the grass needs, which is, a, a, you know, around a pound of nitrogen per month, um, assuming it's Bermuda, which I'm assuming it's that or some other warm season grass because you mentioned you're talking about spectacle flow. All right, Gary, the cable guy says, what do you recommend for killing creep and Charlie? I have a rye grass yard in Northern Kentucky. So I, I'll, I'll check the label for tenacity. Um, uh Gary, the cable guy, but there's other products that, that, will, that will get it too. Triad, Triad Select, like a three-way might be able to do that. Let me, let me, let's get something less, less expensive first and see if, um, if Creeping Charlie is on the label. Um, that, I would look at that or, um, or Tenacity. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's not, it's not, the three-way isn't, is is not on, on the, on the, on Triad for that. Take a look at the Tenacity label, Gary, and see if it's, if it's labeled for Creeping Charlie. Um, for, for cool season grass or cool season herbicides, I just don't know those off the top of my head. Like, um, like I do warm season grass, but you know, while I'm here, I can check the label for you really quick. I can, I can do that. Let's, uh, let's see while we are in here. Um, let's see creeping. No, it does. I don't see. Um, yeah, it says, no, yeah, it says creeping bent grass, but I don't see creeping Charlie. Uh, listed there. I don't see Creeping Charlie listed there. Let's try one more product I'm going to look at, and it's probably going to be the cheapest one. Yeah, so here we go. So here, the cheapest one and that, that you can probably go find tomorrow if you want at um, 
at your big box store is uh, is spectricide. So I'm not sure which one of these active ingredients, which one of these is actually targeting the creeping charlie, but it is on. It is um, among the 470 weeds that this that this will control. So you and this is also safe for ryegrass. So yeah, so give this a shot and and see how it does. But the only thing I'll say with um with this product is the thing the pe the thing people get good results with it if they are willing to do more than one application. Like I've had people that have used it for crabgrass, it's just only this for crabgrass. And if they they're willing to do multiple applications, like one now and then another one like two three weeks later, that they they're able to eventually get rid of the crabgrass. I imagine that creeping Charlie is much the same way because I've outside of like um, weeds that are easy to kill, like spurge or dandelions, uh, you, it tends to take more than one application of a lot of the store-bought um, uh, selective herbicides like, like spectricide to get the result. So give that a shot uh, and, and see if that will um, that'll help. That'll do, that'll do it for you, uh, Gary. It's on the label, so I have no reason to think that it, that it shouldn't work. I, the only thing I'd say is, again, plan for more than one amount plan for more than one application to uh, to get the results. Okay, next is Grant as Brad Stevens. He says, are you still a fan of using weed stop um, for the fall prevent preventative of poannua? Yeah, so the, the, the granular weed stops, so I'll show the product you're talking about. It does have, let's go here. This, this does have, there's a version that does have um, dithiopyr in it. Uh, but I mean, it's, is is it i would i would use an actual um i would i'd be much more inclined to use dithiapyr by itself if you are trying to get as much coverage or as much for coverage for as long as possible they say for three to four months or up to five months of control but i've i mean i've not um i've not seen that in practice i've had viewers that have tried to use weed stop as their pre-emergent like that by itself um, and they've not gotten anywhere near the five months of control that the label the label says. So, if your goal is to um, to prevent poa in warm season grass, what I would say is use prodiamine or use actual dithiapyr by itself, and really um, prodiamine with um, with uh, um, uh, Princep and uh, Image is going to give you the best result, in my opinion. Uh, this this will work. It'll, it's gonna it's gonna help some, but it's not gonna be as good as using like the the higher concentrations that you get in the professional grade products, uh, Brad. So it's better than nothing, but it's not gonna be as good as using actual prodiamine by itself. So that's that's my thoughts on the matter because I get I've gotten I get emails from viewers that use that have used this, and what 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 this tends to be really good for is say you were um, behind the curve, right? So you didn't you didn't um, use a pre-emergent in the springtime and you're around like April-ish timeframe and you want something that's gonna kill a lot of weeds and also prevent new weeds from growing in. That is what this product is really good at. So you apply it when the lawn is wet um, and it to, to, to help it start killing the existing weeds and the next day you water it to, get, to help push the the uh, dithiopyr down into the soil. And that tends to be pretty good for about a summer, for, for keeping weeds out of your lawn during the summer. But as far as relying on it for a fall pre-emergent, I wouldn't. I would I would get like, again, like prodiamine or dithiopyr, like a higher concentration, a higher amount of active ingredient and use that instead of, um, of, instead of weed stop. All right, uh, next is Resistance Viva. It says, um, "Do you have any thoughts on using zeolite on turf?" I don't. I don't even know what the, I don't even know what that is. The first time I've ever heard of zeolite, so something for me to look up. I don't know what that is, so I I don't have an opinion on it. So let me add a note on that zeolite. Yeah, I've, I've no, I don't know what that is, so I I can um I can't give you uh, uh, an opinion on it. Uh, Resistance Viva. All right, next is Greg Lyon or Greg Leon. It says, "Hey Ron, I sent you some pictures before and after pictures." After Sandman leveled my lawn this week, do I need to take a leveling rake over the entire lawn to level out the spots now? No, so here's the thing. <laughs> I wouldn't take the rake and actually try and move the sand around. What I would do is take the rake and just like, just, just lay it down behind you and just walk, like like drag it over the lawn. So don't, so what I'm saying is um, move it over the lawn to help the sand settle, like to help expose the grass, the grass tips, to help them kind of pop through the sand but don't get out there and start working the sand in, like moving it around. Because wherever they put it is where it really needs to be. So don't get out there and try and start moving the sand around, but it, it is helpful 
to to drag or use to use a leveling rake or use a broom on the lawn once a day to help um, again to help the grass tips kind of pop through the sand, help it settle a little bit faster, help the lawn recover a bit faster. So I would not level it, but I would use it on the lawn as far as just uh, just raking through the lawn. All right, next up he says, also, what do you think about Regal Chemical Fertilizer and Harness Carbon that he told me about? He mentioned Spectral Flow, uh, spectral, uh, spectral Flow, she just mentioned on your last live video too. So I don't know about Regal Chemicals Fert or the Harness Carbon. I've never used any of those, so I can't really offer an opinion on them, unfortunately, Greg. Um, but so, um, but look into them. I mean, I can look into them and give you an opinion maybe next week, but I've never used them or even looked into them before or heard about them until right now. So I can't really give you a, um, an opinion, unfortunately. All right. Dwayne says, Hey Ron, can you call Alex the enforcer and take care of these trolls, AKA moles in the live stream? LOL. No, man, you got, listen, you have to understand Dwayne, trolls are a necessary evil, but think about it. How much of a life must you not have? to be able to come, to take time out of your Friday evening, because I mean, I'm, I'm doing what I'm gonna do on Friday night. You guys are here having a great time. So how much time, like how much have you, like not to be, not to have anything better to do with your time, to come in on a lawn care live stream on, fr on a Friday night, just to troll or give thumbs down or leave nasty comments? I mean, come on, man. It's all it's all part of it. I mean, I, I think I think there are people that, that do that are a joke because they are, and it, it doesn't bother me. I don't, like I got, I got really thick skin. If you've uh, if you lived if you lived the life that I have lived, someone saying a nasty gram to me in a on a YouTube video, not that doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't really weigh in. Does it doesn't even register? Doesn't even register on the spectrum of things that would irritate me. All right, Robert Mahoris is, is there with a, a super chat. Thank you so much for that, Robert. Super chat for Steve. He says good night, uh, good night. I'll hopefully see you tomorrow. So you're checking out, uh, Robert. I get it, man. It's getting kind of late. We are winding down though, sir. Don't you know? We are winding down, but I appreciate you coming to hang out and uh, and check out and uh, hang out in the live stream for a little while. And then uh, let's see what else we got here. What other comments we have? Um, next is Greg uh, Savoya. Oh, man, I'm gonna push your name. Is it is it Voma? I'm thinking the S is silent. Is it, is it Voma? It's, uh, Greg Voma says, hi, Ron. I always appreciate the content. Question, I have a cool season lawn that is riddled with zoysia, undesirable. I put down tenacity about two weeks ago, but it is still growing. Thoughts? Um, maybe give it a little bit more time. I, here's the thing. I don't, uh, as far as eliminating, um, as far as eliminating zoysia in cool season grass, not something I have a lot of experience with, unfortunately, Greg. Uh, tenacity should, it should discolor or it should damage the zoysia. It should, so I'm surprised that after two weeks, you're not seeing any kind of responses yet. Um, but I don't know that even that is going to be enough to really kill it, to really get, you know, truly get rid of it. Uh, so I'd say give it a little bit more time, give it a little more time and, and, uh, and, and see if you, if it begins to respond to it. Are there any other areas? I know you can't actually answer me, but you can, you can write back. Are there any other areas of the lawn that you sprayed with tenacity where you are seeing a visual um, responses yet. So I know you, you sprayed for, for zoysia, but if there were any other weeds that you happen to get some of it on, are they starting to turn white or starting to bleach? Because if if they're not, it might be you just need to give it more time. You know what I mean? But if you have some parts of the lawn that are beginning to change color or beginning to, you know, where you, you can see the results of tenacity, it's, it's pretty apparent because it, you know, the lawn turns like, like looks like you dump Clorox on it. Um, but if you if you're seeing that, then um, maybe we need to look into something else to try and get rid of the zoysia in your uh, in your cool season grass. But if you're not, then give it give it a bit more time is what I would say. But again, unfortunately, not my specialty as far as getting rid of warm season grass in a cool season lawn. You know what I mean? I mean, there's there's um, you might look into a claim, you might look into pilex, you might look into some of the stronger warm season or cool season herbicides and see if um if that they might work let me you know while i'm here i can check we're it's it's late night we, we're getting we're into like the getting into the fourth hour here i can i can take a peek for you and see if um yeah no see so it's so you know so a claim is not is labeled for use on zoysia so no it's not gonna that's not gonna do it yeah i don't i'm not sure man um i'm not sure on that one unfortunately i would say let's give, give the tenacity a bit more time to see if it begins to produce a result before you move on to something else. And, and again, I apologize for not being more help on this one because cool season grass just isn't, isn't my strong suit, especially when it comes to eliminating warm season grass in cool season grass. But I will look into that. I will, um, I'm gonna take a screenshot of that so I can get an answer for you for next week. Cause I'm just a question that some, some other people are gonna have at some point. And it's something that I, I, I'm curious on as well too. So I've got it in my list of things to look into. 
All right, Trevor Johnson is up next. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for all the great advice so far on the great content. Question, I have a, I have a uh, question tonight about regarding nematodes. Coworkers keep bringing it up. Have you ever added those to your lawn? I haven't. No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I haven't added, I have not added those. Um, I've not added nematodes to my, um, to my lawn. So can't give you, a, can't give you a, an answer on, on that. Okay, Resistance Viva says, hey, Ron, I've, uh, I made the question about zeolite. I've heard some golf courses use it. Not sure exactly what they use it for. Would it be okay to use zeolite instead of sand for leveling? I don't know. I, I, again, I have to look into, um, you know who I'll ask? I'll ask Devin about, on that one. I'll do some research myself, but I'll, I'll put this on my list of things to answer for next week, uh, Resistance Viva. So that'll be one of my talking points for next week. I'll look into it and then, uh, and then let you know. If it's a leveling medium, if you're saying it's like a sand of some sort, something for leveling, um, for that they use on golf courses for leveling, um, I don't, I don't know. I imagine it's probably gonna be more expensive than sand, so that's probably that's a, that's a consideration. Without even knowing anything about it, I imagine it costs more than sand does. So that's something to, to keep in mind. But I'll have to do some more research and then get back to you on that one. Okay, L R C X says I've been fighting Dallas grass in California for a few years. Tenacity every couple of weeks. Helps keep the seed pods to a minimum, but not all. I'd like to know how I can get rid of it forever. Fescue lawn. So the thing to get rid of Dallas grass, the best way in a residential lawn, LRCX, is to just dig it out, to physically remove it, unfortunately. There, there, there is a herbicide that will kill it, but it is not labeled for use on residential lawns. So your next best bet is to just dig it out. You know what I mean? So if you, you've been fighting it for a few years, and I know that's probably not the answer you want to hear. You want to just to use this magic product and it'll kill it. Um, but unfortunately, there's not one that I am aware of that is that is non-selective. Like you could use glyphosate if you're really, really careful and just spray just the, the Dallas grass, but more than likely you're gonna injure your uh, your fescue as well when you do that. So the, the way to truly get rid of it is to, to physically remove it. So what you can do is in, is just break it down into multiple sessions. You know what I mean? So you know every you know every couple of days or one, once or twice a week, get out there for an hour and just and dig it out. And what you're going to find, you'll be you would be shocked or amazed in how how quickly you'll be able to get it gone if you take that approach to it. Because there's not really there's not really a herbicide that uh, at least that I'm aware of anyway that that will allow you to get rid of it forever in. Um, in, on residential lawns. Uh, so hope that helps. That's what I would recommend. It's more work, but that that is going to get you closer to getting it gone than uh, than anything else. All right, Greg Lyon is back saying, Richard suggested that I put down some R15 in my side yard. How would be the best way to apply that and how much would I need for 9,000 square feet? Okay, so if you're going to like do a renovation and you're going to change that area of your lawn, 9,000 square feet, which is a pretty big area, to Arden... Uh, now is not the time of year to do it. I would recommend doing it like in late April, early May timeframe. And then uh, what you can do is if there's existing grass there, like existing Bermuda, you can kill that off, burn it down, use like um, like Roundup and Fusilade. That's a really good combination. I've been using it, trying it out myself. It works really well. So you can, you can do that a few weeks prior to when you're planning to do the renovation with the Arden 15. So like, so burn down the existing lawn, get rid of, get rid of the existing grass. And then, um, and then I would, um, I would, I would make sure you get as much soil um, exposed as possible. So if you can cut the existing grass really low, like get rid, like um, to, to where, to where there's going to be good soil to seed contact, Greg, that's going to do a lot for improving the results you get. I like to mix Arden um, with a bit of sand. So I'll take like, and this has to be precise, but like take like uh, like a bucket of half a bucket of play sand and then half of the bucket fill it with Arden 15 and then mix them up. That's going to help you get a nice even spread and allow you to, to get it down using a broadcast spreader. This is all for next year. So we got plenty of time to talk about this, but that is the only other tip I can tell you other than now is not the time of year to do that. I would not do it now. I would do it next uh, next spring. More of the work is going to be in the prep as far as getting rid of whatever grass you happen to have and then uh, then actually putting the seed down. That's the easy part. And then watering. And if you, on the 9,000 square feet, to really ensure you get a good result is it's gonna require that you, um, that you irrigate. You're gonna wanna have, uh, you're gonna wanna have irrigation to, to, get a, to, to really get a good result. Cause it's gonna require that you not allow the grass to the, or the, the lawn to dry out for about three weeks. So if you're in Georgia, that's gonna mean what being watering 
three times a day, at least twice a day, but probably three times, three times a day. So you're going to spend more money on sea on water than you are on likely the seed and all the prep work. So as far as how much seed you're going to need, you, I like the two pounds per thousand. So what's 18, 18 pounds. So, um, yeah, it's like a 25 pound bag of it. But you, here's the, here's the problem. You can't even really get Arden 15 anymore. And I should have like stopped you there, but you can't get Arden 15. It's, it's been discontinued. So what you might do is wait until next year and see if Pennington releases their successor to Arden 15 and just use that next year. But Arden 15, you're going to have a hard time finding um, finding any of it, certainly 25 pounds of it because it's been discontinued. Like if you go to Hancock Seeds website, I don't think they're, they're carrying it anymore. It's not going to, it's going to be sold out. You might be looking like a little two pound bag here and there, but I mean, enough of it for you to do 9,000 square feet, you're not going to be able to find. So... Hope that helps, sir. Um, you may have to go with a different grass type instead of Arden. A lot of people that were going to do Arden have been using Yukon. I've been doing Yukon. Or if you don't want to use seed at all, you could just burn down the whole area, like, you know, kill it off and then do something like Tahoma 31. Because there was a viewer in Cumming, Georgia, that did to, uh, Tahoma 31. It looks looks awesome. So it's a really pretty looking, pretty good grass type um, based on the, the pictures that he sent me. So something else, just options, things for you to consider, things to think about for next year, because this is not the time of year to really, to really do that. All right. Dwayne Hopkins is up next. He says, Hey Ron, I just used the last of my Primo Max, did the quarter ounce rate. Should I be good for the season or should I buy more? You could be good for the season. I mean, unless you want to do another application in September, you can buy more, but really uh, if you were using it to slow down growth, the grass really shouldn't be growing as aggressively now than it was like four weeks ago when it, temperatures were really high. So if you want to buy more to do another to do another application in September, you can, or you can wait till next year. It's really your call whether or not you want to do a um, you know another another app this year. I'm going to. I'm going to be using Primo until the end of September, but it's it's your call whether or not you want to buy another another container just uh, you know to cover you for this remaining month. All right, next up is Chris uh, Faris. He says, a great channel, love the content. Do you have a recommendation for above ground sprinkler system that could cover 2,500 square feet without, without moving one head around the yard? I just don't have time before work. I, I don't, I really don't, Chris. I think I saw that, um, nothing that I have direct experience with anyway. I saw that Hunter had a system where they um, they you could put these um, like the sprinkler heads on these like on on pa on a sticks almost on stands. Uh, you don't have to move it around, but you do have to set it up. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where you could set that up, say the night before, and then set it up to work. So there is a um, a like a blue like an app like a Bluetooth app that you can use to um, to open the valve at a certain time. So that's an option, but the, it, there is some setup required. Is I guess I'm trying to say. Now you wouldn't have to move the sprinklers around all, all over the place, but that's that's the best I can think of as far as an above ground um, sprinkler system. I don't have a ton of experience with those, unfortunately, but I know that Hunter did something. They had a kit that did that, but again, there is setup involved um, to to um, to make that work. Appreciate you appreciate you watching the comments. Thanks for the kind words, and if I can help with anything else, let me know. But I, yeah, look into the system from um, from from Hunter. All right, Christian Brewer says, um, sup, what's going on, print, um, uh, Christian? Looks like you're a Gator fan. A Gator fan, what's going on? Hope you're doing all right. And then next we have RLT1975 says, hey, Ron, I just overseeded my tall fescue blend today and I put down Lebanon to turf starter fertilizer with Mesa. With Mesa, I think you meant Mesa. Mesa. Have you ever used the starter fertilizer with Mesa? I haven't, but it's gonna. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Like, I mean, Levin Fertilizer makes a really good product. I have no reason to think that their starter for is not gonna be awesome too. So yeah, I, I have not used it, but I, given that I've used um, Proscape, um, I've used I've used Proscape, I've used Humic Max, I've used their um, their Country Club, their Greens Grade mower. Like I've used uh, mower, the greens grade fertilizer, uh, and all of them produce excellent results. So I have no reason to think that the starter fertilizer with Mesa is not going to do well. This could be just fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Nicholas Jasmine says, "What about a pre-emergent for Virginia buttonweed and nutsedge? I have zoysia and Bermuda. You know, I don't know if there's actually a pre-emergent. I don't think Prodiamine actually does nutsedge. That's one thing I do. I don't know if there's actually a pre-emergent." for nutsedge. Now, when it comes to Virginia buttonweed, 
I don't. I have to check the label for um, for Prodiamine to um, to get an answer for you, um, Nicholas. I don't know the answer uh, to that one on the on the um, on the buttonweed on the nuts edge. I'm not. A, I don't believe Prodiamine. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's actually a pre-emergent for nuts edge. I, I, I'm 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 open to being corrected on that, but I don't believe so. Uh, let's see here, Prodiamine, because that's um, like all the lawns around here. Um, get it every single year, and they and a lot of them get um, get pre-emergent. But I'm looking here for the Virginia buttonweed for you, and I'm going to see if that is on the label for um, for that um, for for Prodiamine here. Let's see here. Let's see uh, buttonweed. Let's see. Um, no, I don't, I don't see it listed. I don't, I don't, I don't see it on here. So I, let me, let me take that one as a, as a, as a one to research and get back to you, um, Nicholas for the, um, for the nuts edge. I don't believe there is, um, not, not, I know Prodiamine doesn't do it because I get, I get nuts edge. I get it every year and most people get it every year and in areas where, and the, the consistent thing is wherever, um, water passes regularly or settles is where it tends to show up. Uh, and it's always in the same areas. So, uh, so yeah, that's a good point. I will look into that for you. As far as a post-emergent, I know Celsius will get rid of it, but um, to prevent it, I don't see it on the label for um, for um, for Celsius, Virginia Pike. But I don't. I'm sorry for um, uh, for Prodiamine, unfortunately. So, yeah, so something we look into and get an answer for you. I don't know the answer on that one. So. I've got your your question screenshots, so something for you to work in, work on and get an answer for you for next week. And you you also have my email too as well. So if you want an answer before the live stream next week, you can drop me an email here, Ron at Golf Course Lawn, and I will um, I'll do my best to get you an answer. You guys are roughing me up tonight, man. I'm getting a whole lot of don't know, not sure on that one. There's a whole whole lot of that happening, but it's okay. It makes me better, right? All right, next is Gary Kellett Jr. <laughs> He says, hey, Ron, listening to you on the TV in the bedroom while I'm laying flooring in the bathroom, wife walked in, looked at the TV, shook her head and walked out. Hey, man, you're, you're laying flooring. That's good, right? Like you're getting your honeydew list done. You can watch you can watch a lawn care live stream while you do that as well. You can you can, you can do both of them. You know, I mean, there's worse. I say, there are way worse things you could be watching on TV than a lawn care live stream. I'll just say that. So I'm sure she, you know, she may like, you know, not. She may not get it, but I'm sure she's just not, you know, she's not irritated about it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Robert Mahora says, totally off topic. Go for the Tahoma 31. Yeah, that's it, that's the thing. If I were doing a renovation this time of year, like if I were starting over, like I was going to burn down my lawn and, and put, in a gra put in a grass type, a warm season grass, like Bermuda, I would go Tahoma 31. I wouldn't be going to try and do it from seed. That, especially with 9,000 square feet. Like nine thousand, like doing nine thousand square feet from seed is going to be expensive, really expensive from a watering standpoint. And uh, you know, Tahoma Thirty One looks really nice. Like it's a really good looking grass. So uh, I'm with Robert on that one. I'm with Robert on that one. I would I would lean towards Tahoma Thirty One. Sod all the way. Less work. Less work. All right. Scott Wilbank says, Ron, my two and a half gallons of Prince Up arrived today. I'll be mixing it with Image and Prodiamine in the next couple of weeks on my Bermuda grass. Thanks. Enjoy watching. Cool deal, uh, Scott. Just uh, follow the label, and uh, yeah, you should get a uh, you should get a great result. I'm glad that you're uh, that you're you're gonna try out. You're gonna be making your your poor man's um, spectacle flow. You know, you're pretty much recreating coastal on your own. All right, uh, Dwayne says, Ron, this is great. Warm season, folks, and cool season, folks, all coming together to join the to, to join the stream. We're on the same team. We are, man. We all love grass, right? We all love grass. So it's uh, that we are united by that. And then Greg says, it is bleaching, but underneath. Yeah, so it may take another app, Greg. So it sounds like it is working, but maybe another application will uh, will get you get you closer to what you're uh, you're looking for as far as uh, you're knocking back or getting rid of the zoysia. So it sounds like sounds like tenacity is having an effect, but it's just uh, just a little bit slower. So perhaps another another app, another application is will be in order to, to get you where you want to be as far as eliminating it in your uh, your cool season lawn. Uh, Ed and Rick, Rick uh, says, um, Hey Ron, what's a good, what's a good pre and post emergent for spurge for pre emergent, um, you know, uh, prodiamine or dithiapyr, like those will prevent it except for along driveways or whatever. That's going to still grow there. Um, and a good post emergent. There's tons, man. You can go with, uh, you can go with Celsius, which is more kind of an expensive way to get rid of spurge. 
You could go with uh, like a three-way, like Triad Select will do it. Uh, Weed Stop, if you wanna go really cheap, like this will do it. Like uh, this is a really inexpensive way to get rid of Spurge. If all you are, not that one, if all you care about is just getting rid of Spurge, like this will do a great job against Spurge and it's like 10 to 15 bucks, right? So if all you care about is Spurge, then Spectracide, everything from Spectracide all the way up to Celsius. I will tell you, like if you if you decide to use Celsius on Spurge, it like bur it does to Celsius does to Spurge what certainty does to sedges. It like it like just turns it into like like a if you could imagine a, a grass or a plant turning into the equivalent of a brown paper bag, like wilting, just being like like dust. That is what it does to it. So, but it's a lot more expensive. So I if we're just doing Spurge. I might go with like Weed Stop or like a, a three-way like Triad, something a little bit cheaper because again, Celsius is expensive to use for something like that. But if, you, um, if you're if you spraying it when temps are higher, then then that's a good reason to go with Celsius. But there are cheaper ways to get rid of Spurge than Celsius. But it, will work, it works really, really well too. So I uh, hope that helps. John says, how do I get rid of frogs? I don't know why I've been seeing them more lately. Thanks. Not sure on that one, man. I don't know how to get rid of uh, frogs. I can't. I can't help you on that one. Uh, Joseph says, "What's the shelf life on PGR of Primo Max?" Uh, it's about three years. Three. They say three to five years, but really three years is what you don't want to keep it any much any much longer than that. It'll begin to lose um, effectiveness. Would the app? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Would an app of PGR be okay at the same time as Prodiamine? Um, I wouldn't. Here, here's why. So, like, so they're they're two, they, they, they're two different products. So, prodiamine um, needs to be watered in to work, right? You need to water it in to work. Whereas Primo needs to get to the, on the grasses on the foliar on the grass leaf itself to work. Um, also, the spray tip that you use for prodiamine is different, or the correct one is different than the one you would use for Primo. So, for Primo, you're going to want to use like a foliar tip. So, like, um. Like the like the 110 degree spray tip, the really fine droplet tip, um, and for prodiamine, you're going to want to use like a flood jet tip. So something like this. You're going to use something like this for prodiamine, right? For for pre-emergent. So the the spray tips that you should be using are different, and um, just the fact that you're going to want to water in prodiamine after application, and you're not going to want to want to water in pre um, um, primo after application. I would do them separately. I would. I would. Um, I would not. I would not spray them both at the same time. Plus, I've never actually um, tested that. I've never actually even mixed them together to know if they would play nicely together. I've never actually even tried that. But I, the long short of it is, no, I would not do it. Now, can you do? Um, could you do prodiamine first? Or, sorry, could you do um, uh, prodiamine say in the morning and then like a couple hours later go out and spray the lawn with Primo? Uh, yeah, you could do that and then just wait till the fall. Wait, I mean, they, they say four hours, but you could give it four hours um, after spraying the Primo to water the Prodiamine in or just wait till the next day and water the Prodiamine in. That you can do, but I would not, as far as mixing them together, I don't know that I, I wouldn't do that. And I, I've, I don't even know like if there'd be some kind of weird, there's some kind of weird interaction. I've never actually heard of someone mixing Prodiamine along with growth regulator. So I would say no, I would not, I would not do that for the reasons that I mentioned. Uh, you're very, very welcome, Alex RD. Uh, and he says, Brad, are you a fan of Weed Stop? Yeah, I, I still am. I mean, it's a for as a, as a product to recommend for someone that is new to lawn care or someone that doesn't have either the budget, the time, or the desire to get a backpack sprayer, learn how to calibrate it, mix products. They just want something that's easy to use and that is going to produce a decent result uh, after a couple of applications. Weed Stop. Can be all right. I mean, we, it's it's a good product. It's, it's it is good. It's just that it's not like a one and done. And for some things, it's not that great. Like if you want, if you use Weed Stop on like say like um, Nuts Edge, it's it's a joke. It won't. It, it's not gonna. It's not gonna knock. It's not gonna kill Nuts Edge. You know what I mean? So for even though they they say kills 470 weeds, really it's really good against broad. It's good against crabgrass with multiple ap applications, and it's good against broadleaf weeds. But again, some of the more stubborn weeds, like um, again, like uh, um, particularly sedges, not not so much. And again, it's for it's it it has a demographic. If it's for, for, for someone that's getting brand, that's getting new into lawn care, like say someone joins the, the live stream tonight, right? Says, hey, I want to get rid of weeds in my lawn, and I'm I'm brand new to lawn care. I don't have any equipment. I got a mower and a string trimmer, and I want to get my lawn looking better. You know, 
if they may eventually graduate to getting a backpack sprayer and starting using like some of the more professional grade herbicides or products on their lawn, but you don't want to scare them away and say, hey, go buy, you know, a $300 backpack sprayer and go get, you know, these expensive herbicides and all this kind of stuff. You can, you can give them something that is going to help them be, get them in a better place than where they are now. And then if they're not liking the results, then they can move into, you know, into, you know, the, the, into the better stuff. So I'm still a fan of it. I think they, they serve a purpose. They serve, they do serve a, a role, but they don't, they're not in the same, they're definitely not in the same class as the, the more expensive products. So, so yeah. Um, let's see here. I already answered the question about the bracelet and you said you're airing the lawn this weekend. Can't wait. Cool. Sounds, sounds like, sounds like a lot of fun, Brad. Sounds like a lot of fun. And then Jose says, Justin, no. PGR absorption in the fall year and Prodiamine needs to get down in the soil. So there you go. You have someone else saying, telling you the same thing. I don't, I mean, I'd be afraid to mix them, man, because um, Prodiamine, that's the one thing. It's a little bit temperamental when you mix it. Like, it, like it, will, it will settle unless you like do a really good job mixing and getting it suspended. And then you, you kind of give it a shake now and then while you're spraying it, it tends to settle out. So I would not, you know, even just mixing it with... Um, with a Primo, I have no idea how that would that would play out. So long answer, long short is no. I mean, you can spray them on the same day, but I would not spray them at the same time in the same tank. Is what is is um I would not do that. Okay, uh, Steve Jackson says, "Hey Ron, have you had your reels ground ground um, your reels grinder? Uh, if so, uh, did you have to raise your height of cut because it scalps in certain areas? You saying have I had my reels?" Are you saying like, have I had them sharpened? I may have not. I'm trying to think of what, what, what the question you're asking. If so, did you have to raise your height of cut because it scalps in certain areas? I just had mine done and it scalps in a few spots thinking of raising mine. Okay, so if your mower, okay, so here's what could be happening. If your mower is scalping after you took it in to get it ground, so you, so you took the mower in and it say it wasn't doing it before, it wasn't scalping before, but you took it in and they got it, you got it sharpened and now it's scalping in certain spots. A couple things to check. One, obviously check the height of cut that it's the same that it was before so that they didn't like lower it. That's one, that's thing one. And then also, I mean, they should have done this, but check both sides of the bed knife. Make sure that you don't have one side that is, that is higher or lower than another because that will cause cutting issues or cause scalping issues. And you, you'll, you'll be chased, like pulling your hair out, trying to figure out what's going on. So if it's, there's a couple of things you can check, Steve. Like again, one, obviously make sure that the height of cut is the same as it was before. If that passes, check while you're checking the height of cut, check to make sure that both sides of the reel um, are like, the, the, that it's even, that it's not like, it's not slightly canted because it doesn't take much. I mean, a 10th of an inch, I mean, less than that. Like, I mean, the 10th of an inch will be, will be enough to cause cutting problems, like very visible cutting problems. So, um, I can't think of anything else. If, I, if, I'm, if, if, that, if that's what you're asking me, that's what I would. Um, those are the only things I would. I would. I would check because really, if the lawn, if the mower was cutting fine before, and then you took it out and you got it sharpened, and the height of cut is the same, it shouldn't like it should be cutting better. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be scalping. It shouldn't be causing. Um, you shouldn't, like the cutting problems shouldn't be getting worse. You see what I'm saying? Like the only things that would, that would cause scalping are it not being, um, it not being level, like, the, like it not like the, it not being set up properly, like both sides not being set up properly, or more than likely that it's lowered, set to lower, it's, it's cutting lower than it was prior to the, when you got it um, serviced. So check those things um, because after after maintenance, the mower should be cutting better, not worse. So, assuming I'm, I'm, I'm understanding your question properly, um, those are the things that I would I would look into. If it's scalping in certain areas because they lower the height of cut, you know what to do. Just raise it, raise it up. All right. So next is J B. It says for Primo Max for Primo for PGR in 100 degree heat, is it correct you have to reapply every six days? The higher the temperature, the sooner you have to apply. I don't, I've never, I've not applied Primo Max in um, every, on a, every six day interval. What I did this season, and we had some, some, some periods, a, a period of a couple of weeks there where temps did get into the hundreds uh, a few times. Um, and what I was doing is I was doing a split app. So I was applying it every two weeks, Jay, but not every week. And I didn't have a problem with the lawn coming out of regulation or anything weird or anything like that happening. So every, what I was doing is every two weeks, I would apply half of the monthly rate. 
uh, yeah, every six days really shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be necessary. And I, and I didn't experience any any problems with the lawn, any kind of flush or growth, anything crazy happening at um, with doing that strategy. All right, uh, Christian Nichols says, your videos have improved exponentially. I, I've improved my grass exponentially. Neighbors are asking for strategies. You should tell them, man. Tell them how about some. Tell send them the channel. <laughs> Uh, uh, suggestion for, uh, suggestions for eliminating uh, clover and crabgrass. Strategies for eliminating Bermuda in flower beds. Okay, so um, clover should be relatively easy to get rid of. I'm not sure what you're like, if you're fine with using a backpack sprayer, but it's even like the, something like Spectracide, something like this can work well for clover and crabgrass if you're willing to do multiple applications. Now, for Bermuda in flower beds, that's a tough one because there are some concoctions that'll work. Like you can use uh, you can use um, um, glyphosate. You can use glyphosate that will work, but you have to be really careful because if you get it on any on the, anything in the flower beds, it's going to damage that too. Um, and uh, yeah, so you just you have to be really, really careful if you decide you want to try and get rid of Bermuda in beds. What I did is I used a combination of of, um, of Fusilate 2 and glyphosate, and it worked well for for like seriously killing the Bermuda. There's only a couple of areas where I may have to do a, a, like a spot, another follow up with like a spot treatment. But um, you got to be careful because if you get any kind of a heavy rain, also from the time you apply it, and some of it, it some of it leaches out of the flower beds into the grass. It won't necessarily kill the grass where it, what it gets on, but it, it's going to seriously discolor it. So you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, so what will happen is the grass and the flower beds will be dead, and then where it where some of it runs into the lawn will be like look, it look like almost like a fur not like a fertilizer burn, but it'll be discolored. It'll be like dark in color, and then the rest of your grass will look like normal. So you just got to be really careful, Crystal. Um, you can like pulling it is not going to work. It's just going to keep coming back. Uh, you know, spot spraying very, very, very carefully with glyphosate and a surfactant will do it, but you just got to be really careful. You know what I mean? And that you got to be careful not to get it one on the grass, not to overspray and get it on the grass and not to overspray and get it on your plants. So that is, that's um, an option for getting rid of it in, in flower beds. You just got to be really, really careful. And then for clover and crabgrass, I gave you an option there for that's, that's less, that's not as expensive as far as the, um, the spectra side. All right, so let's see what else we got here. We get, it's, it is getting kind of late, mm. but we have more questions, so we'll answer them. All right, Tim Jackson says, super late. I just did a night spray of fungicide. You, did, you just literally like right now, you just did it, Tim? Wow, that's dedication. Is how soon can I apply PGR to baby Arden 15 from seed? Four mows on it right now, five eighths high to cut, inch high to cut. So if you're mowing it already, and it's, if it's if you're if it's filled in, Tim, and you're cutting it at five eighths, yeah, I mean as long what I might do is this: uh, go out or apply Primo, just apply it at half rate. Don't go, don't use the full rate, um, you know, like the like the monthly rate all at once. Do I apply it at like half rate, and it should be fine because you've already you've already mowed it a few times. You're cutting it at you know five eighths, which is you know that's not short, and the grass is doing well. Then if you want to put Primo on it, by all means, go for it. Just uh, if you just want to be give yourself a little extra margin, uh, apply it at half rate. So just every two weeks, um, you know, just cut the monthly rate in half and apply it there and you should be absolutely fine. Uh, Brad says, um, how about weed stop on preventing POA? I don't know that it's going to, how well it would work for that, man. I've never actually tested it. I've never tested it to know how well it would work for preventing POA. The, the granular has dithiopyr in it which should help some, but I don't know by itself how effective it's going to be about keeping POA out of your lawn. I would imagine probably not so much. All right, Justin says, thanks for again for our uh, live stream, for helping out tonight. You're very welcome, Justin. Thank you for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. And then NMS Auditor says, hey, Ron, I had to join late, um, but I still learned a few things. Still plan on burning my Bermuda off next spring based on your recommendation. I'll send pics. Cool. Yeah, take send pictures, man. We all want to see how it um, how it goes. I appreciate that, Crystal. You sent them to the channel. I need all the help I can get, so definitely send them. I need, uh, you know, I need all the help I can get on trying to grow the channel. So, uh, more viewers is definitely good. All right. Next up, we have J B says common Bermuda that is showing up in my Tiffway 419. I feel your pain. I got one little patch there near the where the tree used to be. That's there. That I got to think and figure out what I'm going to do with it. Is there a product that kills common Bermuda but not Tiffway 419? Not that I'm aware of, Jay. 
not so I'm aware of it. I don't, I don't know of a product that will selectively kill common Bermuda, but not kill um, the hybrid, unfortunately. Not that I'm aware of. It'd be cool if someone, someone made it, they'd make a whole lot of money because a lot of us have that problem, but I, there's not one that I am, that I am aware of. All right, guys, so we are winding down. Crystal, Crystal says, thank you. You're very, very welcome, Crystal. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And also, Rio the Hitman, awesome name, the Punisher, says, thanks for all you do, Ron. Thanks again. Thank you for coming to hang out, um, Rio. And guys, I'll plan for that. This weekend, if if um, the weather holds out, I will plan to, to do a live stream where we'll talk about mixing up um, pre-emergent on cool season grass and warm season grass just to, just to see, to actually show how I would do it. Doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, but it's one way how I would go about it. it. Might give you some tips to where you might learn a thing or two that is, um, that's kind of cool, right? So guys, thanks again so much. I really appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the love and support. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys, if not tomorrow, probably Sunday when I, uh, I can get, get the live stream going. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. We will talk soon. Take care.